And away we go. Oh my god, have we goed? Oh, there's the there's the notification for it. Hey! Ah. Alright, this needs to go hit the go live button. You know, in my you day, they didn't the have a go button. live button. What did they have in your day, old man? I don't even remember. Everyone it's listen, so an old man ago. is talking. <laughs> Uh, that episode's really good. Lament of Troy. Everyone should watch it ten times. I love that episode. <laughs> An old man is talking. Hey, speaking of old, uh, Futurama's coming back, I guess. Mm. Yeah. Wait, no, it is? I've heard. Yeah, yes. without Bender. Yeah, well, without, 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 without the original without voice. Is it, is it confirmed that he's not going to be a part of it now? I think that's, uh, I think that's the main, like, news story surrounding it. Oh god, so are, they gonna do the oh, no. are they gonna use respeech for him? Oh god. <laughs> are they gonna leave Skywalker in? Are they gonna ruin Bender's character? Like, like, if you can't get him back, why even bother? Legitimately. Money. Well, yeah, yeah I, mean, money. I mean, I know, but, but like... But money. <laughs> but the money, Theo. Yeah. But the money. It, I, that's like always the answer for all so, of these so things. So basically, so like, are they getting know. rid of the character, or is it just John St. John who's not voicing him? We John St. John? Yeah. Or not John St. John. Um, <laughs> I wasn't going to question that. John, John St. John is Duke Nukem, because I'm stupid. Um, Stoop Nukem. DiMaggio. John DiMaggio. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah my bad. Yeah, Don yeah we, we have a show that's primarily known for getting think, canceled, um, and we need to bring it back to make more money, because <laughs> it worked uh, last time. From what I understand, it's that if that they may be just recasting for Bender, which is, yeah, like... Uh, yeah, yeah, you're not going to get away with that. Yeah, I mean, it's like following Heath Ledger's Joker. Like, good luck. Maybe they're any word on um really good, but they won't. <laughs> is there any word on why John John, John DiMaggio? Like, who could they get where where none where we would all just be like, oh, okay, 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 sure, fine. I don't know like, anybody. They got either. Charles Dance. No. <laughs> like, why wouldn't it be wouldn't Charles you just, Dance? Wouldn't you just sign up to watch it though? Charles Dance as Bender. I mean, I, it would be interesting <laughs> to see Mark Hamill play Bender, but that doesn't mean he's going to be good at it necessarily. <laughs> Wait, Mark Hamill's playing Bender, or is that a no? I, I'm okay. just saying it, would, it. Like that would be interesting. I would tune in to see that, but I don't know that, uh, that means that he would necessarily be good just because he's a good voice actor. Uh, no, that's just no. I don't. I don't see him in the role. I just don't. What if they got Amy Schumer? <laughs> oh my play god! Play Charles Dance. <laughs> play Charles Dance. <laughs> Amy what? Schumer to play Charles Dance. I mean, you know, some people have that kind of range. Let's find out if she does. Hi everyone! <laughs> oh hi everyone! Hello. Hello. Tiny Hello. Metal about... vagina. Um, hey, vaginas are funny. So the they are actually they're funny little things. Uh, we got we we were all here. I say all. Metal is dead. You got hit by a train. <laughs> oh, he is. Yeah, oh. So he's, but he'll be Could fine. You imagine if that was actually how you announced that that had actually happened. <laughs> <laughs> I was dead. He got hit like, everyone's train. like, this is so insane. Anyway, insensitive. Arcane. And then I play a video the that same. Metal Maid saying, when I die, you must announce it this way. And I'm like, see? <laughs> yeah, you, like, turn on, you turn on sad music in like a slideshow. <laughs> you have to say it in that same emphatic way. Like, it can't be said in any kind of series. Like, Metal is dead. He got hit by a train. <laughs> he got hit by a train. It's well, like, no actually did it train? By a train. It's like, he did actually. This charade was all part of his last request. Indeed. And what rhymes with train, everybody? Lane. Pain. Arcane. Pain, which is what he Yay! felt when he died. We're gonna do it again. No, that that no, that ends with N. Yeah. Uh, this is the second the in a series of five streams about Arcane. Yes, yeah, so this is stream two of seventeen, because we're gonna obviously talk about the show several times over. Once you've gone through the first time, you only know what, like a fraction of the things that even happened. Because you were playing yeah. video games, weren't you? Someone out there feels victimized right now. Man, it's good. They were playing video games. <laughs> I like video games. I think that ends up being your theory whenever you speak to somebody about the criticism of the show. That Theo, you're like, were you were you yeah. playing video games when you were watching it? I mean, it's startlingly common with people just like completely misreading media or missing the most obvious shit. I can only assume that they're just doing something else on their other monitor. And yeah, yeah. Wait, yeah is like, she dead? Like, looking at the show. 
mean, that's yeah, that's yeah. common. I did miss stuff the first time through Arcane when I yeah, was paying too. full attention. But uh, yeah, yeah, I didn't miss anything at all. I, I got every single thing. I only rewatched yeah, it because too. I'm like, oh, I, <laughs> I guess I could. <laughs> rewatch it to assert <laughs> dominance. Nothing better to do. Um, T pose on Arcane. Now we have. A little bit of a little bit of a cap. I say a little bit because literally, like, it's no, it's, it's the kind of cap that any of the podcasts only even would have. Call yeah. it a cap. We we may only go for around five hours ish. Okay, so we should probably no. just get run in. I have no idea how long it'll take us to get through these episodes now because this is Act Two. That's how it was released. Okay, it's the second of the of the three acts. Terrifying. Um, that is I, pretty terrifying. I figure because it's just it's just gonna slow in with the previous stream that we should just get going. Is that all right with everybody? We're just gonna just gonna jump right in. Yeah. Jump yeah. Right well, in. I guess that's all right. I suppose we could do that. All right. But then. first, a oh, word from first. Keeps. From Keeps. No, oh, it's the. I was about to say the beard care thing, and I was like, no way. That's it's the hair. It's just that's hair. That's hair. You want to keep your hair. <laughs> you don't want to keep your beard. Hair. Dude, imagine it was the ad was what? like a lot of men are losing their beards. Time to keep your beard. If you find a beard, please contact this number below so we can find its rightful owner. A beard in the in the wild. You've been stealing beards. <laughs> I grew up surrounded by beards. Oh, no. I thought we were I grew up surrounded no. by beards. I thought we were sponsored by Trungos. Well, I mean, we get sponsored by all kinds of really great products like Quib Gift and um, Pinto. We don't but need we... to be paid to promote Trungos. Believe in new no Pinto or Quip Gift. They're yeah. both incredible. Do you see the socks this month from from Web Gift? They were fucking amazing. Oh, oh I haven't checked those out yet. I've just been so busy, you know. I gotta I gotta log on and check out uh the Quib Gift socks. The second yeah, I got them, I started hiking. I was like, these are these are hiking socks. You gotta, you gotta get socks, them broken in. Today's the day I became a hiker. Mm -hmm. hey, hey, socks are hey, okay, hey. but the uh the sockless toes, that's really where it's at. I, mean, I didn't realize this joke was going to derail so hard. We should get into this. Oh wow! Okay, Mister <laughs> Obsessed with Arcade. No, it's the joke police. <laughs> I'll I'll give you the opener so you can give us your incredible commentary. What do you think of Stanwick Padidley? Huh, Das? Hmm. Who, who, who the fuck is Stan? Exactly. <laughs> what do you know about Arcane? I guarantee you, Theo could answer that question. Theo. Get off mute and answer the question right now. Wait, I, know, I know the answer to that question. <laughs> well, that's actually kind of a funny, like, little... It's like a little litmus test. Who here even knows what I'm talking about? I know Rags no. wouldn't, and it would be fair to say that, but I assume the people who've rewatched this the show... Joke? I literally nope. thought you were making up a Wumbo word for fun. Nope. This nope. Is, this is <laughs> it's, a, it's a real thing. It's a real thing I'm from Arcane. I'm having a Stan Wick old time. Stan it's a whole Pididly scene is, about it. It's not Wumbo, or Simpsons, or Buffy, or anything. It's... From the show. <laughs> well, is that right. the name of? Is that the name of Heimerdinger's cat? No, it's the oh, name yeah. of. It's, it's the name it's, of somebody else that. Uh, well, I guess should we not spoil it? I don't well, know. It, it, it's it's not a spoiler. It's just you did you, you were close enough, rags. I give you the little trophy. Okay, you get it. It's all shiny and well. It's oh, not and you're the one shiny. who had no faith in me whatsoever from the beginning. Well, you've guessed, so I think that falls through with what I said. No, uh, but it's a fair guess. You tried. I, I give you that. There's a statue, right? That's in the opening. It's a big, it's a big old statue that the the Heimerdinger is looking at. And he says Stanwick Padidley. And he says everything he built like broke or exploded. Yet here I he stands that, yeah. because he set his own interests aside for the good of the world. Nothing he could accomplish would compare to the work of his students, or at least that's what he believed, and it made him very important to Piltover, which is an interesting thought just to keep in mind about this Stanwick Padidley. Um, funnily enough, Stan I think... Oh, go ahead. Uh, I just wanted to mention Stanwick Padidley is a character pulled from the lore, but his uh, function is uh, very different. In in the uh, in the lore, uh, Stanwick Padidley steals Victor's credit for a few inventions, which is part oh. of what, uh, uh, you know... I assume that got reworked. Parts. Well, they changed him up a oh, bit. That's still a thing. Yeah, that's not how Only it is because, in Arcane. Because in well, Arcane, can't be he was Arcane just an assistant, dead. and he didn't make any... <laughs> no, I mean, that... that's how it is in the lore. It's just not how it is in Arcane. Oh, okay, but, like, is Stan repeatedly dead, or...? Yeah, he's he dead. In the show, in I think so, yeah. So if he's dead, then how can he steal from Victor now? 
Well, you can't. That's what the, there's That's a difference what between like the league lore and like the shows. Yeah, yeah. League of lore. Well, league you're telling lore. so you're telling me that the uh, the show is going to be completely different from the lore. It quite it diverges very heavily from the lore, or at least from what was written. So that's going to be interesting. So a lot of people were saying that uh, because of the lore existing, then that's spoilers for the characters that don't die. This could mean that any one of our protagonists can be fucking killed in the next season. They could be bottled at any point. Like, or they, could be bottled. they could be pediddled. Yeah. <laughs> Nobody wants that. No, um, if, I was, if I was in charge of the writing team and I was like, oh, we've got a character named Stanwick Pediddly, like I would make sure to work that in. Right, like, that's a great name. Yeah, I can't believe well, they fridged Stanwick Pididly. Yeah, it's fucked. Unbelievable. Oh. They fridged Stanwick Pididly. Stanwick. Uh -huh. That would be a that would be a good name for like a Broadway musical. They fridged Stanwick Stanley Pid <laughs> Stanwick. <laughs> Stanley <laughs> no, no, we're get, we'll, we'll we'll do this. They fridged Stanwick Pididly. There you go. It would be a really good like a, a Broadway musical name. You watch many Broadway music musicals? No. So now do you know what the fuck you're talking about? Yeah, talking as though you watch all of them. Wow. How much League of Legends do you play, Jay? Mmm. All three. Who's your main? Um, yeah, who are you? I'm a dinger. Alright, fine. I'm a dinger main. Fine, you passed the test, Jay. I don't know how you I knew that pass name. I every test. Um... Well, because I play the game. Yeah, they're um they're talking about like the progress that's been made in Piltover and the big event that is progressed. And it was funny for a second. I was uh, when I was watching this, I was like, eh, it's a bit, mm. a bit overt, getting a lot of exposition we need, I suppose. But it's actually for a reason. It's that Jace is all stressed out because he's going to be doing the progress day speech. It's like what. And uh, Heimerdinger said he's he's usually the one. Well, I think Jace says that Heimerdinger is usually the one that does it, but uh, he wants Jace to do it this time around. And it's because of the amount of progress they've made in eight, seven years. I think it's seven years. Seven year time gap. Six, six to seven, something like that. Um, yeah. Which includes the well, the the hex gates have been constructed and are functioning, which um, I think is going to begin our our first discussion for good old world building. Because with everything you knew in those past three episodes, it's like a, a standard, and then you add seven to eight years, or six to seven, whatever, uh, there's going to be differences. But what would they be? Now, I think when you watch uh, Jace crack the, the hex tech in the scene, they have like flashes of uh, the rise spell. And um, uh, so I, just, I bring that up because I saw, I've seen some discussions here and there in Discord, and I resist jumping in because I'm like, oh, some people say some stuff that's just interesting, <laughs> that's all. Um, <laughs> so I saw someone saying how fucked that they've introduced this teleporting thing with the hex tech ruins everything, and they had a list of different things it ruins, but one of them, right at the top, was... What the hell is this anyway? Oh, you, you're fiddling with some arcane magic, you, you, you float a little bit when you crack it, and suddenly you're teleporting? That doesn't make any sense at all. Well, oh. Um, <laughs> yes! Now first yes, of, you do have teleporting. That's, that's the main thing it, that would that's make sense, did. given what's been established. So, yeah, the, he puts the little cogwheel through the center thing, and it zips out the other side. And that's what Rise did. It's what Rise did. That was Rise's spell. It was a teleporting spell. So it was just yeah, like, and the cog was a reminder of that. I <laughs> found it so that strange. On the screen. Yeah, but like, <laughs> let's pretend for a second that wasn't what Rise did. It's magic. Like, since when yeah. they're creating magic? I don't see why you'd be like, how, how the fucking magic teleports? Like, I don't know, it's magic. <laughs> like, they get to really <laughs> set the rules here. With, we're not dealing with established rules yeah. of some kind of long history. We're dealing with, this is the magic system and what it can do being established properly for the first time. There's no no contradictions here. Yeah, it's, it's a matter of, they get to tell us what the magic can do, and then we will go from there. And apparently they figured out uh, the teleporting thing, and it's being used for commerce, which is it's not like, pretty interesting. It's I not mean, like Force yeah, Heal being introduced in, like, you know, the, the ninth installment. <laughs> Luckily, in order to get the protagonists out of a very difficult position. It's also... Mm -hmm. Uh, with the way it's implemented at Karen, it's also fairly restrained, I want to say, because... I would say dramatically restrained. Game. It's not even weaponized yeah. in any way. 
Um, because the stipulation they introduce later on that isn't quite explicit yet is that the uh, hex crystals of this kind, uh, they cannot be used for any portable devices. So whatever's built with them is like stuck in place. So yeah. we can't just carry around a personal teleporter or anything. Yeah, and um, so that's the that was the first criticism I saw, and I was just like, that's just it's just fine. All right, chill. But second criticism <laughs> I saw, I told Frank about this one because I was just it's just so fun. Um, they were like, this is broken because it's been seven years with this technology. By now, Noxus or another region should have invaded them for this technology. What? <laughs> what? Or should they really? Have? Like it, like it would just be a thing that would happen. Just, it you know just, how geopolitics works. <laughs> I just like. I was amused reading it. Like Nox is in the newspaper. It's like they've cracked teleport. It's like, all right, get the army. That's all right, <laughs> get the boys together. Yeah, <laughs> Noxus is on the border. Okay. I don't even know over. about Noxus. It might surprise you to learn that that's not how it works. I don't know. <laughs> we get we get how, told like, relatively much, quickly that Noxus is is uh, trading with them. Um, yeah. Using these these portals, so yeah, I I I imagine, uh, but but like I don't want to jump ahead, but like Noxus is interested in them. The show definitely mm -hmm. puts that forward, but they're not interested in the sense that they're going to kill Piltover and take it. That's not <laughs> quite. But they're also, it. I mean, you think that might be a lot of effort, and also not worth that effort, considering you're already trading with them with the hex gates. Mm -hmm. there, there, there might be something that hasn't been revealed yet about one of the leaders of Piltover and their relationship with Noxus that might give you a really good explanation as to why they wouldn't just invade. It's just why they might have a diplomatic trade relationship. It'd be so much more complicated than you have something I want. I'm going to kill you. Like I doubt that's how the regions cooperate or ever have. Especially really, even um, Noxus, the most warlike of them, doesn't operate like that. It used to when it was when the law was, you know, more. Um, black and white, I guess, with Demacia as the good guys and Noxus as the bad guys. But uh, less so these days. And so we'll get into um, what, what, what is it, them cracking, teleporting, what kind of repercussions should that have for, uh, for their society, do you think? Is there anything that this show doesn't ver do very well, do you think, uh, between the lot of you? Uh, I mean, I guess it's not explored super much. I mean, mostly we know that it's used for trading. Yeah. At this point, we don't really know much else. So, I mean, I think a reasonable criticism might be that you don't see enough of the impacts or, or that there, you, you could explore it more is maybe a way that you could put it. Like if someone wanted to give that as a criticism, I think that's pretty reasonable because uh, like, I don't, I don't have a great understanding of exactly how it works or what the limitations are or exactly how it's being used, right? But in terms of what we actually get, I, I don't have much of a problem with it. I don't think I would call it fair for for you to criticize the show for not going more into something that isn't like directly about its main cast and its yeah. characters and its story. Like I, mention... I, I would say they could, but I don't think I would say it is a criticism that they didn't. Yeah, and not to yeah. mention, there's a lot that just goes unmentioned because the other characters know that they're just already aware of what's going on so they don't need to exposit a speech every time something is introduced because a lot of characters are of the understanding that the other characters are already privy to the information and so that's again this the show does a lot of show don't tell and kind of treats the audience with more respect than most shows do honestly so i would so if you think that you're stupid i would go as far as <laughs> saying um heimerdinger especially once you've got the full show probably is the Full representation of everything is done securely and safely over time, and so um, mm -hmm. I wouldn't be surprised if this is literally the only use of the technology right now, just that that gate being used. Um, I, I can imagine Jason Victor bounced some more ideas off of him, but Heimer was like, no, we're just going with this one. Yeah, Maybe and it probably took a while to get that one through. I'm, I'm sure he was against it at first yeah. sort of thing. But um, it's not hard to imagine that with the benefits it provides that he was outvoted or something like that. Mm -hmm. Um, because yeah, uh, the, it was it was part of it was being like, shouldn't it have like way more of an effect on the entire city, society, and possibly the whole world to have invented something like this? And I'm just not sure what changes we should have seen that we didn't see. Um, trade has been increased in speed significantly for very particular uh, elements. Like, I, it's not like everything is transported that way now. It's that particular things are. Um, it's more for like it's higher. Changed. Yeah, 
it's changed Piltover's geopolitical status. They're a shipping lane now. Yes. Because uh, the hex gates are fantastic for that. Mm-hmm. Um, you might, yeah, you might be able to say there isn't enough of a contrast, maybe, because like, like Piltover, Piltover would logically become much more prosperous. But I don't think it's established well enough how prosperous they are in the first three episodes to really make a contrast. But again, that's that's pretty nitpicky. I mean, you, don't, you don't need to establish something like that. You just need to establish that it is booming now, right? Which I think yeah, they do I think with, that's the, fair. with the beginning, the opening of Progress Day. Everybody's um, yeah. It's very clear that Piltover I mean, is prospering. Yeah. If um if the show opened with episode four, right? And I mean, you could do that. You could basically just lose the four first three episodes and start. I mean, you would lose a lot of great storytelling, but you could start the story at episode where it, where it picks up at episode four, and you would um it would make sense. I think you could follow it. Yeah. It's just that you miss out on a lot of foundational stuff that give you more yeah. feels uh the thing is um if we did start with uh hey this new technology was invented eight years ago we you wouldn't be then like and i don't think anyone would be saying well you know it's not really established how it was working out how well we were doing before so we can't really contrast because yeah you know we can it's, imagine it's it, just understood it well yeah it's just understood that you don't really need to to see it to understand that a change has occurred mm -hmm. Yeah. Like I, I'll probably have some criticisms of the magic system at some point, but I don't think it's a problem right now. All right. I would hasten to like cover the bases and say it's perfectly fair for one to start to wonder and also probably be worried about what this technology is capable of. Well, yeah, magic. Um, it's not too far away from time travel for me with with writing. It's like you gotta be careful. <laughs> magic can uh, it can fuck everything you up. Do if have you're not to be careful. careful with magic. Yeah. Yeah. You don't want to end up I, like Harry I, Potter. I, well, so. <laughs> I, I don't know that if if I would say that magic and time travel are necessarily on the same level. Well, I didn't. Oh, time travel is worse. Same. Not even close. <laughs> yeah, time yeah. travel is so much worse. Well, time I, time I, travel I, is just like a narrative cul-de-sac that you just get lost in. Well, yeah, so I, I I would say that it's the reason why I would say that is because magic can make things a little bit like you can be like, oh, does that really like how things interact in the world or like, you know, just how how real world science is impacted by it. Like there's sometimes that can be a bit murky, but like time travel is at the root. It's cause and effect. Like yeah. you are you are playing with fire when you are doing time travel. Yeah. And in your story, you can still set. Thing. Exactly. You can still set limits for magic and everything in between. But when it comes to time travel, you can try and set all the limits that you want. But it seems time travel always contradicts itself. Yeah, um, the only the only good time travel movie I've seen is Primer that I can think of. Are there any other good ones? Because it's been done a well, lot. So I think that Terminator is a good time travel film um, because I feel like an easy interpretation of the time travel in that film is... It happens, and we got like a new timeline now. And we don't even need to think about the timeline that they came from. Like it's it's just irrelevant now. Does it make it a good time uh, then, travel movie, or just the the time the, travel? The time makes... travel as an element doesn't compromise the story. Yeah, yeah. I, I didn't guess, even uh, think of that as a time travel movie. Obviously, Terminator One and Two are pretty good because Ryan Johnson was right when describing that. that movie, but not when describing his own. But not when he described Looper. <laughs> um, wait, wait, wait. I How did he describe it? He said that in Looper, uh, it's like Terminator with the time travel. It sets up the story and then gets out of the way. That couldn't be further from the truth. No? Like, time travel <laughs> is consistently... consistently. No? Has he, not, what, has he not seen the film he made? I don't know. <laughs> no, okay. he probably hasn't. As we hasn't. established before the stream, Zack Snyder can't read. Wait, that's that's a different person that can't read. <laughs> I, I, I just want to question that. I just want to accept that. I just want to accept the conclusion of this is that Zack Snyder can't read. Ryan Johnson, his his alter ego is Zack Snyder. He's like, yes, now I could finally be free from my confines of a brain, and I could make all the stupid movies I always wanted to make. I will be Zack Snyder. Dude, those two should and team then, up. Yeah, they should. Then they could make a movie that's. I don't know what would their combination movie be. Well, I suppose they could make a Knives Spider Out, but like the opening is just Daniel Craig covered in blood, holding like knives, and it's like bam, bam, bam. The Batman bum, shows up. Bum. Yeah, he has to. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it's called Knives Out. It opens on. I somebody throw up whenever out. I see someone killed. Uh, that would be funny to listen to. Ryan is like, I want a shot where like it shows you know uh, Daniel Craig is like standing above all of the people, and he's just like, no blood blood we need blood death 
stop. We have like a like Allie. a fist fight between all of the characters in this room right now, and then a zombie tiger could jump in through the window. Oof, cool. Then they have to, and then they pull out machine guns, and one of them has a katana, and it is very cool. Zack Snyder would be like, I have a great color correction filter to use on this film, and it like completely desaturates it and makes it about seventy percent darker. <laughs> Very cool. Zack Snyder would be like, I have a great color correction filter I could put on this film and then just puts on a pair of sunglasses. <laughs> yeah. How did it change the colors of everything in the world? That's amazing. How did it do that? Who anyway, else knows this um, power? We're, we're a tenth of our time is up already. Uh, just oh, well. <laughs> <laughs> well, that happens. Um, I'll keep doing that in fractions because everyone loves fractions. Uh. By showing us uh, this this progress has been made with the hex gates, it's very clear time has passed. And I would say a big indicator of that as well is that Heimerdinger has a lot of uh, sort of he's he's very respectful toward Jace and even says you deserve this honor, which quite a difference compared to the last time they were talking. So it's like yeah, yeah. It must have um, Jace must have been doing some good shit since then. We get a lot yeah. of that in this opening to tell you Jace's reputation is completely different than it was uh, seven years ago. Yeah, we've know. gone from don't mention magic, shut up, shut up, shut up to this. So Man of progress. Oh no, yes. we're two minutes into the episode. <laughs> we are. Um, so, uh, yeah, he mentions, by the way, and this is, I think, very important. Heimerdinger mentions his achievements in the, in the sense of You've brought scholars to our city, and you've reignited passions in art and science. So, it's not like he's talking about, you've made uh, trading wine with Noxus very efficient. It's like, no, he's... he's <laughs> I'm Hammerdinger's a wino. Hammerdinger has, so like, really, his own really priorities happy. and things that he cares about. He's, yeah, he's like a... Ca Car Karen. <laughs> Karen. No, I don't know. Karen. Karen. Like, Heimerdinger is a Karen. He's a Karen. <laughs> Oh, no. I want to see him with the hat. <laughs> I saw you using magic, and I want to speak to your manager mm -hmm. immediately. This is very unsafe. Wait, what if a Karen is the manager? Because he is kind of the manager in a lot of ways. So I would like to speak <laughs> he to myself. Became the manager. Oh god! This is like where we the, bring in Zack Snyder. Like singularity sword fight. Karen Dinger. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> um. But yeah, one of the, the first visuals you can start to spot is that there is this man of progress thing that's being printed on like all kinds of different things, banners, cups, and stuff, with Jace's face. It's like, oh, that's that's definitely a change. And we see some mechanical butterflies. Ain't they cute? I wish to Aww. I wish to plant a flag in that. I'm gonna plant flags as we as we go with lots of different things. I think I did it with the first three episodes because we're gonna do all kinds of callbacks. You better be ready for that. It's gonna be scary, um, but yeah, everything's very happy, chill. Like kids are in wonder with all the technology and its little like elements, and everything's fun. It's just like pilt over progress day is a lot of good shit. Yeah, um, big deal. Everyone's happy. Mhm. Mm and then we see Caitlin, um, which well, I, I guess you should say we see Jace first. Uh, I was actually looking over this um, yesterday when I decided to take a break from editing. Book of Boba Fett reaction in episode 7 coming out possibly tomorrow. Uh, yeah, oh my god. The finale. Uh, just just, just want to throw that out there. Chat, if you saw Book of Boba Fett, wasn't it fucking amazing? Best episode. Anyway. Remember the Rancor? Rancor I remember the Rancor. Mm. I remember. I remember the Rancor. <sighs> um, anyway, the last dirt? time we saw Jace in relation to the it is Kiraman's, right? I, I, or yeah, Kiraman. Yeah, okay. Kalen Kiraman, yeah. Yeah, so he got booted out, basically, and separated from being able to talk to Caitlyn. And then when we see him with Caitlyn's mum in this scene, like the first moment she describes him as their most famous protege, it's like, holy shit, that's changed then. Like, mm -hmm. um, he's now like fully accepted and even used as a, as a, as a boon to their like achievements and stuff. They can't just use him as a boon. They did, and they will. Boon me, daddy. How could they? They, they put his, they guess, put his face on posters. I guess to plant this seed already, you may notice that someone else isn't here <laughs> while all this is going on. Jesus. Yeah, I mean, there were yeah. two people at Crack Text Tech. Hitler. Seems to be the one who's not around that much. Um... The, uh, but, yeah, but then we get, uh, a, almost a reintroduction to Caitlyn. Just add some of the stuff you've known 
from the first three episodes, but this is more of a strong introduction to a character, especially there's a lot of dialogue that gives you the baseline for what she's going to be up to. Primarily being, Jace is making fun of her for being on guard here, when there's literally, like, no crime at all. But um, that's thanks to her mum, is what we figure out, because she doesn't want her anywhere near actual danger. Um, yeah. And... He's, uh, she says like she's annoyed, and then he says, "Well, it's not. It's your fault for not following a career more befitting your station." See, we got class issues. Can you believe it? Yeah. Hey. Um. Yeah, and Caitlin said she'd do anything to keep me from seeing the real world. Which, uh, one of them fundamental lines, I would say, that describes a lot about a person. Yes. Anyway, yeah, she's, uh... a lot about a pretty, a lot about a pretty great character. <laughs> oh God. Mm. I feel like this fight's already brewing, bubbling. Who knows? I don't know. Anyway, so you see the shi the shipping lanes, and um, there's this there's this weird guy on like a a board of some kind holding a stopwatch, getting toward it. He looks villainous. I think he's probably a bad guy. Um, and then there's these like thug like peeps moving some barrels. Um, so everything seems kind of normal on the surface. But three barrels have uh, little crosses on them, little, little pink crosses. And it's like, hmm, you gotta, you gotta wonder. And uh, I recognize Big Tattoo Man as one of Silco's goons. Yes, he was the one that got punched in the fucking face. Bye yep. bye. And uh, I think he was, he was down until the like end of the episode. So, you know. Yeah, pretty much. Surprised he ain't dead. <laughs> Good to know he's alive and well <laughs> after seven years in hospital. Probably. Um, Pop his goddamn head off. <laughs> Well, he's got nothing good in the store for him, if you recall. <laughs> True. Uh, so, yeah, this this guy is like, what, 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 what you guys up to? And then they give him a bag of money. It says money on the bag. And and they're like, from your friend downtown, I think, is what Savika says. Who, um, looking a little bit different as well. Last we saw her, her arm was blown off. Um, yeah, she's not dead. She looked pretty damn dead earlier on, but uh, she seems to have made it. And she's got, like, scarring on her face to the side as well. There's another uh, detail about her that I'll try and pick out if I can find it, but yeah, it's um, it's kind of neat because like every person you see who was in the first three, it's just like the show kind of wants to try and be like, tell you some stuff without telling you it straight away, and um, we'll get to that soon enough with some other characters, but yeah, she gives money, everything's great, about to, it's about to move on, but these pesky bored people, they just they just rush in, an attack. It's bored a... people. <laughs> yeah, look. Yeah, this they're so racist. Bored people. People of bored. Mm -hmm. People of bored. Who uh have pretty interesting tech, and they have like masks that also modify their voices. And when they come in, they throw like crystal things at people, and it freezes them up, uh, temporarily. And uh, they they say that they even, the leader seems to have a timer too, to make sure he knows when they're gonna break out because it's only temporary, which is pretty interesting. Whoever these guys are, they don't seem to want to kill people, or if they can avoid it, they'll they'll do it. So you know, it's always a big indication of they, stuff. And they're things. coming in prepared. Yeah. You could say that they uh, they got crowd control. Not Captain Marvel. <laughs> They, they got they got character. CC'd and they know how long it lasts. <laughs> They're five, stunned for a a five minute time. stun. Nobody's gonna think yeah. that's balanced. Please okay. no. <laughs> five minutes. Stun. You're stun. You are stunned for five minutes. Like, I'm, I'm just gonna like, fucking game, go make food if I get hit by that move. <laughs> like, yeah, if, if you can <laughs> pull down, if you've played WoW Classic, it's not far off from kidney shot. Oh. <laughs> kidney oh shot. Oh no. Um. Morgana, someone said, because <laughs> of a kid. Yeah, yeah, that's the old joke. You get hit by a Morgana behind you, go and make a cup of tea, take a shower, and you know, go about your day. Then you come back and you're still like halfway through the CC duration. That's the thing about when you're in the middle of a fight. If anything takes like two seconds, like literally, that's the description. It feels like ten minutes. Mm -hmm. Please <laughs> let me go. A long time in gameplay terms. Um, but yeah, uh, so obviously. Silco must have some kind of deal with the people involved with these things via money to sell Shimmer, and these ships are going through those lanes, so um, that that seems to be an operation, and these fuckers are attacking it, whoever they may oh, be. No. Party um, poopers. Yeah. But um, 
they that's seem to a, be. That would be funny. That's what they said. Oh, the party poopers are here. <laughs> <laughs> that's the name of their organization. That's the organization. <laughs> the party poopers. Yeah, uh, so they. they I feel seem like to... more more terrorist sex and like organized crime needs need to prioritize humor when coming up with their name. Yeah, well, that's why that's why they attacked on Progress Day because they're party poopers. Well, like, mm -hmm. Imagine like imagine like fucking some terrorist organization decided to call themselves like the Poopy Poops. The poopy just so poops. they'd have to listen, just so that like news news reporters would have to say that. Here are the, the demands of the reason. Poopy Poops. It's like, when are the Poopy really Poops funny? have wiped... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> um, so yeah, the, the, their goal is to just destroy, crush, kill all of the shimmer. It's just like, at that point, you're just like, I wonder who's who's aligned with who here. What's what exactly is happening? Um, and two of them go below deck, I guess, uh, to check to see if there's more to destroy down there. Um, but then, like, they're trying to do like a creepy thing. It's like, what's 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 going on here? And uh, they accidentally trip something that locks the room and you see a little um little drawing which i think is enough to already give it away yeah. for most people yeah. um given we we've, we've seen a character draw something of this type of animal and in a very jagged way before well i was actually going to i was going to say i'll i'll try and grab up a little comparison here like so this is what they see and uh <laughs> I would say it looks a lot like this, which is something that was all drawn up by powder back in the day, uh, in the sort of main area. But the drawing she's done this time, kinda, reminds me of something. Does it remind the you body. guys of something? Mm, of a monkey, yeah. perhaps? Yeah. yeah. One which, that uh, might have mm. caused a few problems. So, um... <laughs> This is the thing. I'm trying to avoid praising the show too fucking heavily, okay? But I think that's a really fucking good choice. Because straight away, <laughs> tells me a lot, right? Lots of information is sent right into my brain worms. I have them. Lots of them. They, they just chill. Oh, eating past and stuff. Um, yeah, that's, that's, that's a thing that's happening there. Okay, uh, has not left her thoughts. No. And <laughs> don't, don't worry, Chad. They uh they say she's here, and uh, when I was watching this, I was just like, oh fuck, what what has she become as a result of this? Like, oh jeez, because um, she's essentially a psychopath in the game. Yeah. So, and that's not off the table for uh, what we've seen the first three episodes plus seven years of being brought up by the these these laws. So oh, bad one. Yes. Um, she like. Uh, goes past him real quick and attaches six grenades. I really wish it were just two. <laughs> because, like... <laughs> man, you attach three on each of them real quick. It's impressive. She must have had, like, some kind of... Like, three at a, a, in each hand, I'm sure. Uh, mm -hmm. Though, obviously, it doesn't really matter. One or three, they get blown up, and they're dead. Uh, which... I guess it is an immediate thing of, like, whoever just attached those bombs really doesn't give a fuck about killing people, huh? No. So how many? Nope. How many does your E do in the game? Oh, her E is like incredibly low damage. And yeah, it doesn't do any damage. Mainly it's a, a stun. Crowd control ability. Yeah, I was yeah. just saying, how many? How many of the chompers get launched? I think I think it's three, three or it's five. Three. three. Yeah. Okay. Um. Yeah, we got like a little little smoke as she exits the the thing, and I think they like kind of do. I guess you could call it like an audience bait for a moment. She could, like comes across as a little bit um, out of the loop and like, hi, and you're just like, what the yeah. fuck? Because, you know, for those who have no fucking clue who Jinx is um, from the game, it's just like, this is powder grown up now, which is already just like, oh man. And the first thing she does is huck two grenades at two more people. Yeah, and uh, pulls the, the pins with her teeth. It's just like, oh shit, she's... um. Mm. I mean, she's cool. Well, uh, uh, I I don't know how everyone feels about that. You know, I I don't I dare I ask. Does everyone think that she's cool or not? I don't know. I think she's very cool, and like the the suspense on the cool. scene is pretty pretty great. I think. I think sometimes she crosses the edgy line for me, but you know, I think she's cool like a lot of the time. 
Yeah, um, I feel like I'll, I, I've I've heard people refer to her as like a Jared Leto Joker in how like extreme uh, she can be sometimes. No, not I, even close. I don't know not that we can have that close. conversation just yet. We're gonna need a lot more references. Um, yeah. But that is definitely a conversation that we're gonna have to have because it's a lot of people have brought it up. A lot of people feel that way. They may be yeah, wrong. What what, <laughs> what, I, what I will say is like she represents kind of an archetype and the yeah. archetype has been done very badly a lot of times and i think that she's oh, yeah. a very good version of that archetype it's um it's it's such an easy it, it's such like a hey let's wank over how cool this character is archetype that, that just becomes so cringe immediately if if they do it with that attitude yeah um obviously the main reference would be margot robbie's harley quinn for recent years right how uh, yeah, dare sure. you? You um, hate women. That is yes. a character that has had three full portrayals in movies, and they still don't know exactly what the fuck they're doing with her. Um, I don't really understand much about her. Uh, you guys I remember Birds of Prey? No. Not well, no. <laughs> <laughs> Didn't see it. It is a sludge movie that's hard to recall. I agree. Well, because I think the whole point of that film was like, uh, moving on from Mr. J, you know, like that was basically the whole point of that film. And I think by the end, we're meant to believe that that's what happened. <laughs> I, don't, I don't know. If it was like, and then in like the Suicide Squad, it felt like she was pretty static. Mm -hmm. She's she's there because it's Harley Quinn and everybody likes Harley Quinn, right? And she would have to announce that she's a bad guy. And like the, the wait, yeah, Suicide Squad, not the Suicide Squad to make sure no one's oh, that's someone... not confusing at all, right? We're bad guys. It's what we do. Ugh. That was exactly the first talks. one, yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> um, but yeah, she knocks out two of the four people who are the body people in this area straight away, and then she's obviously knocked down two below. Um, I keep wanting to call him by his name, but I'm like, I guess I shouldn't yet. <laughs> the leader throws him. two of those crystally Owl things man. at it. She dodges one and uh, shoots the other one. And, uh, I don't know, just the... She's she, she been getting good. We should go with that pistol. I think we're about to talk about her aim with a different weapon soon. Um, but I just, I like this shot. You can see the the, the Batman. I, I, I mean, he's not Batman, but he's a man who seems to have bat features. Uh, the, the species <laughs> is called Cheerians, or Carrions. I'm not sure what the pronunciation Wait, is. There is. A, is there a champion who's one of those? There is not a champion. There is, however, a bunch of like Biting cards racism. in the card game. Okay. So I, I would just buy the comic book that the title, if the title was "Man Who Seems to Have Bat Features." <laughs> <laughs> Mildly bat. Imagine that. Like. a picture of a person with like some pointy ears and like a nose like that with question marks all around him. Like he appears to have bat features. <laughs> yeah. Um. But yeah, he, he goes for it, she dodges and shoots him in, I think, his mask. Uh, or he dodges it? It's kind of hard to tell because it's pretty quick. Yeah, some, it's a very, very quick maneuver. Um, but she does a dodge. kick him over and then jumps and lands specifically on his head, which um, I would probably hit a little bit and, and it breaks his mask. Um, meanwhile, uh, the leader and uh, a subordinate are just desperately trying to get the job done now, which is to explode the or at least burn the the shimmer i'm not sure does shimmer explode or does it just burn it appears to explode in concentrated issues or anything like that but it's like it, by itself it seems to be like an accelerant yeah well because we, like we watched because in the uh, in the third yeah it's basically like gasoline because we saw it in the third yeah. episode it was trailed along the floor and then it like followed up to the lab where there was a, like a bunch of it and then it blew up so it's basically like gasoline um, he, uh, he signals his friendo to to drop the flare, to burn it, and she grabs it. By the way, look at her, uh, look at her, look at her nail varnish there. Look at that, look at that detail. Yeah. Robots. I mean, I'm sure it was all uniform as well. Uniform. Like yeah, gaps in it. Scratchy. Yeah, like Some seriously, because you'd think. Especially with the style, they could have just made it a single color for each nail. But instead, we got all the, the, the scratchy removal pieces of it, and um, 
you can if you look at all the, the details of the colors and the reflections on them it's just like you don't Incredibly have to do detailed. that yeah. <laughs> but you do it anyway um jinx grabs the her hand and hits her in the head with the 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 butt of the pistol and it knocks off the the mask and it's vi or at least she thinks it is um because the girl... i also thought it was i very much like that they give it to you from her perspective first i'm i'm appreciative of that yeah and uh she's struggling there and she immediately like comes out of this sort of terminator mode into oh Wait, what? And, uh, we get... It's just, like, shut down briefly. Yeah, that's the girl she's actually grabbed. But, uh, you can understand the mistake, kind of. Just, I think she even yeah. says it's the hair. Uh, mm -hmm. And then we get flashes of memory. And now, this is not like Boba Fett, where they're like, do you remember all the Tuscans that this died? Is just isn't like that Boba sad? Fett. What are you talking about? Look at this no, fucking these, frame. Uh, flashbacks with interesting little things added into them. Hmm. It's like the memories are a little bit warped. A complete clash. Well, it's, like it, it's like we're seeing an, a person's perception of an event rather than literally just the same footage that we were shown originally, but again. Yes. Uh, Whoa, what a great way to do a flashback. And the fact that we cut the first flashback is her being loving, and then the second one is her grabbing her and saying you're a jinx. Just uh, very straightforward. This is this is a clash. She has a clash of 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 oh, yeah. thoughts. You can oh. see it in her expression. <laughs> She's just trying to process yeah whatever the fuck's going on in her head. Well, look at that uh that image right there. Yeah. <laughs> Some the really scratchy mm. line work is uh it just makes it a lot more chaotic as an yeah. image. Um. Yeah, she... This is something. This is something that the show I think does exceptionally well, which is like um, surreal explorations of the mind. Uh, there's a bunch of different shots that do that in different ways, but I, I found it to be very effective. It's something I really like, but it's not done very well in film all that often. So I really appreciate that. Um, um, in this case, it feels like another just good example of utilizing the medium. Absolutely, yeah. Uh... Though, um, you know, I'm not unaware of criticisms of this moment, right? So the first one I've seen is that, um, wow, is it so hard to try and use your other arm to help you get out of being grabbed? I think all you've got here is that the girl is panicking and she's been hit in the face with a pistol, so maybe she's a bit woozy, but yeah, it, it doesn't seem like she's putting as much effort as she could into escaping yeah, Jada guys, Jinx's this, grip. I would say that mm -hmm. this is not as bad as in Endgame, a film that I haven't been thinking about lately, where Thanos <laughs> is about to get an axe pushed into his face by Thor, and he just leaves his left arm just there, not doing anything for a and solid say, five seconds. Yeah, this is really <laughs> quick as well, and it's kind of difficult to understand yeah. exactly how much time has passed, because it's, uh, Jinx's mind is going because all over the place. POV. yeah. Um, but then the other criticism is, are they not standing in fire right now? Hmm. Which, and also, uh, look, she's using her other hand. Look. She is there, yeah. Um, yeah. Visually gorgeous, but um, I think Wait. it probably should have fucked up their legs quite a bit. They're both standing um, in the pool. Yeah. <laughs> They're yeah, right in it. Pool. <laughs> They're right in it, yeah. At yeah. least I can appreciate that this avoids a huge pet peeve of mine in video games, which is when your character lightly maybe gets within the vicinity of a tiny little flame on the ground, your entire character bursts into flame and you start <laughs> taking damage. That's the, dude, that's such a fucking movie trope with objects and buildings. Like, uh, there's one flame on the floor, every, the whole thing goes up. Everybody is doused in gas. Like... Your character sure. must be doused in gasoline, yeah. Wait, is it... Uh, is it super clear they're standing over? I, I'm, I'm watching it right well, now. They I were guess. standing in the, they were standing are in the pool. I'm oh, pretty, yeah, yeah, sure, okay. I'm pretty yeah. sure they're in it. And someone said it's to show she's no, focused. Are, like, I do follow that it would show she's focused, but she stands in here long enough that I would do serious damage to her legs. Um, yeah, that, that's fair. That's a good concerned. criticism. Uh, the fire is purple. How do you know how it works? I've bought purple yeah. fire before. Have you not heard oh. the song Purple Flame? No. That means you're Oh, it's got the rules in it somewhere. Um, but it's 
But yeah, the girl breaks from the grip, and as she tries to run away, Jinx shoots her in the back. And she's dead. Wow, Which, um, Yeah, and the leader is like, no! And it's just kind of like, oh man, I'm so, I'm so conflicted. Who's the, what's happening here? <laughs> Who's the good guys? Who's the bad guys? Um, the reaction immediately after it seems well, like she sort of did that reflexively. Yeah, she's uh, almost hyperventilating, probably wondering what the hell is happening because <coughs> she was certain that was Vi for a moment. Mm -hmm. um, and yeah, uh, the leader's all sad. He's like, oh my god, why the fuck? And then he looks at his, his little clock and uh, all the people are breaking out of the freezy things, so he, he best get going. Um, but he still tries to commit to uh, hitting her, yeah. and he in mad. reaction, yeah, he married. He very mad. Um, so he sprints at her with his uh, his little stick. I'm, I'm not entirely sure what it is. It looks very custom. And uh, in response, she pulls out her fucking Gatling gun and uh, starts spraying it like a, a madman everywhere. Um, but I think is it is it person with bat like features is the one that saves. Yeah. The yeah, he gets him out. man bails him out. Um, I love the expressions on Jinx's face in this scene when she's shooting that gun. Mm. Fucking losing her schnizzles. <laughs> um, and yeah, she's shooting fucking everywhere. Looks completely terrified. Well, yeah, because like, I don't know what better like, way to have shown us just... her mind is a fucking tangled web of chaos right now. Sometimes it's rage, and sometimes it just looks like outright fear. Yeah. Um, and I, I noticed this as well. That this was definitely the first time where I was like, I'm really starting to notice it. The uh, when screaming characters, they they don't resist showing that saliva getting around. Yeah. Mm -hmm. They didn't before. The, the animators have a spitting a spit fetish. Um. Spit yeah. Fetish. She uh. Split. Tags a whole bunch of things, a bit of the the shimmer and um, one of the one of the henchmen, um, and it looks as if she just shoots until the Gatling gun. Like I don't exactly know how the Gatling gun works. I don't think it's a spoiler to consider everything we know about it throughout the show. It seems to run on. I don't know if there's an ammo feed. Is kind of where I'm going with this. Yeah, I don't know where the at like. <laughs> It's it. We're, I think we might have to chalk this one up to technological bullshit. I think so. Yeah, uh, because the ammo you can't, is stored in hammer space. Yeah, you, you can't actually <laughs> like in the movies. You can't you can't carry a Gatling gun around and just shoot it. You have to carry yeah. all the ammunition that you want to shoot, and you have to carry this big fucking battery to spin the thing. And the gun itself is going to be a huge. It, it 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 weighs a crap load. There's a reason you can't just carry those around. We know that it fires um, real physical ammo. Yes. Oh, yeah. Okay. You see the shells everywhere. It's casings shells. everywhere. Mm -hmm. Well, it's, there goes uh, that interpretation. This is the kind of the. Uh, I think this comes up more than once. Uh, they are locked in to what certain weapons have to be here because of the game. I don't know that it was natural for her to make a Gatling gun. Uh. I, the pistol is totally chill with me. The Gatling gun feels a yeah. little bit more like, well, she has it in the game. You're like, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Especially when she's a skill is established, she's a sharpshooter when a Gatling gun is not it, a it's, sharp it's a different kind of uh, <laughs> much more difficult to be. Should have come later. Sorry? I feel like this should have come later. I, yeah, I don't same. disagree with that. And I've seen a lot of people point out, it's like, man, that is something that's pretty damn heavy for a girl who build. And it's like, yeah, she's yeah. very tiny. <laughs> <laughs> she but probably I, weighs I, like a hundred pounds it. or something. Uh, yeah. Well, eighty, <laughs> something ridiculously small, I'd imagine. Um, right now, she's still in like the early stages of unhinged, so I don't know about you know the Gatling gun. Yeah, yeah, the manic weapon. I agree. Um, and the and the the barrels are spinning, and the last one ends on showing the girl who's dead. Again, a nice choice of doing a shot. I think we found this, um, Fring, were we talking about it? Where it's like, Boba Fett is like a show where you can tell, and yeah, we're going to be referencing it a whole bunch again, guys. We just saw the finale, okay? <laughs> it's a show where no shots are thought about. You can tell that they're all just done for the sake of, you know, like, this is what happens. So this is what we show. Yeah. 
while when um, they show Luke's arm, it's the entire frame is just Luke's arm out of focus. That yeah, was a odd. funny moment, yeah. Um, meanwhile, show like Arcane, it seems like they grab opportunities to present things in particular ways uh, a lot of the time, and it, it makes for a lot of fun looking at them, because you're like, oh. And, uh, it seems to me like a, that's a huge indicator of um, passion, I think. Because I don't know that it requires intense levels of talent and skill and experience to be able to just pull off some shots that make the audience go, oh, it's a different way of showing that. I'd agree. I think I feel like a lot you of time can... as well. Um, I... so the um, <clears throat> it, what I find to be underappreciated is cinematography that conveys the atmosphere and the um and the tone of the scene without drawing focus from the events that are actually happening within it. You don't have to be consciously perceiving, "Wow, that's such a great shot!" to be watching excellent, amazing uh, cinematography. And Arcane has a lot of that. Yeah. Where it captures atmosphere without pulling focus. I've seen people talk about it. I guess I'll bring it up because I, I don't know. It's just like, a, is there not boosted strength for everybody in Arcane slash League of Legends? That's not something I'm aware of at all. Not really. Uh, mm. You would have to just take that by the standards of looking at what the average human seems to be capable of doing. They seem yeah, pretty normal. Like um, they, they all seem pretty normal. I mean, you remember when we were talking about Vi using Vander's gauntlets and she was being weighed down by them and everything, right? So it, It's grounded, are... but like, there are things like some of the jumps Vi makes and whatnot and that sort of thing, yeah. but I don't know how much that's worth talking about because... There are a few bits of them doing some stuff that's like, whoa, that's something you can do. I'm like, yep, all right. But, um... People can do that. Shrug. Yeah, uh, I don't know about the idea that she's able to hold this because she's got boosted strength from something. That that argument no. only comes in in episode eight, I would argue. Yes. Um. But yeah, just another. The rest of the scene is just appreciating her uh, facial expressions again, which um, there's a lot it's, of really good ones. It's a really cool thing they did because we talked about fan service before and i feel like the start of the scene is whoa look it's jinx she's cool now look she's beating them up and she's really good and stuff now and then they bring it back like back to the narrative by showing no 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 this person still has a shitload of trauma and their mind is uh, not sound and by having a completely just break in the second half of it and there's a consequence layer that's fun to see. The fucking bad guy, at least, you know, right-hand man being Savika is like, the fuck are you doing? And it's like, yay, what? it's not just that she's crazy and nobody cares. Even mm. the bad guy's like, you're fucking everything up. And, uh, Savika hates it. So he, says, um, so he says, what the fuck are you doing? And then she says, we're bad guys. It's what we do. Oh, it's God. what we that's do. What <laughs> I can't oh, wait God. to get back to the last drop and tell Mr. J that I ruined no. the airship. Again. Oh, God. No. <laughs> and then he says, honka, honka. No. <laughs> Silco says, Come here, honka, Jinx, honka. my little honka, honka. <laughs> oh, jeez. Um, I can't yeah. wait to get the David God, Ayer. That would be at, so uh, horrible. Uh, she, like, smiles at Savika, and then so he has this moment of looking around, and just the expression change on Jinx's face then as well. Just like, I fucking hate you. But you, they hate each other. They're not exactly friends, uh, Jinx and Savika. Not a shock either, because Savika, her whole thing is trying to make things run smoother. So, um, uh, Jinx is A little kind of smirk a... from Jinx is almost seemed to be like daring Savika to take a swing. Yeah. Or something to that effect. Um... All right, Something you know with what? a chip on her shoulder, I think I would keep... Wow, a chip on her shoulder, part. really? Yeah. Isn't that bigoted or whatever? Pretty sure. Probably. Uh, yeah, we see some people fucking around with, with some fun stuff on Progress Day. And then we get... Uh, Victor is popping in a big screw with some runes written on it. And I think uh, for you, when we were watching it, uh, we saw... This this shot of Victor, and we were both like, "Oh no! Oh, he's look oh." Yeah. <laughs> like, yeah. Um, and 
to be fair, I think a lot of people might not even notice there's something to notice. Um, let's see if we can yeah. get a comparison. There's a couple of things. Mm. There are a few things. Mm. One moment. I'm pretty sure I have an image for this. Eh. Eh. We've gone through 10 minutes you? of the episode. It's very promising. There's actually uh, two things to notice about his changes. Well, to be fair, there's probably more than that, but there's two things that I notice. Eh. There we go. Okay. So. Let's, uh, when we saw him in uh, episode two, this mm -hmm. is how he looked. And then we see, the first time we see him in this episode, he's looking like this, which I think is a really good comparison. Yeah. Mm -hmm. He ain't doing well. Cheeks are all sunk in, and he's he got dark circles under the well. eyes. The lighting, the lighting yeah, the as lighting. well. Yeah. We Victor ain't looking good. Side? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. And. The other that one. is nice. What is yeah, the other one, Theo? Right. Is for the other one, or um, I might do. What is the other one, Theo? Uh, he has gone from cane to crutch. True. Yeah, we don't see one. that just yet. Oh well, that's fine. Uh, we'll we'll just show it anyway. So that's what he used to have, and now he has this. Uh, and he's even got the um the brace on his leg, which he didn't used to have. Yeah. Mm -hmm. We see it when he turns to what. <laughs> Which is great attention to detail, dude. Like, um, yeah, uh, this is the thing because we already knew at this point, uh, me and Frankie, what his fate was thanks to the game. So seeing this progression, which I think anybody who knows the games would just be like, "Oh man," because <laughs> yeah. he's he's mm -hmm. a he's a good little science boy. Bad things are gonna happen to him. Uh, but yeah, very, very good work, very noticeable straight away for those, I would argue, who are invested. I wouldn't have any issue with someone not noticing this at all, because you just don't even know what their plans are with these characters yet. So you can just yeah, I had, be like, huh. Because I don't know anything about the game, so I'm just like, oh, things aren't looking good. Hmm. Um, oh, all right. But yes, um, oh, that was something I wanted to look at as well. Okay, I need to go, eh. I had a note and I missed it because I'm stupid. Yeah. Um, I agree. That's mean, Jay. What do I do to you? I'm just being supportive of you. I'm being supportive of you lacking support. No. Jeez, Jay. You gonna take that? Yeah. So I think this is a a detail that I'm not making up in my own, my own head. When um Savika like sort of grunts and looks a bit angrier. You see, just under a blanket yeah. where arm would be, it lights up purple. Mm -hmm. It's just like, hey! The noise. Yeah, because that's I think that's the place where it injects the, uh, or like it pumps in the shimmer, right? Yes, it's on the so, shoulder. Neat detail as well, because obviously they're, they're keeping that under wraps right now, that she's got a, a robo-arm. Mm -hmm. uh, well, anyway. I to put something there. Because you, you know, and a viewer might be wondering, hey, didn't she lose an arm? Yeah. What gives? Maybe you she know? found it. Yeah, she could have found it. Um, Pretty sure it was like atomized. And so, That's never. That is no, 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 no one's arm. Yeah, really come on, Theo. Yeah. Lit anything <laughs> from Star Wars. Uh, so <laughs> yeah, the progress that's been made is that those those little shitty hex rocks. Nobody likes them. They've been refined, or at least three of them have been, into hex crystals. They look great, and they're pretty much immune to like destabilization. Wait, no, aren't they hex gemstones now? Weren't they hex crystals before? I don't fucking know, Jay. I don't know, dude. <laughs> How many times have you watched the show, Mola? One time, maybe a half time, actually. Oh, I wasn't really Making paying it attention. Up as we go. Yeah. Most of this, I'm just going from visuals. I'm like, oh, there's, there's a bowl. Uh, it's shiny. Yeah, that's how good it is. The visuals are so good. You don't even have to watch the show. You can yeah. just analyze them as you go. And... Jay, have you not heard of visual storytelling? Are you an idiot? I mean, don't hear about visual storytelling. You see it. That's not true. <laughs> you're just, you're just, I'm just hearing, I'm hearing about it right now as you're talking about it. Yeah. You've so anyway. destroyed yourself. Uh... Yeah, they they show that um, even when it's hit hardcore with a fucking hammer, it doesn't blow oh up. 
poor Heimerdinger. He's like, no, wait. yeah, he's upset. He's like, oh my, wait, don't do it. Oh my god, even his little uh, Dinkle Donger is is like, oh my goodness gracious, yeah, that's bad. Is scared. A what are poro. those called? Poro. Poro. Is that mm. its name or the species that it the is? Species name. Is is a poro? Yeah. Oh, that's what I just call the homeless people whenever I drive by. That's <laughs> that's, that's that's rude. That's classist. No, they like it. Oh, okay. So, um, we got... What do you shower them with as, as you drive by? What do I shower them with? Yeah. I have a, um... Well, I don't really shower them with anything. I just make sure that if there's any puddles nearby, I drive my car on the puddles so that it sprays them, just like Gotham. So, I. so water is your answer? It's a uh, real long well, roundabout not, way of saying water, which is the no, least imaginative thing to shower someone with. No, it ain't just water. It's Mud. it's like water and all the stuff that just runs off from the streets, and there's probably like syringes in to there. To them, that's water. To them, that's water. That's, that's hobo water. I wonder if you can order that at Trungo's. Hobo water. Hobo with, your, water. with your grumbo. Hobo yeah. water. I'd like a mac and cheese in a wine glass and some hobo water. Oh, look, we're a fifth of the way through our time. Nice. Uh, so they're showing off the what the, the, the hex crystals can do, which is power portable devices, including, but not limited to, the Atlas gauntlets, which is funny because, like, <laughs> I think, did anyone I was watching it with, Rags, were you like, is that from the game? I can't remember if anybody was. I think I, I think I might have. I, I think I might have been like, uh, I'm, I'm guessing that, oh, that was me. from the game. Oh, well, I felt I, I certainly said that about the hammer that he uses later, but I think with the gauntlets, I also was like, "Is that from the game?" Um, and not in the bad way. I, I was just like legitimately just sort of you know fan service array. It's yeah, kind when... of strange. Like the, it's they're first starting out, and it already looks like a very very finished product. Well, they're trying to show it off to Heimerdinger, right? Uh... These are like. Prototypes um, for demonstration, that right? They yeah, but they already look yeah. super finished, like ready to go. They well, pretty much well, are. the other one, yeah. prototype, right? Like, before well, you can build more of these things, you need to build. Well, sure, one. but it, it, I mean, the first working would... one is the prototype that works as intended, right? But you yeah. would think that it would look just a little less refined, yeah. Generally, prototypes are not built to look good. Unless they were just that confident in how good it was. Well, because the, these chased. ones are also, um, they're hoping to demonstrate these in front of like hundreds, thousands of people today. Yeah, right? they are Which built for more than just for utility. Oh, show, yeah. 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 So, yeah, they, I guess they are built for show too. But I mean, you it's, may it's notice, cool. however, the, the distinction in visual appearance between the one that Jace shows off and the one that Victor shows off. What like, do you just mean? Look yeah. at them in terms of visual styling. The uh, gauntlet is all like gilded almost. It's very uh, flashy in design, it looks very intricate and, you know, ornate almost. And then you compare across to uh, Victor's hex claw thing, and it's very utilitarian in design. It's function over form, you might say. Oh my god, you didn't I wonder just say if there's that. anything informing his desire to, for function yeah, over know. form. Also, well, uh... It's a pretty cool uh, Chekhov's gauntlet because they're like, hey, we could use these and it'll be great for like mining and stuff. And of course, if you know, if you know anything about yeah, the game, like, ah. <laughs> when we were watching it, the second they showed it, we were like, Vi is getting those gauntlets. <laughs> like, no... but, I get, but, it's, but it's more than just the cool factor because it, it's kind of like you see that and, you know, they're like, oh yeah, we can use this for like work and stuff. And your mind immediately goes to, man, that'd be like a really good weapon. It's like, I wonder if we're going to do anything with that. Well, yeah, that's, and that's like the level of almost naivety for these characters. Like, his goal is to help them move things, and Victor's is uh, yeah. for creating engravings or even, like, sculpting and stuff, and it's like, it's yeah. a laser, mate. <laughs> you can make <laughs> someone exactly. half with that. No, this thing, they chop they off really uh, the horn. The aura. One. Oh, that made me so upset. Yeah, I, 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 just, I sympathize for the creature. I think it was an important thing to happen in the scene, actually. To oh, show definitely. Like a hundred percent, just good and ready well, yeah. to go. Uh, in terms of like Heimerdinger, is just there, like you could have just killed my cat. Yeah, uh, yeah. yeah plot hole. He's not upset enough about that. I I actually was kind of annoyed by that. That it wasn't a bigger deal. 
Um, yeah, you could have had him panic further over it, but I mean, his ultimate conclusion is a decade, and you can use these things. So I guess I guess it just probably would have been just a little better to see him like shoot at the dog, and then it'd be all like, "Did you not just see what happened? You clearly need to safety test these things a, a good while longer." But he shrugs off the dog and still goes with the speech anyway that you got a safety ready. It. Yeah, know? yeah. Um, I quite like this. This little bit where Jace is just talking about how awesome the gemstone is and Heimerdinger. They have this shot here with the claws moving on its own and. Uh, mm -hmm. Hyperdig is just looking at it, terrified, like, oh shit, what the <laughs> fuck? <laughs> yeah, um... So this demonstration was just to be like, look how much we've got to show, look how much progress we've made, it's so great, and Heimerdinger is basically like, you guys, you're nuts, alright, you need to slow down, this stuff is clearly not ready. Um... And, yeah, it's just a, it's just a, a good scene, because we're gonna get a couple of these kinds of scenes, but, um... It's not just about using magic, which I, I've seen a lot of people say that Heimerdinger's character is just, he doesn't like magic, he likes science. Like, not oh, really man. at all. <laughs> even if that, even if bad. those were his, like, even if those were, like, his very clear values, there's so much more to him that isn't just his values, right? If we that's just... If we'd use an example disingenuous. From, oh, sorry, go. Uh, if we use an example from the scene, the malfunction with the, uh, the hex claw thing, I don't know if I would even call that a magical malfunction in nature, like magic had nothing to do with it. It started tracking the gemstone that Jace was holding and shot because Jace was fucking around with it. Which is actually a good like, detail. <laughs> yeah. For how that could happen. Um, yeah, it, it, I'm a dinger. It's just need like, to have safeguards against this shit. It's clearly not ready. Um, and this is the thing, I'm a dinger is correct. It's not ready. Um, Gotta, you... If we can, if we can go from like that kind of issue, can you imagine what would happen if you had like a bunch of devices of this kind working in close proximity to one another? Like, say, a bunch of miners down in a mine, all with those atlas gauntlets. Who knows what the fuck could happen if they start like tracking each other's gemstones and stuff? I grew up surrounded by science, Heimerdinger. That's just gonna keep coming <laughs> up, and I'm not even yeah. annoyed at that. Uh, we, we're gonna we're gonna grind that line into the dirt. <laughs> um, I grew up surrounded it, by overused jokes. I think it originated in the dirt. You heard that line? Jeez. <laughs> you saying, Theo? It's such great writing. I was born in the dirt. Cobito's really wet. That was his point, point. and he's not wrong. Uh, but yeah, long. Heimerdinger basically shuts them down, and they're both very very sad about that. Uh, back to the. They said it's not a blimp, right? What what are these ships airship. even called? Just airships, airships, I think they're just called. No, very well. Airship. Um, I think they're called airships. I think the guy who was paid off is just like saying, "Yeah, I, I don't know." There was like there was like a couple of them. He's just like looking really shifty. It's like, yeah, it's pretty awkward to have been bribed, and then like everything goes to fucking hell. I don't even know how you how you deal with that poor guy. I'm sure his story is very interesting. But Caitlin walks in there. That little inquisitive douche being like, hmm, what's what's all this? What's happening here? Funnily enough, I think the... You know, like, well, I guess Theo's the only person that can really, really full-on respond to this. Or maybe Fringy, I don't know. But um, the what do you think of her, the choice to give her this hat, which is probably the closest they're going to allow us to get to a top hat? Um, um, I, think, I think it makes a lot more sense I for her to be wearing, like, it. a normal hat rather than a crazy top hat. I think she'll ever get mm -hmm. her top hat. Um... No, when she's actually, sheriff, maybe. maybe. This is such a think, style I think choice. Be cringe. She would when have to be a bit cringe. older. Doesn't quite feel like it would be in line with her, does it? Like, I don't no, think it would be in line with her, really. and I'm not sure how much it would fit in with the aesthetic that they. Well, maybe. <laughs> I I don't need it though. I don't. Need I don't need the, the top yeah. hat. It's just it's yeah, an interesting choice because the hat is a bit big, and that's probably why, is Great. that they were like, look, we can't give you the top hat, we can give you this. <laughs> like, alright, fine. Uh, Studio mandated design, no though. top hats. Well, I think it's woke that they didn't give her her top hat. That's what I think. <laughs> um, top hat agenda. <laughs> big, small hats are trying to take over all the top hat representation. Big, small hats. I mean, aesthetically, I think her hat looks really good. I like it. I like the, the, the fitting of the uniform awesome. for sure. Better yeah. than a top hat. 
I really enjoy this discussion as not like as, as being someone who's not at all familiar with the games because sometimes you just get like it's like oh I guess we're having a, com- a conversation that to me is entirely random like hey do you think they're going to give Kate the next top hat I'm like oh <laughs> <laughs> you know what I don't know. probably Maybe. half and half in the chat who know exactly what we're talking about compared to people who are like what the fuck are they talking about do you think? Do you think Jace is having a pet frog? Do you think that's ever going to happen? I hope so. I hope they give him his his video game. I pet hope they frog, give him yeah. his big coat. Yeah. I've I've seen you're obsessed with that big coat. You cannot die before he gets that big coat, right? That's he like... needs the big coat. God damn it. Uh. Yeah. Uh. She's just looking into the crime scene. She's spotting some things. She's looking at markings. She's looking at evidence. She's even trying to recreate what she would think would be what, like where the guns were aiming and where they were shooting to picture how things went down. Looking at blood splatters and stuff. It's um, it's pretty neat. We were we thought for a moment that she might her, her like plot line might be Detective Caitlin, you know, like throughout the whole thing. But it's, it's mainly yeah. just this scene, and then the rest of it's more so a combination with another character. Um, but yeah, uh, she spots that um, one of the the soldiers, the, the big thugs, after being shot by Jinx, he seems to have decided that he doesn't want anything to do with Silco anymore. He's given up. He's had enough, probably, of Jinx's antics, and so he just hid in the uh, in the lower parts of the ship. And I'm assuming he was just waiting to be found, because I don't know why else he would do that, really. Uh, well, he like also that. got shot, didn't he? He was wounded. His... Well, it, yeah, it seems to me that, like, he must be. What would his goals be other than just they're gonna find me eventually, and that's fine, whatever. Mm-hmm. But he was... wasn't sitting there like the entirely by choice. He was also wounded. Yeah, I suppose assuming he has full range of movement. The only alternative is he was waiting there, like on the pipe dream that the investigation doesn't find him, and then they leave, and he can slip away. Maybe, yeah, that's, that's an alternative. But he does seem to be, like, fucking pissed that this yeah. has happened in terms of just, like, God, my job sucks. Um, and he's not... Yeah. Well, I guess, yeah, when he talks to Caitlyn, he doesn't not give Silco up. Yeah, he's... Um... Loyalty, it's, nah, he'll kill me, dude. <laughs> Which is probably very true. Uh very true. And before he can give more away, Marcus shows up and he's like, eh, Caitlin fucking. He's, he's just, he calls her Kiriman, right? Um, yeah. And he doesn't take her that seriously. And I think that the idea is supposed to be that she's poking her nose and stuff and she's like annoying and, and she's a Kiriman. She's not really like an enforcer. She's more so just like this person who's playing at being an enforcer. She's not taken seriously, is kind of the point. Um, and. Typical penis, man. He's, Here we go again. He's kind Typical of penis. right. You can't call Asians that. He's kind penis of right man. in the scene, because the implication is that she keeps just fucking off to do whatever she wants. Yeah, she's not listening to orders. Time to do. Not doing enforced the things. Um, but of course, so like first time around, the interpretation can easily be that uh, it's just like a standard sort of boss worker dynamic where she's just blah blah blah, but... Um, if you if we remember, Marcus was in line with Silco in episode three. Um, I don't think it's much of a spoiler to talk about this, as though we know already that he's still uh, doing different mm-hmm. things with Silco. And so this scene plays a little bit differently in that he's just trying mm-hmm. to get her yeah. away from that thug. Yep. Um, because he can control everything except wild cards, obviously, and she's a bit of a wild card. Uh, that comes up a couple times. Anyway. Uh, we visit the last drop with Sav- time from... for a rave. Yeah, well, so th- this is the thing. I think um, first time through because I I hadn't even picked up that it was the same place straight away. You know what I mean? Like the the last drop is the yeah. I, there's there's plenty of things I just don't necessarily pick up. But yeah, I think the point of this scene is to just be like, look what it's become. Look what a uh, Zorn has become basically. Like it, when Silco is under management or I- is managing it, um, things seem a lot more chaotic. Uh, especially the last drop, where basically everybody's just doing drugs, and everyone everyone seems a lot less. Uh... It used to be a bar, now it's a club. But like the yeah, worst. Everyone seems time. a lot less lame. Yeah, it's everything's really cool. Less lame. It does look well, very yeah, cool. Kind of I want to live at the last here. drop. Kind of a cool mirroring they do, because the lyrics of the two songs deal with like playground, and this one deal with kind of similar subject matters. But of course, the 
the actual songs themselves are completely different. Like this one is fucking rave music. It's like crazy and playground was a lot more subdued. And then the camera work and stuff as we cut around uh, the undercity is so much more chaotic and riled up, I guess. Yeah. This yeah, this place is um in a frenzy now. Things have changed. Savika just takes someone's drink from them. Vanda wouldn't have let that happen in his day. No. Yeah. So cruel. Uh, well, that's how you get the corona. Yeah. You, you steal someone else's corona. You steal someone's corona. Like, and hey, so that's my corona. We enter Silco's office, where she's complaining, Savika, now about the job and how it was mostly fucked up by uh, Jinx. And she says, she's a problem, and we all know it. And he just goes, who's we? And there's just this silence of just like, because uh, if you admit your entire team has a problem with her, it's just going to be like, um, or rather even that it's just mainly Savika. It's just like, there, there's no good answer to that question if your boss is asking yeah. you that, really. You got, you got names of people I could shoot in the head for that? <laughs> um, and, and then also, actually, like, in... That in, that everything, in, everything, in chat and shit about her, <laughs> like just everything Silco says that. makes him more powerful in the scene. <laughs> in every scene, Silco's fantastic. Yeah, uh, after that gap of who's we that she doesn't answer, he just says, "Don't disappoint me again." It's just like because it was her <laughs> job. Like he just, it, oh, he's great. Um, and yeah, and so obviously she's just like where and leaves, and um. Then, That's the great uh, thing about Silco. He doesn't have to say much to say a lot. Yeah. And he starts, like, talking about the state of Zorn and how uh, there's just lots of different things. I remember thinking to myself when first watching this, I was just like, is he just is he just openly stating the state of the world? It's a little bit lame. Yeah, like, you know, I, so, I have um, the same thought. But then, and, it's, uh, and it, it works for a lot of different meaning, too. Uh, he's talking to Jinx. She's right above, just sitting in a, a little... I don't know, Heidi Hall. And if you remember the conversation he just had with Savika, I don't think Savika knew Jinx was there. Because uh, nope. it's a bit awkward to say in front of Jinx, like, we all have an issue with her. She's, uh, she's, mm -hmm. she's ruining, like, different jobs that we're doing. It's just like, that feels like a conversation that um, Savika didn't even know she was there, but that, it just tells you without saying anything, Silco probably values Jinx right now above even his right-hand man. Um, to the point where he doesn't care if she hears all of that, because I think he thinks of her as, like, a teammate, like, directly. Um, which is a pretty interesting thing to have happen. It's a lot that's said through not saying anything at all. And then he asks her what happened, and she, like, just fucking plants down on his table. And a lot of people like to point out, this is no reason not to, that, uh, he's got little bits and bobs on his table that are clearly, like, fucked with by her, in terms of, like, her... Yeah. Crayon drawings and stuff, and it's not like All he's drawn on. Yeah. Like he's gotten rid of them, he's kept them. Um, these are little touches that I would argue are pretty important for just describing how things have changed without looking into the dialogue necessarily just uh, yet. Plus, who would throw away that monkey mug, huh? That's I would. A cool monkey mug. That's shit. Wow. Rags, do you ever think you're just too cruel sometimes to monkeys? Nope. Well, I, I, I did once, and it, I only, it only confirmed that I was correct. Very well. Get that um, monkey mug away from me. Mm -hmm. In the ashtray, you shouldn't smoke. It's bad for you. A monkey mug explodes. Uh, and yeah, um, I suppose we'll just get this out of the way. There are some people, I was asked this while I was streaming last night, it's like, there are some people who interpret their relationship as romantic. Um, please go away. I was away. gonna bring that up. It I, is it's not romantic. Not, it's not clear to me whether it is or it isn't. I mean, it seems, it seems I'm leaning no. I would say that it is clearly not. I don't know why That's you think it's think. not clear. Yeah. Uh, I, think, I mean, they, well, they I mean, touch each other, like, physically, but not in a, any kind of, like, I would say not in no kind of overtly sexual or romantic way, way, just in a like a not in a gay way. Just in a like they're, they're both very close kind of a way. Okay, I I could make I think a pretty compelling argument, but I can't do it without mentioning a lot of stuff we can't mention right now. But 
Like I, I think that it, there is an interpretation where you could say that it, it's possible given how they portray other things in the show. Well, it's like, I think that people interpret it as romantic, right? Cause it's like two, um, adults like hugging and touching very closely, but you, you know, what kind you know, what, what kind of like adults do that, um, very often without, um, being romantically involved in each other is adults where one of them raised the other from childhood, like. The, those those kinds of people they tend to like hug and cuddle a lot at least a lot of them do so you know feels like that's the kind of thing we're going for here not these guys are fucking absolutely uh, i mean well it it could be but the show takes a sort of hands-off approach with being explicit about people being romantic right like without spoiling things there's a very clear example of well, a relationship i think is supposed to be romantic it is not yeah, at all I, clear I think that's supposed to. I think there are other relationships in this that are supposed to be romantic, but I think that the signs that we're given about these two don't point me in a direction of interpreting their dynamic as a romantic one. I I, I would lean non-romantic, but like there's one thing in particular that happens. I think in episode seven. Uh, yeah. So we can't really bring it up. Okay. I I, I would lean in the direction of you guys, but I, I don't think it's as clear as you guys think it is. I guess I'm, I'm now. I, I mean, it's probably spoiler free enough, right? What moment are you referring to with as little the context as possible? River scene I, mentioned. I don't know. Why. Uh, it, it, in the beginning of an episode, um, J, uh, Jinx goes into some water and something happens before that. I, well, I never got the impression, but maybe, uh, maybe I need to see that scene again. I don't know. Wait, you mean when he rails a roar? No, that's not. <laughs> Um, <laughs> that was pretty good. Fuck's you can't do that in water. <laughs> it's just not slick enough. It's, uh... oh. can, can I just say? Can, can we just like? Because the, the conversation is going to be awkward if we don't say what happens. What? He, oh. he kisses her on the lips. No, he doesn't. Does he? I don't think yeah, so. He does. I am no, almost no, certain. No, he, he does. doesn't. All right, timestamp. Right, I'll go find it. I'll go get a timestamp. He leans in, doesn't. I was going to say, I have no memory of that. Yeah, I, I have no yeah, memory. I think I would have remembered that. I, I feel like, like that's something that I would have clocked and been like, oh. Yeah, that would have like put the debate like right Someone in the you know? mentioning the joke from Smiling Friends. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, which joke? Because you you're dead in the mouth. <laughs> 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 All right, chat. We need a detour because we got to find the answer to this question. We we can go on. I'm I'm looking right now, and I'll let you know. No, it's, you put it in my head. It's too late. I don't even know what episode it is. It's an episode. I'm trying to find episode eight. You're uh, talking about the river scene where he lowers her into the river. Yeah, that's in episode five. They okay. do not kiss. I just watched it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they don't kiss. Are you saying Duma Media lied? No. Disgust. Fucking media is unironically evil. I'd say so. He wants. I have. I have never heard that before. He's a fetish. I, I, I imagine that you haven't. <laughs> I am now looking at it. It's That's why there. it's quiet because I'm. I gotta, gotta make sure because it's, it's creepy. If if it weren't true, if it were, if what you said happened. No, if you're referring to episode five, they don't kiss. Yeah, where'd you get that they kiss from? I just watched it. It's I, not even close. Okay, it, then it's then it's probably not this scene. Look, I, I'll okay. I will find there the timestamp. No I have I have eighty five eighty five ninety percent confidence this happens. So. There there is is no shipping them. I am hundred percent confident. So have you watched like a, a fan? Yeah, have you been watching thing? fan things? Can't Browsing rule thirty four too much. Because like. I guess I could see a universe where you thought for a moment they kissed. They come about two inches, three maybe away, but that's just not a kiss. That's a lean in. Oh, so you're now you're the kiss police, are you? I definitely <laughs> am. Uh, we destroy art and love. Yeah, Rags is my kiss sergeant. He'll he'll definitely <laughs> ensure that kiss I get. Sergeant. <laughs> okay, maybe this is all that I was remembering. That, it looks 
pretty romantic to me, but okay. He's leaning into I'll, I'll lay it down. Look. The fuck are you talking about? <laughs> <laughs> okay. You know how fucking creepy baptisms look at, uh, already? It's creepy like baptisms. I mean, creepy this is baptisms. practically what this is, right? Okay, so it, it, here's here's a question. Let, let's let's say that let's say that he did kiss her there. Would that change your opinion? Yes. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah, dramatically. <laughs> All right, because that's that's I'm why I was saying I was in question. If, if would, that didn't happen, then I then I'll just take your position. I would do um I would do this face if he did that. There you go. People weird. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it would dramatically it would dramatically <laughs> impact my my perception of his character, right? Yeah. Uh, uh, yeah, yeah. That face. yeah. I would I would be it would be very hard to read him as anything other than an abuser. I think at that point, considering mm -hmm. he has raised her and she's what like eighteen. She's 16 at this I think. point. I think she's less than she's, that. She's like because what age was she when she was, was a little girl? I think she was nine, so it's nine plus seven, something like that. Yeah, so she's like almost like fifteen or something. Oh, so yeah, 15. he dramatically changed my, yeah, my exactly. character. <laughs> uh, yeah, uh, the summary of the conversation is that she is trying to explain that she's like she's losing it a little bit. But that it's okay, and he's like, we can't afford for things to get fucked because um, they're trying to make a difference for the people of Zorn. He says uh, we deserve more than their runoff, which uh, just reestablishing exactly what he's about. Um, and this is where they're at, I suppose. Where's my copyright? So stuck with the runoff now, while hex gates can just go wherever the fuck. All right, yeah. So yeah, fortunately, yeah. I have a, I I have a cut of just. Uh, Jinx and Silco scenes. I just flipped through it. It didn't happen. I, I flipped through the whole show. All right. Well, ninety percent uh, sure. That's what ninety percent right. sure is. Let's just well, let's just run a poll. Should Duma be banned from EFAB? <laughs> <laughs> Look, this, if you if you played poker, you know about that ten to fifteen percent. Okay. Also, look, look, I, it, I, look I, it looks it looks it looks weird to me. Okay. Dude, look at this screenshot. Right. I know, the, like the <laughs> <laughs> holy manoleum. <laughs> Oh great! Right. Okay, chat. <laughs> what screenshot? <laughs> oh, uh, you, I had it on screen. This is <laughs> XCOM ninety-five percent to hit. <laughs> oh god, it's an XCOM one. Yeah, yeah. Uh, XCOM confidence. Ninety percent not romantic. Oh no! Oh no! <laughs> All right. Well, it's been fun, guys. I'll. Uh, <laughs> it looks like I'm uh, heading out. It's okay. You've got plenty of opportunities <laughs> to be wrong in future, too. Yeah, don't deny yourself those opportunities. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, the uh, that uh, Silco says, take a break. And then she's like, I don't need a break. And he's like, take one anyway. Because obviously she's uh, a little bit unstable. She's pretty shaken Everything. from the fact that somebody was just wearing purple hair. Everything he says makes him more powerful in the scene. It's like <laughs> he never he never gives an inch. Yeah. Doesn't to anybody. It's like, like I said, he says so little, but it says so much every time. And then we go to a, a bourgeois party at the top of Piltover with all the councillors and everyone drinking wine and talking. Disgusting, that's what I think, uh, of these high class yobos. Um Doing their Gallos. high class things, but uh, high class trungos. Yes, Mel is uh, is chatting with this lady. Uh, it's the lady we saw when she was first introduced, and she's like, "Your mother would be proud." And her Mel's response is, "Would she?" It is such a like, oh man, <laughs> like yeah, I mean, aren't you like literally the the richest person in Piltover who's currently managed to like push it further than ever by almost like supporting this one guy who you found at the right time in the right place sort of thing to blow it. She's like, yeah, but still. It's like, oh. It, it feels like an innocuous line, almost. It's something that could be missed without the further context of uh, who Mel's mum is and mm -hmm. exactly but, uh, why she wouldn't be proud. And it ain't not innocuous. Very mm. important. That's the thing. Yeah. You don't waste time. All this dialogue has a point. Um, yep. Yeah, and Mel says there's only one person worth worth my time. Uh, oh, and there's like a there's an airship going past with Man of Progress on it. It's just like that is, I think, as uh, overt as they needed to be to basically argue, Mel is treating Jace as a bit of a project, a source of uh, mm. things. 
And she says, Hex Tech has the potential to change everything. I've already spoken to investors. It's like, there you go. Which I think is a better acknowledgement than, yes, I've spoken to Noxus, they're planning on going to war with us over this. It's like, no. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Can, can I clarify Wait. something really quick, chat? I didn't want them to be in a sexual relationship. Okay, <laughs> I just thought that's what happened. This isn't that's fan a a fiction, leap. chat. He didn't want it. Okay. Why did someone in chat just type "woman" moment? <laughs> <laughs> that's a good point. What? Yet another woman moment. Classic. The, there were a sufficient the amount of them in the show. Some Ooh. of them even don't oh, yeah. white skin. Mm -hmm. Um, she likes him. I hate that. that. All right, hey, we're halfway through this episode. Doing great. Oh, nice. Hey. So uh, yeah, we have... now, we, now we need to stop, and uh, we'll continue part two next week. Hey, there's a meaningful moment where Mel is looking at like a little, little smaller version of the city, and it's it's like it's like representative of her position over it, as like she's kind of like the most influential person in Piltover in reality because she kind of has influence over Jace who is currently probably the most influential in terms of changing things. It's, it's, it's meaningful, okay? God. Um, but yeah, uh, she encourages Jace to absolutely go head first with uh, making new things and revealing them to the city and stuff because she seems to have pressures that relate to that. Who knows? But now that means we've got Heimerdinger and Mel are a representative of two different sort of teams here as, and influences. Um, so, we then have uh, a pretty important Jinx scene and we see yep. her lair, which is uh, pretty chaotic. And Very you can, leery. You can spot the um, there's some monkey drawings and as they scan around, we see this shot, which, holy shit, I was impressed when I saw this for the first time. I was like, oh, fuck, we're doing this. Okay. <laughs> like, yeah. damn. Um, and so this is kind of what I was referring to when I said I think they gave Milo a particular look. It's so he could look really fucking creepy when he's all dark and down. <laughs> um, yeah. I haven't even seen it, but it reminds me of the uh, imagery I've seen in Death Note with the, the creature that hangs around. The yeah. yeah, it's the Shinigami, a bit like 100%. Um, and so this is, like, this, this, I just, I love this shit, because, like, they didn't have to tell me anything, I'm just like, oh man, this is weighing on a huge, he literally is, like, fucking stalking her. Thank um, fucking Christ they didn't make him say anything. Oh, yeah. I know. He's just yeah. there. He lied to me. That's Imagine he if they gave him a really good <laughs> <No. cruel laughs> voice. <laughs> oh, God. Um, but yeah, uh, she's basically spending the scene panicking, uh, Talking to herself about, uh, she's responding to questions that we don't even hear uh, about how she's fucked up and what Silco thinks. And now, if you remember, in episodes one, two, and three, she has serious yeah. insecurities that relate to her abilities um, yeah. and people thinking that she's weak or useless or not efficient for the job. So now she's very paranoid that uh, Silco thinks that she's kind of useless, especially since he's put her on the bench. Yep. Um, and we get a flash of this. She's literally got dolls of both Milo and Klaga. Um, yeah. Nice fucking creepy versions of them. Just that's to remind herself that she's doing fine and that she's mentally stable. Yes. I think this... I don't know how much it's worth going into this, but I think the presence of this lair being how it is can tell you a bit of something about how Silco is as a parent as well. Yeah, she's absolutely, her brain is just chaotic, it's, uh, and he seems to have almost encouraged it. Like, it doesn't... Either encouraged it or just enabled it, one of the two. Yeah. Just let her have a space where she can just stew like this. Um, yeah. And so, she is gets... it, uh... go ahead. I was gonna say, is, is it worth talking about her, like, mental health issues a little bit? Because now we're starting to really get into it, where we're, we're seeing, like, the manifestations of it um we i don't know doing since we're going to be getting a lot of scenes of this i don't know if you want to 
save it until you have more things to be able to reference. We we're only just starting, obviously, with with uh, the yeah. way I feel like it's things. too early to be doing that right now. Okay, yeah. Fair enough. Right. Once we have a few more things with Milo, we can see what Milo represents. Every time <laughs> like the little. The, the, the Dude, the, so good. The, the individual frames, frames are fantastic for just. Yeah. What do you think she's thinking about with some of these? Um, <laughs> and yeah, like all of them are like her drawings that we saw when she was a kid. Um, so anyway, yeah, she's like, I'm not fucking weak. And then she thinks, hey, we got progress day coming up. Um, in fact, that's literally mm. today, right? That's a pretty big opportunity to be able to do something. Um, especially with... It. So I... Uh, it's another criticism I spotted in the Discord. And like I said, I just try to shut up sometimes. I'm just like, you know what? It's fine. Think whatever you want. Stronger man um, than me. But someone said... Right. Man, is it fucking convenient there was something for her to steal. What? <laughs> There's always That's something like... for you to steal. Oh, wait, okay. what? So first of all, uh, yes, Rag is correct. Did there they... is always something to fucking steal in the Piltover science department. Like, come on. <laughs> like, did you did you forget to make the actual arg like the first argument and go straight to the straw man? Like <laughs> No, that's that's what I they were they they were literally like uh what timing that she was able to break in and steal like something that's so valuable and it's like it's not only is it the the main science area but it's progress day a day in, apparently in which they typically reveal innovations to the to the people well, how convenient that it's progress day today how, how convenient, convenient there's, there's a ton happened. of shit to steal already <laughs> But um, just yeah. feels like just being mad that the show happened. <laughs> <laughs> that kind of feels that way because boy, oh, when we were discussing episode three, it's all like, how dare Vi be alive? I'm pissed. <laughs> <laughs> um, Rich. yeah. Then we cut to Victor, who is coughing up a storm. Just, uh, poor yep, he's revealed man. to have plot cough. Poor Happy Victor. progress day! Oh, he just so happens to cough on yeah, progress day. <laughs> <He just laughs> oh yeah, his, <laughs> his ailment is progressing too. How he's got he's COVID. nervous as hell. Look at the nervous ticks on his fingers. He's like looking around. Oh, so so he's got some weird magic disease that makes his leg stop working and gives him a cough. Okay, wow. I buy it. <laughs> I buy it. <laughs> Kind of Man, convenient that Chase riding. had a mug in this scene so that he could do the thing with so the mug that that's like a symbolism. Up, yeah. yeah. Oh, it's a wow. great shot, and I'm definitely going to highlight it. But yeah, Jace even offers for him to go up with him, but Victor makes it clear, like, this is just not his element. This is not something he wants to do. He doesn't... This is not the part of the science he enjoys at all, while Jace is downright excellent at it. Mm. Yeah. Um, a great little comparison. And some girl walks past and gives Jay uh, uh, Victor a smile. Who the fuck's this lady? I don't know. Maybe we'll see She's more of her. She's pretty though. Kind of convenient that she exists. <laughs> yeah. Wow. Is, is she, a, is she like a major character in the lore? How she just happens nah. to be cute looking. Wow. And her her parents just happen to have met, and they happen to have had a a a, a girl child, and she happened to have been there. Girl child. Yeah. Oh, it just it just had girl to be a child. girl. Ooh, convenient. <laughs> What is this SJW garbage? Um, yeah, here it is. Ugh, Fucking legendary shot, okay? And I will hear nothing else. Ba boom. Uh, see it? Man, Man of progress. Of progress. Bit on the nose. Oh, I love it. I uh, can't he see it. Jace being fucking. He's like, he's like, he's definitely oh, a nice it guy. It was just like. It sucks to watch the other significant element just be so sidelined. Uh, yeah, there's just not there's not a huge amount Jace can do about it because that's like Victor's preference, but it's gonna play into a lot of other things that end up happening. Um, yeah, you, you don't get the impression that Jace is some dick villain who's pushing his partner away and no. taking over everything. This is just yeah, how their no, personalities it's, play out. Oh, but I'd say it's just several elements like lining up it is that victor doesn't really want to do it and jace is more equipped to do it but also it's just generally like getting a face to attach to all of this it just happens like in not to the mention world. he kind of looks like shit and he kind of realizes it and i don't think he just well wants yeah to be jace is, that way jace yeah. is like a very good poster boy for uh oh, yeah. for like the progress much more so than victor even though both of them are like equally responsible for the creation of the technology it's all like it's rags right. It's not like Jace is some arrogant prick or anything. Also, not, not, not everyone like wants attention. Progression. 
No, yeah. not everybody does. Yeah. Well, that's what I'm saying. Like, I think, as with a lot of really awesome conflict, it can come from a very normal, neutral, and downright, like, totally chill place. But as events go forward, it can influence other things happening that have much more dire consequences. Uh, and I just, I, I just want that pla flag planted. Because. What? Yes. Oh, sorry. Uh, I was just, I was just gonna say the interesting, you know, conflict in this scene is, hmm, is Jace gonna? What's he gonna say in his speech? What is is he gonna reveal the stuff he's been working on? That's he gonna like, heed Heimerdinger's warnings to not reveal yeah. anything. And the decision that he makes is to heed Heimerdinger's word. Uh, yeah. Warning. You even have a, Victor is like very excited to re reveal like, it as well. Yes, reveal. He makes that decision against the wishes of Jace, uh, not Jace, but Victor <laughs> and Mel, because Mel also wants him yeah. to reveal new technologies too, but he listens to Heimerdinger. I wonder if he'll keep listening to Heimerdinger. How conflicted he is over it is something I think that's Yeah, he, he really does right, go yeah. back and forth a good deal. He He's not yeah. entirely sure how to approach all this crazy progress. Mm. And, yeah, and he's, he's looking it from at... The He's just, I was just quick to say, he's got his set notes, and then he's got notes he's recently written. Um, I'm not sure if we find yes. out which was which, but the idea being, of course, that there are two paths he can take. Mm -hmm. So if you take Jace and Victor, right, Victor's the one who doesn't want the spotlight, and he doesn't want the attention, but he wants to go ahead with the projects that the crowd would like. And Jace is the person who's getting the spotlight and all the attention, and ultimately he's the person who decides against giving the crowd that he's talking to what it is that they would want most. That's a lot of pressure for one young guy who's just <laughs> figuring totally. everything out. That That is an important thing to highlight, though. It's what the crowd wants, and he doesn't give it to them because he heeds the words of the scientist, like yeah, the big proper scientist How man interesting is it says, that we're yeah. at a point as well we've got... so. Heimerdinger is desperately trying to prevent the unfed and unrestricted uh, progress that can lead to the, the worries he has about, like, all-out war or destruction. Mel is all about putting Piltover on the map. She wants it to progress faster so that it can be seen as a greater power and influence. Uh, Jace, yeah. well, Victor, his whole goal has been about helping people, and he thinks that this will not only inspire, but it'll be a great thing to announce because it's on its way to... Um, helping people's lives out and stuff. And then Jace is basically sharing that alongside... I think he definitely enjoys being a showman to some extent. Um, that makes sense. Yeah, it's, his, and, it's and, his big life's work. It finally took off. He, of course he's excited. And then you've got like the audience as a character as well, just like influencing all this. It's just like, man, we've got so many dynamics set up. Nice. Good stuff. It, yeah. And it was this... also worth noting, too... Sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt. I, um, it was also worth noting, too, well, you that did. Um, Victor... Oh. Um, he doesn't. He he didn't look good from the beginning. So when Heimerdinger's like, "Yeah, you've got about ten years to safety. Check this stuff, and it'll be all good." And I'm just looking right at Victor, and I'm like, <laughs> "He doesn't have ten years, does he? Not one bit. Like he has progressed very poorly in this well, case." Man. So now Victor has got to have like he he's going to want to see the progress before he goes. Yeah, and his specific yeah. motivation is to save lives and make lives better. Mm. Mm -hmm. yeah. And he wants to be there to witness it. Absolutely, yeah. Mm-hmm. But Heimerding is thinking in terms of like centuries, not yeah. years, like just it's, a couple of years. It's that very important line of Victor's. Do you think that? Do you think my life's ambition was to be an assistant? Which mm -hmm. like, like uh, that's not necessarily glory handing, but he does like he really wants to accomplish something with his time, even if it's limited. So yeah, when, yeah. like there's a, a really good scene pressure. regarding that that we'll get exactly. eventually. He, he doesn't want to be in Heimerdinger's adorable little shadow. Well, it's. I think it's. I think uh, at the core of it, it's the idea of I want to be the person. I don't want to just push, so that someone else create like makes the big leap, right? I want to be the person who does that. You know, kind of like the. Uh, it's almost like that thing of like, you know, you don't, you aren't the Ubermensch. You you cr have, have the steps. You're like one of the steps in creating them. That he wants to be there. Yeah, it's kind it's of weird. Cool. Really the Ubermensch when metal is in here. <laughs> I, I find that kind of interesting though because it's a sort of subconscious ego thing there because you know the the dynamic we have here is jace is the one who has a bit more of an ego about him and victor doesn't really give a shit about that sort of thing but 
Like mm-hmm. it's made clear through that line and through some subsequent scenes and the fact that, yeah, he does want to be a part of it and he wants to make things happen. There is something of an ego about this. He does want to be involved in the process of making like of making things happen, even if he doesn't particularly well, that... care for the crowd pleasing that comes with it. That's just uh, that's just good writing when you've got like the more overt uh, goal in mind that's more altruistic, but then there's like the thing that's belying it, which is a little more oriented around you and I guess self fulfillment. Mm. Okay. Quite, um, okay. Um, I'll be quick. I, I quite like the choice because I think it's deliberate. Because I pretty much think everything's deliberate in this show. Um, Victor reacts with shock. Mel is like almost confused. What I really like is that you don't. Jace doesn't get to have Heimerdinger be like, "Yay!" Heimerdinger is like goes from angry to sort of settled because I Good think boy. that he as a character is like he almost thinks it's unfathomable to make the wrong decision. You making the right decision from his POV doesn't. It's not like a reward for you. It's more so just good. That's the mm. thing you should have done. You know, like it's, it's it's very strict, and I just I just enjoy that. That's how they portray. Um, him understanding that choice from Jace. Yeah, I, I was just going to say that uh, the first time I watched this episode, I was massively confused about why he didn't reveal the Hextech gemstones. And I just went back to check to make sure uh, that this is right. But Heimerdinger kind of contradicts himself in a way, or at the very least, it's easy to misunderstand. So at the, in the first scene with Heimerdinger, he's like basically tells Jace to reveal something. And mm-hmm. then in the next scene, tells him not to. Um, That's a very I, simple I do think read, like, isn't it? Uh... <laughs> Uh, I, the, I don't so, know. So, Heimer, do you think that if Jace was going to reveal a button that if you press it, everyone on the world dies, that Heimerdinger would be like, that's a great thing to reveal? <laughs> I mean... <laughs> so let's just end the charade and get it over with already. Well, okay, is there is there anything else like to reveal? I don't know. It, it just... So the whole, the whole point okay, is that... If it is the case that Heimerdinger said, don't do this, right? And there's an unambiguous message then why would it still be there on the forge? Why would he still be contemplating revealing it because going, J- when he's Jace up on stage? Decision. It's Jace's it's choice, Jace's speech. ultimately. Yeah. yeah. Heimerdinger is telling him not to, though, but like whether or not Jace does is up to him. That's, the, that's like, of course it is. Well, okay, but isn't it seen as a massive like letdown that nothing is revealed on... I mean, that well, seems so to be established. I was actually well, going to so comment on that. What I like about Jace's showmanship is that it is a letdown for a moment, but then he does... He realizes that, and so he does a little rousing speech, and then the fireworks <laughs> launch, right. and the the crowd are pretty happy. But that's why it's a meaningful it choice. Picks up his momentum back. Yeah. But that is why it's a meaningful choice, because it's like, the, the thing that will make people like you more is to reveal some crazy shit, and he decides not to... Like, he loses in a certain sense for that, but then he recovers, yeah. But sure, I, still a good I, showman what, in the what, end. I guess I'm confused. Like, what is inconsistent there about Heimerdinger? Well, I mean, the, the inconsistency is the information that's delivered to the audience. Like, Heimerdinger says to reveal something, and the only thing that we are told about that even exists is the Hextech gemstones, and Heimerdinger says not to reveal it, right? Did, wait, 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 then, wait, wait, did okay, he... Did he that's, okay, no. I, I was just going to, like, sort of go through the chain of logic. So, like, if Heimerdinger says not to then the reasonable thing would be like, okay, well then reveal something else. And if we're taking Heimerdinger's word as gospel, like, okay, we're going to let Heimerdinger do the thing, then he, he wouldn't prep the entire display, right? And if he values, if again, Jace, the only thing Jace values in the show is not just Heimerdinger. There's lots of other people as well. Um, and this, from what I can tell, this lets down every single person except for Heimerdinger. Every single other person in the show seems well, to want this to be revealed. It's clearly beyond so, like, that, right? Like, it's not about Heimerdinger. It's that Jace believes he's right in this moment. Sure, but then, I mean, it, you would think something else might get revealed? I don't know. It, it, it seems a bit odd. That so, was going to be the reveal, was the, the, yeah, uh, the new, like, technology equipment that they had developed, and Heimerdinger said, like, well, no, not that. Uh, or, like, the gemstone. It's like, well, not yet. It's not. They're not ready yet. Yeah, the, you got to slow it down a bit. The gemstones applications are all unrefined, so wait until they are to announce them. That's Heimerdinger's point, as far yeah, as the, I can tell. The, well, and it's, it's, I mean, I guess we might be jumping a little bit ahead, but, like, an important thing for Heimerdinger in general is that he's a lot more restrained because he's thinking long term and he has experience everybody yeah, knows but, as much okay, but much. if that's the case then why would he say people love a grand reveal go get something to hype well, everybody up i mean that's because that's just true why why 
I don't understand. I, it's, like, it's like you're saying they have something to reveal, so reveal it. It's like, yeah, but that doesn't qualify with Heimerdinger's Yeah, not that. Like, like, this, yeah. Isn't, <laughs> this isn't ready to be revealed. Yeah, like, Heim Heimerdinger wants them to reveal something, sure, but if it means revealing not something that. that could be damaging or misleading, then no, don't reveal something. Like, I mean, as far as I know... Way, isn't there a way to reveal this technology that isn't like, we're going to deploy this tomorrow? Well, so like we have Jace, a breakthrough, Jace does but... all that he needed to do. Like, if he could have been like, "Look, the gemstone," and then the crowd would like would be waiting. Like, what does it do? And it's like, "Well, you we we will see." Instead, he just does a speech about the progress that's to come right, and the where, innovations yeah, are like, on the way. Could have been a way for Jace yeah. to. I mean, maybe I think there could have been a way for Jace to say, "We have essentially discovered a brand new power source of a kind." <laughs> That is going to what he he it's a, a version of what he said, but was more specific because he doesn't mention specifically the the stones. He just talks about working on these great things. It'll blow your friggin' minds. It's going to be amazing. It's not ready yet, but it's he coming. doesn't actually deliver he any functional. Your dick off. He doesn't deliver any functional yeah. information. That's why people are so let down. It's just like They're yeah, we're working down. and stuff happening. Watch the scene. They're not let down. They're very happy, and I think it represents the almost like that's how showmanship works. They're all clapping. They're all really happy, and all he's told them is stuff is on the way. It's yeah. like uh, it's I like when it's, it's like having watched Book of Boba Fett. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's important to remember this isn't a science conference. As such. Yeah, this is like hard. showing off the new cool shit. This is not scientists presenting things to it's help the scientists. Yeah, so, like, as far as I know, it is, yeah. it is kind of blizzcon. That's part of the point. Is like. <laughs> I mean, you, you'll go to a game conference and like they'll be like, "Oh, Elder Scrolls Six coming twenty twenty seven or whatever." Like, it doesn't have to be tomorrow. Well, so I think it's worth if you if you come out and like we are working on this specific thing and it does these things, but we're not going to show it to you yet. The seed has been planted, like a very specific seed has been planted, and you might not be ready to do that yet. Like if you if I mean, you look like these some people crazy have a lot of trust in Jace, like they, they believe do have a lot of stuff. Yeah. Yeah, and him telling yeah, so those like, stuff is on the way, I'm sure that's good enough. Well, I think yeah. it's it's much safer from Jace's perspective to say stuff is on the way rather than this is specifically what we're making, but I'm not showing you yet. I feel like and you do that. You, I feel like we all have worse, personal actually. experience with that, right? Well, yeah, yeah, if you say it's coming, but I'm not going to show you yet, like, that's the kind of thing that gets people like, well, now I really want to see well, it. This, like, is, what? this <laughs> is what I mean. I really feel like it makes a lot of sense, especially considering he was almost going to show and explain all of it. That He, he decided as a snap decision, I'm not going to mention even the gemstone because it just leads down to explaining more and more and it's just not, we're yeah, not ready. Exactly. Um, but yeah, obviously and, he and, acknowledges and, the fact that this costs him as well. He sees Mel and her assistant yeah. leave. But yeah, not so to mention, uh, I don't Go think... Um, I don't think Heimerdinger said that he had to reveal something. He just thought it would be interesting if he had something well, like in works to spice it up later. Funnily enough, I'm pretty sure it was a writing tool. We need to get Heimerdinger to be introduced to the, the technology. And so he was like, it's good to reveal stuff. It's like, actually, we have stuff to reveal. Let me show you yeah. today. And we get that scene. Yeah, it's good. Yeah, it's good to reveal, but you don't have to reveal is, is and I, I think, what you're talking I, about. I think Heimerdinger's willingness to let Jace do the speech instead of himself is his willingness to part with tradition here and there. So it's mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, it mm -hmm. seems to and a level of trust in Jace. Wait, okay, so like... what what is what is the cost of revealing it? Let, let's say that he went through with it. He opens the curtains. He says the gemstone. Revealing hits it with everything. What is the or cost? Just the gemstone. The gemstone. So just revealing the gemstone. Uh, depends on how you reveal it and what you say, yeah. which may like be say, on the moment. Cool, but I'm not and I, tell yeah, you what it and it totally <laughs> invites invites inspection. It's just like, so what does it do? What is it, does it power something? What have you worked yeah. on anything? And it's just like, uh, instead, you can just talk about innovations are on the way. Who can question that? I mean, doesn't the mm -hmm. same doesn't the same criticism apply there? I mean, like it invites questions. Oh, well, we're working on stuff. Well, what are you working on? But it's a it's literally there. It's, it's a piece of technology, not. and the fact that you're promoting it is yeah. like, so what does it do then? Yeah, it's like an I mean, actual say, thing. Like, it's an invention. You, it's not just a vague yeah. appeal to progress, which is what this day is about, say, apparently. Like, but, yeah. Maybe if Wait, he had we, like a week's want... worth of time to prepare a speech on, we want to tease or reveal this new power source, but yeah. we don't have any working applications, he probably could have done that. But I think because it was so quick, he was almost going to reveal everything. Really prepare. Yeah. Well, well, yeah. Okay, what, what it feels like to me is here's like basically the choice, right? So Heimerdinger is basically saying we can't deploy 
this technology in the field right now because it's not ready. We need more time to develop it. That doesn't even imply that it shouldn't be revealed. It just means that it shouldn't be deployed necessarily. And then it's like, well, what Rocker reasons do you have? like the best launch day for something like this. I would also argue, I think Heimerding is thinking steps ahead. It's like, if you reveal something yeah. like this, the fucking what public is, are going to demand that it be released. There's just more that pressure in general. creates a timeline. Yeah. And what does the rest of the world Look want Cyberpunk. once they reveal it as a possibility? Like, like oh, always, we can um, do this? Like, oh, shit. I've always thought about how, you know, like, No Man's Sky is apparently, like, really good now. It just makes me wonder, like, if... if if we lived in a world where that the vision of the game that exists right now, if it released on that day, I wonder what the legacy of No Man's Sky would be. Um, mm. that, and, that's an interesting point. Yeah. But because it was announced, because it was promoted, the public pushed hardcore, as I believe is perfectly reasonable to do, and uh, it was forced out, and it's it's one of the biggest disasters in People, gaming releases ever. Yeah, I mean, when it's, a game it's is legacy announced is... And then they go silent, people get fucking antsy. Well, it's happening with Hollow Knight Silk Song. it's happening with Bayonetta 3, like, people are just I like... I mean, I feel like the best example of this is, if they had announced Cyberpunk 2077 in 2020, instead of 2013, people would have reacted differently to that game when it came out. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Like, um... when, you, when you announce something, definitely informs people's perceptions of it, because if it takes too long to come out, people are going to have lots of questions. And if you're not ready to control the narrative, okay. then it's better to not say anything at all. Someone just like, said, lol, what? I, the public forced it out? No Man's Sky had a release date. Okay, so it was the, publi the publisher think, forced it out. Think more creatively. When you have yeah. deadlines, it's because there's expectations everywhere. Not just with yeah. the publisher or stockholders, what? but also the public. Well, I, again, Cyberpunk 2077, that shit wasn't done, but part of the reason why they released it was, well, we've delayed it four times, we announced this game like eight years ago, it needs to come out, and it's like, well, well you don't have those goodwill. problems. Yeah, exactly, and and then there were pressures, because I, uh, City Project Red is a publicly traded company, and their stock went down after the game came out, and it was a disaster. Exactly. But like, their stock had gone really high because of rampant speculation. Speculation just leads to turbulence. Like you don't, you want to control the narrative, and like if you just announce immediately, we're working on this gemstone. I'm not going to tell you what it does. That feels like the worst decision you could have made. You'd be better <laughs> off just telling people what it does. Like at that point, you might as well commit fully. And and then if you do that, there's going to be tons of problems with uh people wanting that tech to come out very soon and wanting to potentially weaponize it. Yeah, and like, potentially it was right. work. Yeah, it might even influence its development and shit. It's weird. And yeah, this, it's, it's, it's the, I'm it's thinking this, it gave a timeline of a decade. Like, uh, yeah, it's um, be there's this yeah. crazy um, tug of war as well because it's like the game's not finished. It needs more time. There will be de delays, and it's like if you if you rank up to like a fourth delay, the fucking PR gets horrendous. Like, I mean, even if it's necessary, and even if the game is a miracle when it finally comes out, people just get so fucking restless. Okay, but if, I mean, if we're if we're applying this to the real world situation, I mean, like large games are virtually always announced like years before you can even except, see gameplay footage. Except that's actually when key. Nintendo and but that's that's that feels like uh you know you look at some like Nintendo often announces games like within a year that they come out. They have exceptions though. But look at people people are getting antsy about Breath of the Wild two now. And yeah, that I game know. got announced like three years ago. I would also argue Bayonetta um, 3 still and Bayonetta three that's years. Another one, yeah meaning one to four let's say very different from ten prime four <laughs> it's like yeah. okay i'm gonna show you this gemstone you're not gonna see anything as a result of it for 10 years i mean okay but we're, <laughs> we're, we're we're focusing on one side of the equation which is like okay if you announce a game and then it gets delays it's a problem it's also a problem if you don't announce games like um, then, you, then you then people don't have something to look forward to. They've got plenty the to be marveling I, over and built over. That's kind of the point. He's yeah, one of the most popular year people right now. Like, yeah. yeah, not I to mention it's, it, it's it's kind of hard to equivocate life changing technology with a video game. What do you mean? Dark Souls changed that. lives. Well, but I guess the thing is. You think about like um like Grand Theft Auto Six, Rockstar recently announced that it's happening, and we all kind of knew it was gonna happen. But if they had said that we were working on it in 2015, I think that there would be a much different perception of that game than officially saying now, yeah, we're working on it. Like yeah, there's so enough wiggle room in terms of people's speculation there. 
as opposed to we're working on it right now and this is what we're doing, but well, I'm not going to tell you anything about it. It's funny to think about too, because once upon a time, I would announce the project and release date expectation that I dropped, say, the release date expectation that I've dropped the name of the project too <laughs> until it comes out. It's <laughs> just like the expectations that get set are so frustrating to deal with, so it's uh, better to just surprise guess, people. I guess I just don't understand the criticism here. Like, I feel like it all functions fine. Well, I, I would even go as far as saying we don't even need... As long as we can understand why Jace would have made the choice, especially when he's under Which pressure, he's literally staring at yeah. all the people who want him to do one or the other, and then he mm -hmm. almost brashly decides, I'm just gonna not talk about any of it and appeal to vagaries. It's just like, yeah, that's totally in line, I think, with the choice he can make here. Yeah, and how can you calculate a particularly strong, you know, middle ground while you're sitting right there at the podium in seconds matter? Yeah. Well, again, you don't. That this didn't have to happen. <laughs> like he already it had is. the advice from Heidegger. He didn't. That's how it went. I mean, look, this. Uh, <laughs> okay. And I don't. Well, see I'm, even, not, I'm even, not saying even, that. Even, that's not arbitrary. I'm saying that up to this scene, he's literally thinking. He's 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 juggling everyone's perspectives in his head. Like, there's a reason for that. It's that he's asked them all what they think, and they've all told him. And he's got literally Heimerdinger a glaring at him from the front row. Well, he's got all of the... Because it's it's Heimerdinger, and it's Mel, and it's also Victor as well, because Victor wants... Like, it, it, it's, it's tough, because it's like, you're balancing, basically, a, a more principled approach versus just the pragmatic. People are going to like you a lot more if you reveal something cool and awesome. Mm-hmm. And it's down to the wire as well. It's like, it was, this is the day that he has to make the decision. And even if you have time, like, you still got to make the decision here. And he was clearly torn on it because he had the two speeches. A lot of subtle stuff to indicate that, but then also, like, the overt stuff to indicate that he's conflicted. Jace is an incredibly important character, and a lot of his decisions are based yes. on what everyone's influencing him to do. I feel uh, like that's almost at the core of his story, is juggling all of the interests that people have in him and what he's doing with uh, his fundamental principles, like why he's doing the science. Mm. God, are they still talking about this? Welcome. Correct. Yeah, sorry. Welcome to every friend yeah. <laughs> I, I, I love how chat was like, you guys aren't disagreeing at all. You're just heaping praise on the show. And as soon as I say something negative, it's like, you're just start locking the conversation. Like, <laughs> make up your mind, up. chat. We I... call ourselves ESAD every second of discussion. ESAD, <laughs> oh. <laughs> no, that's not. I don't that's like that. Like, no. Uh, so, um, we cut to Caitlin hanging out outside some of the main Piltover buildings, and she's getting a little bit of ridicule. I think she corrects one of them on something they're talking about, and then they're like, you're, you're high class. Fuck you. <laughs> she's <thing>. like, okay. <laughs> um, but she spots a fire, and they all run over to it, and there's a little girl voice saying, help me. I, I think it's, it's like almost bizarre what the, the voice says. It's like, I started a fire, and I'm stuck well, in here. It, it, help. Yeah, it works its way toward it. It starts with like, oh, it's so hot, I can't see. And then like, as they as it keeps going, eventually it just gets weirder and weirder. Oh, I started a mm -hmm. fire all by myself on purpose. Yeah. yeah. Um, <laughs> and then detonates, blows them all up. Um, I know that yeah. this is definitely one where people point out, does Caitlyn have some severe plot armor here? It's hard to tell. So the explosions go off right next to the guys who are all in the building. She is um, at a different point, right? Or she's not in the building, she's like outside. She's outside. I feel like she's yeah. further back. Um, I can't, I'll, I'm obviously playing the scene now, so I will note it, but uh, were there any bombs right next to her? I can't remember. Because um, she's with two being. of the people. Um, but yes, uh, just for anybody who's like, wait, well, what's happening though? It's like, so Jinx has set a big trap for enforcers and um, she be exploding them because uh, getting them out of the way to then get into the building and take whatever the science people oh okay that's that's yeah that's a pretty big explosion not to mention i think she was kind of in the middle of everyone she well, so get knocked out, these are though, choices right? i never quite understand sure, but right she got so, knocked out but everyone else with her was killed and there were killed, people further right? back yeah. from her than she was so. well just specifically i'm not even appealing to like all those logistics, just this shot that they do. So I think she's outside the building, but the building blows up, and so it comes through the wall. Um, and like, this is... Look at that. 
it's just like oh and, yeah sometimes oh, yeah, yeah. like it looks yeah. great as an action scene i guess but like it's just i wonder about stuff like this it's like man this is look this looks like she's dead yeah this is bad yeah, I, I think plot armor saved her in this case. It looks like the other two have vaporized. <laughs> and... The other two have yeah, vaporized. Yeah. <laughs> it's kind of like the other two like... enforcers will return in Arcane episode. Oh, nine. well, people are saying that's not her. Yeah, oh, that's not it? Caitlin. Oh, that's okay. uh, something that I think isn't visually communicated too well. She doesn't go in. Like, well, because I thought this was outside anyway. Because, yeah, like, we get... That is really not great for visual language. You see her look, looking like she's gonna back up. Well, that's still bad. Look at that yeah. shot. Wait, no. The, yeah. If it's not her, then this is just really weird editing. Yeah, because, like, right? I, th I think it really follows for you as a viewer to assume... Do you see her like this, right? And look at this shot, by the way. Yeah. Like, that's... that's pretty bad but then to cut from that to oh, this okay. i really feel like you're supposed to assume that's her but uh right i think you she, are yeah uh, you really are I, that yeah. looks like her i i don't know about this well out of curiosity how do we know her. it's not her what was the her hair looks shorter the hair in the person there looks shorter Caitlin okay has long hair she has i feel like hair. Caitlin has the kind of hair that you shouldn't confuse it with other people's hair often no um, yeah, and she rolls out. Um, I'm more than willing to concede this plot armor here. I, I, it's unclear yeah, sure. exactly how much. It's just that it does seem like she's the main character out of all the enforcers, and she's the one that doesn't mm -hmm. die because it's like, yeah, of course not. Okay, uh, I can, I can, get... I can confirm it is not her, but the that means the editing is like real scuffed. Yeah, yeah it's just hard to tell what the fuck's happening. I suppose I if you go best faith, then we're supposed to assume that she really just was in a in the vicinity enough to cause what we saw happen to her. Um, so you know, it, yeah, it's I'd, not. I guess it's not as bad as it could be. Um, if if that's definitely yeah. not here. Yeah, it, it doesn't necessarily have to be plot armor, but I think that's really that, that that's. The I think worst it's poorly communicated so far. Yeah, um, I would agree. Which is rare. <laughs> yeah, because they they're really show, good yeah. with that in the show for for the most part. But um, all right. No, if, so, you, if you yeah, if you, if you go back, just responding to chat. If you go back, there's another shot with like the same three people inside, and it's clearly not Caitlin. And then, like, the other shot with the explosion is the same three people in the same, like, spot. So it's pretty clear that it's not her. Well, okay, so this right. is another reason why it's confusing. She's standing in front of the the image that Jinx has made. And there's clearly someone... Oh, yeah, and then, and then you come back to these three. There are two more people behind her when the explosion but, goes off. Well, so this is why it's confusing. The explosion happens, and then we show that image that Caitlyn was right next to is, like... Oh, and they're exploding and then the next thing we see is this which makes me think that that's what's happening there but it's like it's not question mark and like okay it's very weird her position is very consistent with this shot so it has to be her wait well, but judging from the hair it isn't wait oh my god what is this editing hold on <laughs> like... what is going on here <laughs> because you're you see what i mean like she's standing in front of this thing and then they show this thing blowing up which means this should be here in front of it, and then they cut to. But they cut. Yeah, no, this is this is real scuffed. So it's not it her, is. but I the just... editing is very bad. <laughs> no, I, 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 I so think confusing. it's no, no, no. I think it's her, and she plot armor just saved. But look at that hair. Just... I'm I'm very I'm very moved by the hair argument. Yeah, it it. The... Yeah, that's not uh, her. It... Yeah, but her, her hair could no, no, no. Her hair could be forward in her face right now because she's got launched back. I don't think it would look that way, and I doubt that all of it has moved from what would be at the back to the two sides, and then look that short. I, I genuinely think this is not her. Um, it's just really weird editing. So yeah. I'm, I'm curious. I, I thought it was her. I didn't even realize this until now. I thought it was her. Did you guys think it was her? It, I thought it was totally her, her until I looked at it again. It's, it's totally her. So you're still well, convinced it I'm, is her. <laughs> I'm convinced. I, I would it is say her. I'm 85 percent sure it's not her, but we, we uh, I don't know who else it could the, be. I don't know that my given the position, <laughs> she was she was center stage. There were two people side by side her, and then when the explosion happened, the two people are still there. They get vaporized, and she doesn't. Well, there's Second, two different groups of people. There's the three people inside, and there's the three people outside. All standing in the exact got, same formation in the same Wait, exact I same six, spot. I thought six Wait, wait, wait. I thought six people got killed, right? So there were three people inside and three people outside, and Caitlin was one of the people outside. 
Yeah, that no, no, no. It's it's definitely not her. It's absolutely not her. It's definitely not her. That's them on the inside, and that's her with the short hair. Yeah, it's not her. It's not her. <laughs> yeah, it's it's definitely not her, but it's, the it's, editing it's is very bad. Just amuse no, about like, how hard it is to figure this out. Like, yeah, wow. I feel like hey. that's just well. The thing of it is, like, the the reason we're on this so much is because we really do need to establish whether or not plot armor just saved her ass. Pretty, I, yeah, I for, for anybody who's I, curious why we're spending so much time, it's like, do, do we have an egregious use of plot armor or not? It's hard to tell. I feel, feel like it's part of the scene is absolutely matter. fucked. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's just it's the editing, man. I don't know what they're telling me. Uh... Yeah, it's like, where, then where... The thing of it is, even if it was scuffed editing, she seemed awfully close to it anyway. It's still plot armor no matter how you cut yeah. it. Yeah. I'm pretty sure <laughs> yeah, it is. It's, that, well, is that one shot that I think really... Uh... Because we know it's here, at least in one of the shots, and uh, not yeah, necessarily. And she was one. up front putting the fires out, so yeah... Scuffed editing or not, I think she's been saved. Yeah, there you go. There's there you definitely go, okay? some plot armor. This is all we need. This is the frame to prove that there's plot armor, right? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that face. Like, <laughs> she, she moved back, but not that far. Somebody was saying she moved back. She's like, nah, she only took a couple steps. She was in, she was in front of other people. Maybe she's a Targaryen. They died, and she didn't. <laughs> She's immune to explosives. <laughs> um, she grew up dragon bombs. I'm, I'm immune to dragon bombs. I grew up around dragon bombs. Oh my goodness! But yeah, uh, it'd, be spots... one, it'd be one thing if she like ran and then everybody else didn't, but yeah. Yeah, you need to show her backing up a lot more. I would say, and then you'd be all right. Uh, I would agree. But she spots Jinx going in, but then can't quite stay conscious. Hey, what if the other enforcers tell her to stay back because they don't respect her and she tries to come in? You know, <laughs> like that. that that would work. You could do that. Get yeah. the fuck out of the way, Karen. <laughs> um, and yeah, so Jinx fucked around in the big science room. She took gemstone as well as a bunch of blueprints and notes. Uh, so then the council decides that Zorn could use the gemstone for weaponry. And Jace says that he's to blame, um, and that they should suspend everything to do with Hextech. Uh, and it becomes very clear that uh, there's, there's a viewpoint on all of this has changed, and I really love the, uh, the difference in responses he gets from the council when he suggests that. You have um, uh, Piltover's status as a global shipping lane depends on the Hextech, so it's like an appeal to... Piltover's current status, obviously. The second one is from the the guy with the fucking. Actually, we should have mentioned that by now, but I will. So yeah, it's I been so. seven fucking years, and he is still he trying still to solve solve the child's toys. <laughs> <It's>... <laughs> He's still fiddling with it. <laughs> I forgot that detail. The passage of time, and he's still playing with a kid's toy. That's great. I love it. Uh, someone said plot armor is a plot convenience, not a plot hole. It can actually be either. It depends. Like if she's, um, still a, she's still a person. I was like, got... um, if, uh, if a soldier misses like 20 shots in a row, you know, that could happen. Yeah, it's possible. It's convenient. But if you are shot through the fucking heart and then someone goes, okay, here's, drink this. And it's like, it's, <laughs> it's chicken soup. <laughs> And I'll feel, I'll I, feel, I was I'll making laugh. a fucking well, joke, and I just realized right that happens in Game of Thrones. Arya is stabbed several <laughs> times in the in the stomach, and she has chicken soup, and it solves it. <laughs> <laughs> is that genuinely what happens in the it's story? It's so fucking it, stupid. It, yeah, it, I, I don't know that it, there's like a one to one correlation with like the soup is what fixed it, but that is the order of events. Yeah, it's like in season six, I think. I like you want to clarify. It's not necessarily that the soup fixed the wound. It's just that that. What happened. the look? <laughs> okay, let's be. A little, uh, they pour the soup. Provided into the valuable hole. hydration. <laughs> the soup. The soup could have been around while magical healing was happening. Yes. Uh, unrelated to the soup. Um, but I, I just think that illustrates the difference. Like, it's a hole that the several stabs to his stomach did nothing at all. But it's not a hole that they shoot and miss you. It's just really convenient. Um. But anyway, so his POV is that um, my goods can't reach foreign markets till next winter if uh, if you get rid of the Hextech, right? So you got Piltover status, his own money, like an interest, 
And then Heimerdinger says, you would sacrifice your life's work? Like that, everyone else is thinking about how it affects them, but Heimerdinger is just blown yeah. away by uh, Jace's willingness immediately to put his own uh, reputation, well, everything that he's achieved on halt. Yep. Which is um, kind of, feels like echoing this Danwick Padidly thing. Yeah. It's a big thing he's doing, and uh, it's still a funny name. Which is so it's, a character. He's pulling a padiddly, is what they call it in universe. <laughs> mm. Jace is saying to shut down the hex gates, right? That's like yeah. one of the implications of this. All of the tech, everything. Yeah. yeah so I, so tech. I was, so why, why shut down the hex gates? Why is that necessary? The, I think the it, logic. My assumption is just that it's manipulation can happen now in relation to all hex tech stuff because the enemy can study it. So we've got to be careful until we figure out what they know and how they can do anything. Mm. So like if, if the hex the gate's active, but the hex gate's the active, idea. this thing can leave the city. There is that as a concern too. But I mean, mm. I guess it would be the, the clear thing would be if you have the crystal and you have the notes, might you know how to sabotage these... Yeah, yeah, there's, there's just like, a lot of yeah. risks now because we're exposed yeah. like we haven't been You're before. Just, yeah, reducing the variables by uh by shutting everything down mm -hmm. until they can get it back. Well, uh, in chat, someone said because the Undercity now has the means to uh, mess with it. I mean, they don't know that it's the Undercity. They don't really know anything. They yeah, don't know that. Know that's just, that's just kind of the problem. That's why that's they the want to be safe yeah. about it because they could too. And it could be anybody. Yeah, it's fair to say yeah. they don't know it's the Undercity, but that's what they assume. Um, it's a safe assumption, I think. Given the and I suppose it doesn't. In, in over. It doesn't even really matter who stole it, right? Like it's. it's yeah. It could be yeah. anybody. I mean, if yeah. it's ambiguous who stole it, I think it's more credible to shut them down. I think if, if they if they know it's of... the Undercity, then why would they shut them down? The Undercity doesn't need hex gates. Like it would what? make more sense to shut Wait, down what? the hex gates if they're you're not worried about, about hex gates. They're worried about what else you can do. Whoa, whoa, whoa! We just went over how Silco is desperate to get at those hex gates. That's like the scene we just We're had. We're cut then. off. Do, do and then we decided is leaving the... us further and further behind thanks to the hex gates. And he's also able to get trade through them, which they must have some level of awareness of that the Undercity has at least some connections to different people with different trades that involve with it. The, the idea that the Piltover Council think that Zorn has no interest in the Hex Gates is absurd. I'm sorry, I completely disagree. Well, no, it's not, I'm, I'm saying that if you, thought the, if you thought the threat was from someone far away, there's more of a reason to shut down the Hex Gates than for the Undercity. I'd say there's no reason. Why? I think because then you would is... you would be shutting off a transportation method for them to be able to come and mess with you. If you think that like there was a Noxian spy or something that came and like bombed the city, I mean th like this like there's a one to one analogy. Okay, if you think there's a terrorist attack with airplanes, then you know for coming from a long way away, it makes a lot of sense to restrict air travel, right? But if you're getting a terrorist attack domestically, shutting down airplanes doesn't make as much sense. It's because not the terrorist because well, no, terrorists so were domestic. Stolen. What's been stolen is the th is the secrets behind the technology that makes the hex gates function. Yeah. Well, this I, I feel like we dangerous. we just need to go more fundamental. This is like a this is like a base technology. It's not just the hex gates. It's like several other bits of technology as well. well. It's I like think you're starting from a fundamental that they've got access to that they can do. And plus, we already know that there is the concern of weaponizing. Um, She's hex stolen tech as well. Uh, she's stolen the blueprints for the Hex Core, which is significant. Yes, that's huge. I think it doesn't matter where it came from. It's been stolen, and the fact that you don't know who did it, but have a suspect, like it, I, yeah, I that's, think that's that what whether I was... you know or not, you would shut everything down. Like I don't, I don't know that makes a difference, or that th yeah. that will be a concern that you would have. They, they have got unstable it, they can reverse engineer it. They can start fucking with your hex gates. Yeah, not based to mention, technology, have, no, base technology. Go ahead. Uh, having, right. like, practically, like, unlimited power with all kinds of applications in itself. So, like, why wouldn't you freak out? Oh, and, and, of course, like, this is the, the brand new technology. This is the, yeah, uh, the brand gemstone. new version of it. The Even more well, powerful. Yeah. Well, you have a finite supply of these things, too, yeah. Which like, there's, there's a lot of back around to, you know, you don't want this thing leaving. Yeah, you didn't the even hex... want to announce it, and it's yeah. out there in the world. <laughs> like, yeah. It's, yeah, if the hex gates stay on, this thing could fly off to fucking Ionia or some shit, and it's just gone. No, you'd it's not never be able to find it. Oh, wait, yeah. you, so you mean you mean you shut down the hex gates to stop people from getting the gemstone somewhere else? 
You that, shot that, down that that one of the reasons. Why. If, if okay, you're gonna, that, that if you're gonna, oh, I thought you were gonna say like they can still get it outside the city. It's like yeah, but that cripples their ability to go do it fast. No, I, that, that makes sense. Um, I love the shot. Yeah. Look at Heimerdinger mm. there. Just staring at the the wreckage, especially on progress oh. days, like little fair too. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so as an alternative, Mel suggests that Jay become a counts. Jay, sorry, not Jay. Jay. <laughs> Hello. Hello. Jay, no, they I am, I am in charge of Jay's over now. So Jay, Jay. Jay. in the arcade world. Uh, Jay's become a counselor, and uh, that would enable him to have the authority and positioning to to shore up security for the hex tisms. And uh, the council's very split on this, and then Heimerdinger is actually the one that says it it's, makes the most sense for a scientist to be in Man. charge of hex tech security, which that is definitely Man. me planting a flag, because thus <laughs> Heimerdinger is arguably the reason that Jace gets this position. Isn't uh, Heimerdinger a scientist, too? He yeah, scientist. but he's not familiar really yeah. with Hextech. Well, sure, but like his point would stand. That, yeah, no, you know, he is, yes. he's correct. Heimerdinger is, is correct that it's a good idea to have Jace be in charge of Hextech security. He just needs the Heimerdinger authority. Heimerdinger is often correct. <laughs> okay, when you said red flag, I thought maybe that was another plot hole. No, 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 no. Like, I didn't you know, say red flag, flag but planting, planting a flag. Planting a flag. Oh, Remember, got it. he got him on there. Sure, 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 Jace sure. wouldn't be a counselor not for Heimerdinger. Yeah, that's all I'm saying. Okay. <laughs> um. Then oh, we have. Was... Yay. What was that? What was that, Theo? What are you? What are you complaining uh, about? I, I, I'm not complaining about anything. I just don't remember what bit's next. Right. Well, I, it's hard for me not to, because I just don't know how everyone feels. It's just that uh, I very much enjoyed any of the Jinx scenes. So. Uh, yeah. yeah. We got another one coming up. Uh, she's listening to. The fucking jinx. jinx song, yeah. like it's listening to a theme song. For people who are familiar with just the game's releases for cinematics and stuff, that was just like, wh wow. Yeah, <laughs> there it is. By the okay. way, Fortiche Productions did the music video for that song. Mm -hmm. And if oh, you cool. watch it before and after this show, different vibes. Yeah. <laughs> but... Um. Yeah. So anyway, she's having yourself a fucking jam out whilst, uh, and this is the thing not wasting time, look at what they show with the very quick flashes of what she's up to uh, obviously the, the gramophone her, her area, but then we've got a first shot of her is just sparking up something, she's making shit which is obviously in line with, she's a fucking gadgetron expert what's she holding here? the butterfly what we saw earlier, just nothing, just, mm. nothing. just holding the butterfly, neat um and uh, Silco arrives in the background, shouting at her, but she's too busy. She's having fun. And look at that, looking at a blueprint. She's already working away, basically, on stuff to do with, with Hextech. Very worrying. Uh, was she referred to as Jinx before now in the episode? I don't know. Yeah. That thought just occurred to me. I think, I think uh, Silco called her Jinx. I in thought the, uh when they were talking to each other before. I think she probably yeah, he probably did. I don't know. So Vika so. mentioned called her Jinx, didn't she? Yeah. I can't I, remember. I was under the My memory is saying that they always just used pronouns like she, her, you know. Um, I, I, uh, wait, don't jerk. they don't they say uh, in the in the river scene? Or I I guess we can't. I don't they refer to her as powder at some point in the future? I so maybe I think Silco none of them do. suggests that you need to get rid of powder. I can't remember if um yeah. he says the name specifically. Um, well, I yeah, I, yeah, I, yeah. Would be, I would be surprised if Silco ever called her powder. That that just that I don't think he would. No. I think that's pretty fundamental actually, that he wouldn't call her that. Yeah, and it, it it's clear why, like later. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but yeah, he's outraged, and I fucking love her expressions again in this. He's basically <laughs> like, you've attacked Piltover, you've blown up some shit, and you've stolen from them. We are in serious just, fucking like, trouble. Meanwhile, her, well, her, her POV is, oh, you, you have no idea how fucking good news I have for you. Like, so she's just watching him summarize all the horrible things she's done, and just gradually as he's saying it, being like, yeah, I know, it's great, isn't it? Like, <laughs> 
I just like I, slightly I, nodding. I fucking as love her. it. Like, yeah. 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 And um, yeah, she's like laughing as he explains what she's done, she's, as if as though she's kind of forgotten. She's like, oh yeah, yeah, like because hmm. yeah, her mindset in relation to all this violence is just that it's pretty fun. Uh, yeah. She's a very damaged she's person. Over. She, she should, should get write a tattoo that on to demonstrate. Exactly. <laughs> nice. Wait, I missed that. What were you saying? We, we both at the same time said that she should get the uh, charity she or tattoo on her forehead. Oh, fuck yeah. Whose fucking idea was that, man? <laughs> I think he regrets it. Don't worry. <laughs> um, yeah, and then she shows Silco what she has. Once again... Beautiful nails. detail on the nails, yeah. Um, and how how great those old gemstones look, by the way. Very, yeah, um, very pretty. They look, really they look like they are used for something for sure. It's not like a just a featureless marble or nothing like that. Mm -hmm. That looks like it's got potential. Just looking at it. Yeah, this is the into a, like a, I can together. make it into anal beads. You, you could do that. I'm not going to say you can't. I mean, a waste of potential, I suppose. Hex tech. No, you do you, right? Sex tech. Sex tech. <laughs> and yeah, this is a big victory for her because uh, she sees this as like full validation. I did it. She's pretty great. Yeah. She got him like, she the had crown the jewel. Up. And uh, yeah, she had everything ready to celebrate, and she gives him a hug because she's clearly proven that. She's strong and worthwhile. Uh, but obviously, plot-wise, Silco has a gemstone, which is bad mm. news. Yeah. Um, and then I think we get into uh, Jace visiting Caitlyn, who's very injured. At least we get that. But she's still on the case. Oh, Hits. yes. Because she's and upright. very determined. Yeah, and upright, true. Uh, the nice details that Jace has brought her flowers and she like immediately throws them into a pile and wants to talk to him about the case. It's just like a because <laughs> there's so many. She's got so many. She's flowers. got a ton of them, yeah. And they've Poor all got Jace. letters in them and stuff. Just yeah. Immediate characterization. Look at it. Look, here's I'm what this character's priorities are. She didn't say a word to communicate that. No. It's like yeah, whatever. But look, case. Mm. Look at that. Imagine, it's like a tarot card. Uh, you know got. she. A silk over could have just, or at least it looks like. Imagine silk. like a an inferior scene where she's just like, "Oh, I'm really focused on the case. I'm just, I need to crack this case. It's important in terms of establishing my autonomy and independence." That's, that's <laughs> how many. That's that's how so many shit writers would come, would do it. I don't appreciate your flowers, Jace. Feeling. For I have many flowers. <laughs> I have many Not flowers, even that. They wouldn't have, it wouldn't have occurred to them to put the flowers in the scene as a device to show that she doesn't care about them. Well, I am the daughter of a counselor and constantly in her, <laughs> in her Before shadow. I. I I wish to exact or I wish to have autonomy. Look, and this is my mechanism for doing so. This case. And uh, so yeah, just I I really love the conflict in this scene, being that. He's desperately trying to fix the situation on his end. Like, it's such a huge security breach. And meanwhile, like, a friend of his has been injured. And her parents now don't want her to be an enforcer. At best, she can be, like, a secretary for Jace. And he's, like, just yeah. telling her that that's the reality. And she's so fucking tired from her POV to not be taken seriously by anybody and to be controlled that she just doesn't want anything to do with it. Uh, meanwhile, he's stressed the fuck out with all of this happening. So they just... This, the, like, the chemistry is just off for them in this scene. It's, uh... Yeah like deliberately um because he even announces it as like a plus it's like hey work for me you know that'd be great and she's just like fuck off like i can do <laughs> my own shit and it's just like oh um how many times yeah. she got offers like that in her time trying to become an enforcer yeah because like, it's not yeah, a someone it's not a promotion going, hey it's a demotion yeah hmm. is, is uh is there like lore information about what exactly uh involved like being an enforcer involves like does she have autonomy to go like investigate stuff or like I, I, i'm assuming I mean, so based on what she does presumably I'm assuming not because of what marcus says i was gonna say she probably needs to be sanctioned yeah. or at least approved of like it, you know it's probably well, the standard I, thing I think, of uh, the, the the officers would be given missions or details 
Well, yeah, just just the enforcers are like but, for enforcers of like vague cops, basically, like yeah. but, of this of this world. I'm kind of asking. It, 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 would, it seems like they're more than cops. They're more like FBI agents or something. Well, that's why I'm saying like vague cops. They're like uh, more enforcement. Basically, I feel like they're more well, cops than FBI they're, they're, agents. Yeah, yeah we don't really. This, this doesn't federal. seem to be like a. There doesn't seem to be an actual like. If they're not cops, then what are the cops, right? Then we, surely we would have been shown some someone I mean, that they like go up to and it's like, hey, we'll take it from here, kind I, of a I thing. Can't, like they're the people in blue who stand on the street corners, man. Like yeah, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> they're cops. Um, I guess, I uh, but I mean, she she accepts the uh, the position right for the utility that it has, though, doesn't she? Oh yeah, yeah. Uh, she because uses she, it because like, she's, she's a smart operating lady. Operating as yeah. Like she's basically bending sort of what she's supposed to be doing so that she can do what she needs to be doing. Just gonna do a yeah. little bit of uh, expression appreciation here when Jace is explaining his offer, which she she's obviously pounding. understands, know what yeah. it means. Well, just all the expressions she has. They yeah. even have one that's like blurred because the focus is on him. It's just like they just yeah. don't care if you miss stuff like that. Just the moment she takes the scroll thing from it, like it's not a look of like it's not a pleasant look. It's suspicion. <laughs> like when she's looking at What's well, the thing um though I think this is pretty cool is an underlying thing that seems to be happening throughout this uh season is that these two people grow apart. Um mm. when they could have done any story they wanted, but it's just a matter of they're both running completely different plot lines. Mm. Um and so when they come back, it's uh cuz yeah, th this is the last time these two talk now for a while. Um but yeah, so uh she decides that it's worth trying to get to Stillwater so she can interview that guy that she was able to talk to briefly um, at the airship. When she gets there, the, um, the, I don't even know, what, do you know what species he is, Theo? I don't, he is large man. He is a large man. <laughs> I, I think when I was watching it with, uh, with Free, I'd say that this guy feels like uh, the fake American accent that you can hear sometimes. Sounds really put on, but I, I could be wrong. I don't know who voiced it, but it just he talks like this. This is like <laughs> feels, everything feels extended. It's something that um, uh, Gary has said to me before with the uh, American impersonations that get on his nerves when they just drag out each word. Um, uh, but yeah, I don't know. It could just be that they're going like for Cat that Bane. With the character. Hey, Cad Bane's awesome. Fuck you. I liked the bit where he shot his gun and had a hat. Oh, I was so fucking yeah. awesome. <laughs> anyway, she goes to speak to that guy. He's been beaten the fuck up. And uh, he's in, like, the ICU or whatever. And then she says, oh, okay, can I speak to the person who did that to him? Because, obviously, they must have had some kind of motive. And, um, it was kind of neat for me. I don't know for everyone else. I kind of forgot about Vi. Because I was so interested yeah. in the story that was being told that I was like, oh, fuck, of course. I and, didn't um, forget one of our main characters. I feel like... <laughs> Well, it's not even criticism, it's just so many people I'm interested in that I was like, I oh yeah, of course, she exists as well. Um, and I was I was quite happy to see her. I was like, hell yep. yeah, let's get this shit started too, because that's so much as we've got going on. Um, so yeah, she was taken away to prison, and she's been here since, which is going to have done stuff, presumably. Um, mm. And Caitlin and her have met. Plot hole. You shouldn't punch brick balls like that as a habit or for training. You will screw your wrists. I mean, yeah. <laughs> Bad, <right? laughs> yeah, like, I can't imagine punching a brick wall is going to be a very good thing it's, to um, do. It's kind of reminds me of the the powder shooting thing as a kid. Just like, yeah. All right, calm down. It's okay. Yeah, like, why you? <laughs> we get fuck. it. You you can do this in so many other ways. You don't need to have it literally punching concrete apart like this. Just you're right. <laughs> Fucking. I had a friend who punched a brick once in a brick wall and he really regretted it. <laughs> like it's... Well, there was yeah. that video on Reddit of the dude who punched the reinforced glass in his wrist. Broke, yeah. If you yeah. Have it, you're ah, going to destroy Jesus. your wrists. Because yeah. these are really hard surfaces and your body yeah. ain't as strong as you think it is. <laughs> You're supposed to even wear wrist support if you want to punch a punching bag. Like... <laughs> yeah. yeah just like like surrounded by walls. It's true. Yeah. <laughs> Stuff like that doesn't I'm bother me that much. By but... walls, yeah. I just, uh, it's, it's not even that. Uh, it doesn't bother me. It's For just... me, it's just a little bit cringe, because I'm just like, oh, oh, have some restraint. I know you want me to think she's strong yeah. and cool. You don't need to do it like this. 
You don't need to work that hard. Just have a Just, like throw punches at convinced. the air, and, like you know, practicing our form mm-hmm. or whatnot. You know, well, like, it doesn't the, have to be punching the wall directly. It's fine. Yeah, the, the show otherwise has been pretty good about being restrained on certain things, like characters that are strong and cool don't need to. Like, you know, they can still get their ass kicked, right? It doesn't Absolutely, have to be yeah. the most extreme version of whatever. Well, so. Vi is the biggest brawler possibly in the whole show, and she's the one that probably takes the most damage out of everybody. She I has. Think that- Yes. Other than people so, yeah. who died, obviously. I just mean yeah. that she gets beaten to a pulp several times. The real heroes are the ones who have to keep going on. Mm. <laughs> Dying is easy. It's easy. Uh, <laughs> so anyway, that was episode four. Um, and it only took hey, us we half the time we have. Yeah, we've, nice. we've lost half the time. Yeah. Uh, what, what can be said about episode four? I think it reminds me a little bit of episode one and two, where we're resetting again. We're setting the sort table. Of, yeah, that's the vibe um, I got. I like it a lot. There's plenty to draw from it, yes. but it's definitely one of them ones you finish and you're like, all right, when's, when's the go? explosions? When's yeah. the people killing each other? When's the part with the giant lasers? Come on. Where's the glorious evolution? I mean, Where's what? the part where the cool cowboy shoots the other cool cowboy? Oh, you I mean, where is that? By that? I mean, it's, yeah, I was going to say, it's in some of the best <laughs> TV shows that I've seen, so I don't think it's a bad idea, you know? You know I'm going to um, put on my thumbnail face for that. But yes, a little bit slow. But it's fine. I agree. Um, which, yeah, if there's we, a, nothing else anyone wants to say, we can just start with the next one because we are just, next. Just quickly, like we need to take that time because we have had a huge time skip. But also, yeah. we're not wasting time in just resetting the scene. We're also mm-hmm. like picking up threads and uh, working with characters and moving them in directions to get the plot moving forward as well Bro. as just setting a baseline. Yeah. And I think Chad would prefer get... we go back and. Uh... Mm-hmm. <laughs> no, go ahead. I was going to say, I, th- I think chat would prefer we go back and argue about progress, Dave, for another two hours. <laughs> Just kidding. <laughs> we can do it. Don't test it. No, um, I'm good. The, the funny thing today is that we're only going to get through another episode, so there's still so many conversations yeah. that cannot be had, but I suppose next week we'll try <laughs> and do four episodes, okay? It'll be nuts. Yeah. Um, yeah which, by the way... Right. This isn't just because Rags will uh, need to go, but I would also argue that me and Fringy need the time to be able to finish up Boba Fett. Uh, we're, we we're close. Are, yeah, we're close. <laughs> yeah. You, yeah. You Sentence fuckers better love over. it. You, can make it. <laughs> you better. Well, I'm excited. You, uh, wow. You... I'm excited for it to be done, yes. I... <laughs> oh, dude. I'm excited for it. Not understating that I've put, uh, as, as Fringy, of course, as well, a lot of effort in this one. So, uh, Hopefully you guys Lots enjoy of it. Fun little edits. It's been non-stop since uh, since we recorded it, but yeah. we can't talk about that yet. We got to talk about episode talk about five now. Episode five, and this yeah. isn't pointed at all, but we open on a great character building scene for Caitlin. Yeah, because it's one of many. A very great character building scene it's for Caitlin. Kind of trite to bring up how pretty scenes are at this point, but this one especially <laughs> to me, like look. At this fucking image, Theo. It's not trite. Look at that. That's like, an arcane. That's not real. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that like that one especially was the one I was going to bring up. Holy fuck! Oh, it's and... gorgeous. Look fuck at those leaves. Know. Look at the gun. Sexy yeah. gun. Rags. Look at the gun. I do see the gun. What a gun! You like guns? I do like guns. Uh. Beautiful, insane, pretty, gorgeous, coom. Let's see, it's chatter on point today. Yeah, yeah. cool. Um, Agree. So, we see targets are rising and getting shot by a younger Caitlyn. I actually think, Jay, was it you that you didn't realize she, this was a flashback until... <laughs> I was just like, she's a lot younger, but <laughs> I feel like that gives it away. Yeah. Uh, I think it was only when Grayson shows up that Jay was like, oh, okay. Grayson shows up? Spoiler. I'm sorry, yeah, Grayson's back. Somehow she returned. This this seems bizarre (laughs) to me. I I really like that bit bit there where she, like, readjusts uh, her, like, placing her chin against the gun, like, for aiming. They didn't need to do that, but they did. I'm more curious what Rex just said, that this scene is bizarre. What's what's that about? What's going on, Rex? I guess the the contest of how the... Yeah, so I guess you, you and someone else are running through the woods... And there are places where targets pop up, and then you shoot the targets, and then you move to a next spot where I guess more targets pop up, and you're next to them, and they're next to you, and then you get to the end. It, it seems like a really odd. My I assumption mean, you is you. Yeah, my assumption is you both released into the forest. There's a track to run, and the one who hits the most targets wins. Yeah. You know, so there's some 
rate of fire, you you gotta I get, these things seem to be single action in the terms of their their break their break action. They break open, you put one in, Harvard Martini Henry style. And sometimes she suits these things damn fast, or I'm wondering, what what are you doing off camera to shoot this gun that fast? She, she's pulling the gun uh, below camera and then back up again, Goldeneye style. Mm. Oh. Um, oh actually, I was just looking at the colors. I don't know if all the target colors are different or if there's a red one. yours are green, the opponents are yellows, and then there's red ones that mean both of you can shoot them. I don't know if that's what that I, is. I think the red I one is like, score-based. Like, yeah, I think you have a course of your own. My assumption is uh, yeah, you each have a course of your own, which are color-coded, and then the last one is free-for-all. Or is it, yeah, just, it's the first person to hit the red target. You can only hit the red target when you've hit all of your targets. That could Something be it. I thought that the red target was when you're not supposed to shoot originally. And they were going to do this thing where she's maybe impulsive and learns a lesson. Uh, something along those lines. Cause, oh, like, uh, like Because that happens a lot in target. Yeah, it happens a lot in target <laughs> practice where, like, in games and in stuff mm -hmm. where there's a lot of targets to shoot, but there's some you don't shoot. So that yeah. doesn't mean you just shoot everything that moves instinctively, which would be good practice for an enforcer um but I, I but i guess it's just the target's red and you shoot it also damn those back sights are wide like i said um she's got a green armband and she's shooting the green targets i think that you have a color coded to yourself and then red was just for both of you and it's the first person to shoot it and because she realizes that uh it wasn't that she shot it first it was that grayson gave her the win um mm. That look of elation she has on her face when she hits it, then looks to the side and sees Grace in there. It turns into a little bit of a frown. Yeah, because she thought she'd won because she was good. Yeah. But then That's that comes there. into the point that Grayson's making. Why are you shooting? What are you shooting for? Because mm. uh, Grayson says, which is almost upsetting because she's dead already, but Grayson's like, yeah. I, for me to miss is like it represents like the inability to protect the people of this city. Mm. She's like, I like her. She's neat. Really cool. Character. I like her a lot. Used sparingly. Yeah. Um, and compliment the voice actress again. Just so unique. Oh, yeah. Um, yeah. Just the scene ends with Caitlin being asked, basically, like, why are you doing what you're doing? And uh, mm. it just plays into a lot of what we already know about her. But I really like all of the flashback scenes for the the characters as children. There. Um, Informative. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, I think she says about the winning the trophy that uh, Grayson says, protecting this city, that's trophy enough, or something like that. Hmm. Yeah, this, this seems actually, this is one that I didn't notice much on my first watch through, but it's actually like really good and important for Caitlin's character. Agreed. And this is, this is basically the moment where she wants to become an enforcer, right? Yeah, it's clearly that yeah, Grayson's inspired her quite a bit. Yeah, and like uh, it's hard to. <laughs> it's another case where I can't, I can't give it the praise I want to because we'd have to mention things we can't mention. But um, it it fits in really well with what happens later. Grayson has an impact there. on multiple people who are enforcer or enforcer mm. adjacent. Yeah, even Penis Man liked her. He liked <laughs> nobody. <laughs> just for um, just for clarification, Wait. who's Penis Man? Yeah, who? Marcus. Marcus. Well, penis Man. Ah, uh, yes, of course. Ah, oh, yes. I am Lord of the Penis. Uh, so yeah, uh, which immediately the dialogue is just telling you everything you want to know. So Caitlin and Vi are talking to each other, and um, uh, Vi is offering that she'd be able to help in some way, shape, or form. And then she's uh, Caitlin's like, "Why would I trust someone like you?" And she's like, "You enforcers are all the same. Go find him yourself." Like they both have preconceptions that are pretty significant mm -hmm. about each other's station. Um. And yeah, Vi is uh, particularly interesting given who she is in the game. Mm hmm. Yeah, we can. I think that's something we should save to mention until the end of the show because that's. Yeah, uh, yeah. It's Grayson big potatoes. in the game? Hmm? Or is it Caitlyn? Are you talking about Caitlyn? Okay. Bye. Uh, right, bye. So. Uh, yeah, so Caitlyn decides to use the position she has to authorize the release of Vi under her supervision. Um, uh, and I think, is there a line that's like, um, since when was Jace a counselor? And she's like, today. Like, or yesterday or something like that. He's just like, a little... Today, yeah. Huh. 
Like, yeah, it's just using the power she has, why not? Um, and then we have a really, 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 really good scene for keeping in mind when judging Penis Man. Um, he's conducting, like, a funeral for all the people that have died oh, in Jinx's we, explosion. Are we just skipping past the, the, like, interrogation scene? Uh, what do you want to mention? Go for it. Uh, I mean, I, I feel like it's a, a bit convenient. I mean, I don't know if you guys feel the same way, but I, they it, don't it, kiss on the lips. Just so we're clear, they they do not kiss on the lips in that scene. <laughs> yeah, okay, do, right. do, do. Chad, yeah. Chad has Chad has been having a field day with that. <laughs> um, but no, I mean, it, it, I, I don't know. It, it doesn't seem the, the fact that the fact that Caitlin's able to meet Vi and the fact that they cooperate the way that they do seems a bit convenient. Why? What do you mean? Why? Uh, okay, so what what motivation does Caitlin have to trust her? Um, well, the reason and, why, and why would and what, talk to her is because she's like the only real lead that she has. What choice does she have? Yeah, I think Caitlin's taking a risk. She, yeah, Caitlin's not averse to risk things. at this point. No. And, and Vi also makes clear that Caitlin will not be effective alone in the Undercity, which mm -hmm. Caitlin, you can see in her face she's like damn it she, she has a point yeah like like is there is there is there a good reason that caitlin thinks that there's anything like there's any reason to trust her that she has something useful to add or that she should her reaction her, to her word or the image and her reference yeah to silk. she the fact that she's pinning silco as the leader the fact she said she can prove it and that she recognizes the the crayon drawing yeah so she knows that Vi has some emotional attachment to the operation adjacent to hers. And she, yeah, she, she may not have an exactly a good reason to trust Vi, but what other you know option does she have? Her lead just got her his fucking job busted up by her. So she's taking a risk. Also, Caitlin doesn't trust her. Yeah, Caitlin doesn't have a heck of a lot of trust in her, but again, she's got to do what she's got to do. Clearly she's not averse to risk at all. She got blown up, and she's already still on the case. I'm on the uh, case. I he mean, died. I, okay. She just got back up. <laughs> I, like, my my problem isn't with being risk averse. It's just that, like, it, if you if you compare this to a scene like Silence of the Lambs, it, it has very similar scenes. Um, it, I just feel like a lot of what's happening doesn't really follow it. It it seems Why? a bit convenient. I Why? mean. She just randomly okay. She doesn't have any okay. Okay, I actually know what it's like to be in a prison. <laughs> I like I'm, I'm imagining going up and just talking to a random person, and they're and they're like selling you a line, and then actually like believing them and letting them out of prison, and just like oh yeah, come come with me, we'll go sort it out. It's like it's it's a stretch. It's, I feel it's like a, a stretch. Really sure, in in did you not way to paint the scene exactly? Did you not see Vi's reaction to merely looking at a drawing? How do you fake that? Lunges at the bars. You, easily, I this? mean. Well, yeah, I'm not going like, to say it's impossible to fake that, but I think that's Caitlin's reasoning is that this girl knows. That's a specific thing to fake. And, you know? and, she's, and she knows she's lied to her as well. She's like, why did you, like, the beating up the guy who's directly involved with all of this, and she's already claimed that he works for Silco, everyone does. Um, which is, if you remember with future, a little bit of future knowledge, that Silco's been cleared again and again. So that's definitely interesting information. Yeah, um, I, I understand that. I think there's an, more than enough here. For, and if you remember, Caitlin regrets this decision soon, Pretty but then quickly, realizes yeah. that uh, that it was well, actually the right choice. I mean, that, that's kind of my point, is that they have, there's a, a, a substantial reason for them to be very skeptical of or hostile to each other. And that so doesn't what, seem to manifest very that, much. It, what do you mean? It I totally does. I think it definitely <laughs> it does. does. I, think it they feel, does. I think they're quite hostile and antagonistic to each other. But yeah. I, I guess the second question would be, what should she have done instead? What is Caitlin's alternative to getting Vi out and then working with her? What does she do? I mean, the, the, I mean, the alternative is to leave and continue investigating elsewhere. I so mean, this I, is her like, only what, lead. What is that? What, this is what her, her only lead. lead? I, I, I'm not convinced it's a lead. <laughs> like, like, okay, no, it is a lead. Okay, hold on. Hold on. Okay. So let's, let's back up. Okay, Caitlin is there talking to the dude at the front, and she's like, "Okay, I'm here to see this dude with these tattoos. He was on a blimp." He got beat, you know, he got beat up, sent here to prison. I want to see this dude. Okay, his face got crushed in. Okay, uh, that sucks. Uh, when can I talk to him? I don't know when his face gets patched up. 
uh, all right, later. Like, why why do you even make the assumption, oh, the person who beat him up in prison, like, I should definitely go talk to this person. Why did they do it? Yeah, why? They might have why, why did, did they, they do, it? do it? I, I, that's what I'm saying. I, and I also, don't... this person, it could be months before their face is fucking... Doom, if you and I were but investigating why... this, I would suggest we talk to the person who beat him up because there might be a reason. That's our only There's no lead. reason not to talk to them. There's no reason not to. You're there... There and, is a and reason not to, to What's the reason what? not to talk to them? Prisoners are heavily in, like the reason not to talk to them is that first of all you can't trust them. They're heavily incentivized to lie to you. And why talk to the first person? So, and why talk to the first person? I mean, I, I don't like maybe, that logic at all. Never talk to prisoners. You can't trust them. Yeah, you can't trust a lot of people. This is the exact. Them things, this is the exact well. attitude that created the divisive tension between Caitlyn and Vi. The unwillingness to trust other people that are not mm -hmm. from a similar place than you. Doom, you should be ashamed of yourself. Well, they, they do, <laughs> what are you talking about? <laughs> <laughs> they, they, they do trust each other like an inordinate amount, seemingly. No, okay, no, we, no, we, no. We, we, they definitely That's struggled strong. before getting to that point. Uh, I I don't know why it's not enough that this is a person who had specific interest. The guy was there for what, like an hour? And he was beaten to death almost. That's very interesting. And then the fact that she recognizes the drawings, she has someone that she can pin it on, and she's offering, I can prove it. You can't on your own. Caitlin can take it or leave and it. you will not last on your own in the Undersea. And okay. Caitlin so, has so the just, power. Just to, just, to, just to walk through this, because I, 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 I caved on other stuff where I, I still disagreed, but this is, I feel like there's a good point here. Okay, first of all, one of my objections is that it's very convenient. It is very convenient that the person who beat up the person she's going to see that she has no idea about just happens to be like the only person we know in the world that can like help her You've out. Not and then and then she that, trusts her. That's, that's not convenient. Not convenient. How is that's, that not convenient? That's cause and effect. Who's going to beat up that guy? Effect. The person who helped destroy her life. Or his, Wait, why? Their life. Vi why? fucking hates. Do you not remember that Vi knows that guy? I remember. No, that, three, that you know? isn't the the no. The point isn't that Vi knows the person. It's that Caitlin wouldn't have any understanding of this. It's like you got beat up why in a prison. No, any number we've of been over this. So, in it's prison. interesting to explore that someone within hours of him arriving at the prison nearly killed him. Why did they do that? Yeah. Who is this person? Yeah, I'm saying it's convenient that it's Vi. Vi is like the one person that's in not, the best position that's to help not, out. Vi is not convenient. She, she has a reason to do she it. She did so it for a reason. It, it follows. She is the compelled only reason that I to could, do that to him. The only reason I would see anybody saying that it's convenient is like meta because she's Vi and she's the main character of the show. But like, it doesn't. That doesn't mean anything. Like in not, universe, it all follows. Not to mention, we're about to find out that she does this regularly to the people she that regularly, have yeah. fucked her over. She has, and she doesn't have an, and she is impulsive about it. If you're trying to argue that she has no more motive than anyone in the prison to beat him, I don't understand at all. I like it's it's okay. It, it doesn't I, like I I, I, I whatever. I, I see there's like multiple problems here. It, it's convenient that she talks to. It's convenient that Vi is the one who beats them up. It's convenient that no. she thinks to go talk I, to the person. You need to justify why it's convenient. It's convenient that I, I, I just I, I'm I, telling I, you like a bunch of different reasons. No, well, yeah, so just it, saying it is. We've taken them one by one and said no to each of them, but now you're concluding that they're and all you valid. Just fall back to I, yeah, I don't I don't accept your rebuttals. It still so, seems okay, very wrong. Be, all right, be more specific. <laughs> what about who she has a motive to beat that man? What do you disagree with on that? Okay, there from Caitlin's perspective. There's no reason to think that the like the person who is beating this person up is going to be the person who is going to like help solve the case. True. I mean, they got that beat up in prison. She, true. true. Caitlin drug, knows this. Needs... True. What's your criticism? Caitlin knows that. Wait, wait, like it, it, again, this is very convenient. It, okay. Caitlin doesn't have a reason to believe that this person is going to be the person to help her solve the case. True. Is a person like the the prisoner got beat up in prison. There's not any particular reason to think. True. Um, that there's any like necessary connection to anything. True. So I, I again, I, I'm. It's. I, I can. I can buy. Okay, she's going to go talk to her because. Uh, I mean, the reason you guys are giving is she'll go talk to her because she doesn't have anything else to do. Well, I don't. I mean, she certainly has other things she can do. But okay, she's just going to go talk to people. It's convenient that the person who happens to have beaten them up is also the person who is in the best position of like anybody, presumably in the universe, to help her solve the case, right? Okay, I don't okay. know why you've concluded no... that, that why? she's the best person to help. No, probably Marcus would be the best person ever. Like he's got all the information and access uh, and he could also facilitate her on Piltover's side. Vi is very well, useful. Marcus... 
but there is a reason that she ends up with Vi beyond, oh, it's convenient that Vi is the one that's helping it. You understand, like, if we're going by what would be, uh, what would happen, the, the show is telling us Vi fucking hates all of Silco's henchmen. Any of them that are sent in, she probably beats the fuck out of and then ends up in solitary. That is a thing that happens. Now, Caitlin comes to the prison looking for him, and that event has happened, which draws her to Vi. These are like, I would argue it's the complete opposite of convenience. It's almost like you're locked into those events. Okay, really quickly, Marcus wouldn't help her, so... You haven't understood well, like, at all what I was trying to uh, say. I'm, I'm talking about <laughs> convenience. Marcus, of course, wouldn't I, help sure, her. Sure, but... Well, you're saying that Vi isn't the person, like, the best person to run into. Well, Vi helps her. Marcus wouldn't. So like, I'm just saying with the potential power agency of the characters and what they know. Vi is one of many oh, sure, people. But, but the, the problem is, who are the people that Caitlyn could bump into? And you're like, when going to that prison regarding a Silco goon, it's like, it's probably the Silco goon or maybe Vi. Because well, Vi again, would beat the fuck out of him. I don't know why... Why, why, is... why are we taking... Why, why is it, like, just randomly bumping into someone is the it's, way that... That's not random. Not random. It's not <laughs> random. It's very well structured. It's a, it, like you said, it's cause and effect. I literally don't understand where you've detected randomness. Caitlin is drawn to the prison by Silco Henchman. Silco Henchman is beaten up by Vi because Vi beats who is up in all prison. Silco Henchman. Yeah. yeah, who is in the prison because she if, beats up all of the Silco Henchmen that go there. Vi's personal journey payoff in this show is defeating Savika. That's like her big thing outside of Powder or Jinx, that dynamic. If you remember, she has a huge moment of elation when that fight completes. Because she yeah, fucking I hates she not like all the people yeah. who betrayed Vanda, which includes Chungus Boy. Or at least he was <laughs> the, the Silco. Yeah. Doesn't Chungus fucking matter. <laughs> she fucking hates those people. She beats them to a pulp every time she gets a chance to. So Kate, hey, yeah, I, I'm, I'm, not, I'm not contesting that Vi wouldn't attack the henchmen. That's our argument for why it's not random. Well, okay. <laughs> what part of it is random? It, it, okay. From Caitlin's perspective, there, there isn't uh, like there isn't a reason to think that there's like th this person is going to be useful or that this person is going to help you. In fact, but that there's probably pretty good reasons to be dubious of both of those assertions. What I'm saying I mean, is you, random. Is that like well, even though there are, even though without the four, like again, from Caitlin's perspective, without foreknowledge of all this other stuff that's been going on, she has very good reasons to be skeptical of this person. And yet but she isn't got... skeptical of this person. And this so, happens to be the person that can help her out. So I'm, I'm, she is skeptical. She absolutely is. That's mm -hmm. just categorical. But also, if you've got no other leads, what choice do you have? Like, she's got nothing. This is the best that she's, she's there, got. There, okay. There are lots of other things that could happen because this is what happened in the show. She. Again, in the show, she releases her, and then it ends up fine. That doesn't mean that in the moment, it's like a necessarily great okay, decision. So I mean, she goes... take someone who's been locked up and like literally had the key thrown away, or, or someone who's so dangerous they don't even keep proper records on them, and it's like, oh, that, well, you know, just that's not what, you, that that's not what you conclude from that. No, um, but let's pretend for a second that Vi didn't tell her anything. She even ignores it. She just doesn't speak at all. Caitlin would check, and she would have to resort to something else. That's a dead end. Simple yeah. as that. But it's not a dead end. A what, would, what would the character Vi say to this person in this scenario? I think everything she says is entirely in line. She fucking hates enforcers. She knows that Silk is behind everything and no one believes her. And she thinks that uh, this is definitely an opportunity. She wants Caitlyn to get her out of there so that she can get to Powder. Because she sees an image that looks like something Powder would have drawn. Yep. Mm -hmm. But that's just a goal anyway. Yeah. And then Caitlyn yeah. like, gets given all the information that she would need to believe this person might be able to do something to help her with this case, and that's good enough. Good enough for any detective. Do you think that Vi thinks there's a reasonable chance she'll be let out when she's in the prison? I mean, I'd give it a shot if I were her. Yeah, like, if, otherwise, I'm just going to stay as in prison As long as she forever. thinks there's even a 1% yeah. chance, as Batman would say. She should take it as an absolute Ah, <laughs> uh, you beat me to it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't know why she wouldn't take that opportunity. Her only other choice is stay in prison forever. <laughs> like, I'd certainly if, try. If, again, yeah. So if if the premise Especially is she's trying she's trying to, to use Caitlyn to get out of prison, then why would she like insult Caitlyn a bunch of times? Because she fucking hates her. <laughs> because <laughs> that's not. Vi, she's not meticulously that's... planning everything out. And Vi, acting. Vi is not. This isn't, um, Vi is an emotional not a manipulator. Yeah, not she's Vi is more Selko. emotionally she's not, driven than to. Yeah, she's not hyper intelligent that. or anything. She's she's pretty normal in that regard. Very emotionally oh. driven. 
And she probably is intelligent enough to, if she sat down, think about everything that I she's doing. I definitely don't think she's yeah. yeah, figure out that that would probably be um, counter to her goals, but she's not doing that. She's not sitting down and figuring out exactly the best course well, of all, action here. It's all done in real she's time. she's much more emotionally driven than that. Because yeah, she exactly. only realizes there's opportunities here in real time. As it rises. Yeah. yeah. She had no I mean, time I, to I, prep a strategy to get out of jail. Well, I okay, so I had assumed that Vi did not think there was any chance she was going to get let out of prison. So I didn't even have a problem with that. But you guys were saying that this was like a realistic expectation, in which case... Well, then why would you be like insulting Caitlyn? So like, when she's telling her, her you're not going to make it on just... your own, I obviously thought that she was aiming to get her to use Vi as a, as a guide. <laughs> like it is an insult, but it's also an insult that has an implication of that yeah. I could help you to get me out of here. Yeah, actually, it's, it's an it's insult actually that pretty... says you can't do this on your own. You're going to need yeah. me. Okay, again, there's no contradiction between like viciously attacking her and then trying to get her to get you let out of prison so that you can hang out? No. I no. Don't, I don't know why. I, actually, I don't think so, no. Because no. <laughs> whether or not you insult somebody, whether or not you insult them, if they need you, you know, they like, need you. Yeah, yeah, yeah you're, like, you're not exactly going to put your fifis ahead if you're trying yeah, to really exactly. solve Yeah, exactly. Caitlyn's not going to be like, just for that, but like, fuck what, you, and fuck me too, because I don't have a case that I can solve now. Okay, so we're, we're, going, we're going into a prison to talk to somebody that's been fucking thrown into maximum confinement, had the fucking key thrown away, they beat the fucking shit out of somebody, I go to talk to this fucking person, okay, and now they're fucking screaming at me about they have the fucking hate enforcers, so I'm going to go and use my power on the first day that Jason's made a counselor to go get them let out of prison here. and then go You're walk a, around. Yeah. Honestly, you've, no problems like, with anything this. You've that described... leads to a solution is convenient. You're, you're you, the you've scene. described it as screaming and viciously attacking. You're insane. Watch the scene. <laughs> <laughs> no, I said she. I said she viciously even, attacked even the dude. Then, it's like, she, okay, no, so she, did, she broke the dude's like jaw. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Can I? Can I? No, you, I want to take. I want to take us through the scene in a different tone. Okay. So Caitlin's <laughs> going. Oh, there's this criminal in like solitary confinement because they assaulted another inmate. But maybe, you know, last last resort, maybe she's got the information I need. Oh, never mind, she insulted me, I'm gonna leave. <laughs> yeah, I actually I think that Vi back. believes that there's enough leverage that she can insult Caitlyn. I don't she know why that would be... She prepared for this, by the way. Like, I didn't know no. Caitlyn was coming. And I just wanna... Vi fucking hates enforcers. It's a core element. Yeah. Well, and just, Vi is emotional. She is an emotional person. She's very much driven by how she feels. And yeah, she only cares about the feelings of woman. one person. Well, I, yeah, no, that's I, I just don't understand. I don't want to take it to that level today. That's a you problem. That's so, so, there's, there's, so we're not going to... So we're not caving on anything. There's no level of convenience. There's no, no oddness no, there about none. the fact that there's like very conflicting reasons for people I to I feel like we provided ways. all of the counter-arguments. Yeah, it just kind of right. seems to me at this point like anything that re that resulted in the plot progressing was convenient and random to you. I just don't get it. No, yeah. it's because there are very good reasons to not do the things that they do, and well, they and it one, happens though. anyway. Give, give me one. Yeah, but we, well, so we could just play this exactly. out. Exactly. Like, if, if you and I <laughs> were the detectives, so give me give me one. Well, so, let's let's go from we can go from every different perspective from Caitlin's perspective because this person is potentially really really dangerous. Yeah. Okay. From Vi's perspective, again. You have to figure out whether or not it is that she is trying to use Caitlyn as a vessel to get out of prison. She is. Now, if you are, if, okay, if she is, then it's uh, quite weird to antagonize Caitlyn as much no, as she did. No, it's not. That's, no, why? no, it isn't. Why? We've, we've, we've gone over it because she, whether or not you antagonize someone, if you have leverage, you can do that. And, and she then, would do that because that's the kind of person that she is. She doesn't like enforcement. She's yep. a brash, emotional person. Yeah. She's not going to go, she's not going to. She's going to try gonna... this, but she's not going to do it with her tail between her legs. Fact, that wouldn't be within her character. Say, did you not say that it would be incredibly suspicious if somebody who hates enforcers is like, oh, no, hey, friend, let me help you out, buddy. Like, this, I could be so useful well, I don't, to you, I don't friend. think that, I don't think like, that Vi is thinking, thinking on that level. Okay. I don't think that Vi is no, thinking, she's not. what's the best she's way not. I can present myself is, to this enforcer? I mean, like, I, can, I can give you like a, a direct like one-to-one -one real world parallel, right? Do it. So like when I was younger, I was not fond of the police, okay? Not fond of the police at all. But when I get pulled over by the police, I'm very incentivized to try and be cooperative and calm and, and cordial. You and, don't have you know, you, I, Vi's literally in prison, man. Leverage. And she's okay, exactly. Like, it, 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 I, like I have something I want to. As a kid, 
I, I have like, something I want to get out of the police that are pulling me over or whatever, which is that I want to get the minimum possible level of enforcement on me of, of whatever. In Vi's case, she has something she wants to get out of Caitlin, which is she wants Caitlin to cooperate. But the idea that like being rude to them isn't going to influence the outcome. I just I don't understand how you can make that argument. It she might, but she's an emotional person who has a backstory with enforcers that leads her to be very antagonistic I, towards them. Yeah, and like she understands well, I, she has leverage. I guess to um, maybe make the point so clearer, like, yeah. it's not. I want to emphasize what I just said, though. Like, the enforcers executed her parents. This is a bit different than I don't like the police. <laughs> I, but that, but okay, I guess to uh, exactly. To, but it, this, she's cooperating with. Her. This is what I'm telling you. There's like very very strong reasons from both of their perspectives to not cooperate with each other and to not trust each other. And no, the, like, and that tension is there. So that tension is totally Vi there. Has, Vi has very very good reasons to like try and cooperate to get out. But I that's not necessarily. Bring, I want yeah, to bring us back it. to the go, start go, go, of the scene real quickly. It opens with Vi, you know, being non cooperative. Because she doesn't know why Caitlyn is there. Nope. She has no idea why Caitlyn is there, what Caitlyn wants. So Caitlyn just mentions, you know, witnessing an ongoing investigation and stuff. And then Caitlyn turns to leave after Vi continues to say nothing until Vi gives her the lead of, you know, gives Silco a kiss on that winning of eye of his. That gets her attention back and the dialogue resumes yeah. why from why mention Silco? now that like, Vi has leverage. Silco's in charge. Mm -hmm. And it's like, Silco's in charge of who? Fucking everyone. Because this is a relative conspiracy at this point because uh marcus has hidden it yeah. this conversation is very natural and it's only at a certain point that vi even realizes she has the power to be able to get out of prison if she plays this right but she also i would argue uses reverse psychology it's like you ain't gonna make it without me maybe caitlin uh, could but telling her she can't caitlin like, was gone until she got a lead out of vi unprompted like she was leaving yeah. That's true. She was going to leave. Yeah. I mean, so like what? again, that's okay. <laughs> I mean, well, doesn't that seem a bit convenient? Like you're leaving. I, I, oh, what's God, convenient about I can't it, take it anymore? I, what What is convenient about it? I don't understand. Like what you mean when you so, say that it's convenient? I don't know if it, maybe you're asking why would she mention Silco, and it's like because she believes the enforcers are in Silco's pocket, and so and she's she telling them. this enforcer, "Go give Silco a kiss on the, uh, his winning eye." I mean, okay. We don't, we don't have to say it's unlocked on this, but it, I yeah, I appreciate whatever. that. Also, what I look for is reasoning for these things to happen more so than any other the million things, and it seems like these are all the most likely events that would happen as a result of the variables we're aware of. That's why I like this a lot. I I I find it very very unlikely from Caitlin's position that she would trust Vi and let her out. She uh, doesn't trust her. She doesn't trust her. <laughs> it's, it's a, it's a, it's a it's, huge risk. So, so uh, it sounded like you were about to run down the line of, well, oh wait, she doesn't trust her, therefore, like, you can't make, like, two contradictory, like, you can't take both positions simultaneously, you have to pick one. I, I mean, I, I've argued, like, six different positions as to why this doesn't make sense. I mean, the strongest one is they're that, Caitlin, <laughs> you, you're, you're free to think that. Caitlin. No, I'm for... right, they're all wrong. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, all Caitlin, all yeah, it makes, it makes complete right. perfect sense for Caitlin to trust this person. Who she, she doesn't has trust her, she's not saying that. She she doesn't doesn't her. Her. Then if she doesn't trust her, then why are you letting her out of prison so and walking you, around? You just just that's what is. Wait, wait, wait. Welcome to storytelling. Again, it's like. Sorry, sorry, sorry. You've just done the thing. You've taken two contradictory positions. You've said that she trusts her, and then when we say she doesn't, you say that that's wrong too. Pick one. I'm, I'm saying like, no, what problem. I'm saying is that her the way that Caitlin behaves with Vi implies a level of trust. If she distrusts her, then well, doing this doesn't make trust. any sense. A level a of trust. trust. There are different. There, there are different levels of trust. Like it's not you can trust that she will act in her self interest. But so long as they align with yours, then you can you can work with that. How the first thing that happens is that Vi doesn't cooperate with her self interest. The, I mean, we, I guess we aren't well, to sure, that point but, yet. But, that, that's but what I'm like, saying, why, right? why would you, you make that assumption that she's just going to well, cooperate with your self interest? Why? Well, you don't necessarily know that she is going to always cooperate. You run the risk. Like, you have there, given a reason to, to believe that she has an interest in what you're doing. It is still yeah. a risk. It's still yeah. a risk. Like, like just, just saying it's a risk is like a substantial well, understatement. Like, you're you're letting out someone who you have. Like what? Every what reason to believe is do? dangerous. What, you want us what? To save There's lots of other things I, you could do. So they are using each other. They're not trusting each other. Yeah, it's only later that they start to trust each other. Um, yeah, I don't learn a bit. get it at all. I really don't. Like if you and this I were there, yeah, this and I was like, 
Doom, we should uh, we should use them. They seem to know their way around. They seem very invested in the evidence that we've collected so far. And to be honest with you, we haven't got a strong amount of stuff behind us. Like this isn't even sanctioned, um, you know, through Marcus or anything. I reckon that maybe if we just pull her out, she's a nobody. Nobody cares about her. We can maybe get that proof she's talking about related to Silk. Okay, if we can at least get that, that'll be a great lead. And if you were like, we can't trust it, I'd be like, yeah. But this is, yeah, this is what we've got. This is the best we got. Our first okay, lead just has okay. jaw butts. Okay. I mean, okay. we, 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 we can, when we get, okay. actually, hold on. Just when we talk about these real world examples, police talk to people who may or may not be telling them the truth. And they still what? talk to them. And they still, like, try to figure out ways that they that, can use them to help advance their case. That, like, that, it's that not, not everybody. The problem is isn't talking to someone. The problem is finding someone that you have every reason to believe is dangerous and letting them out of prison and then walking around with them. A very different the problem situation. was talking to them before. You it, said that, that, yeah, that is look, yes. You, there are many different. I have many different problems with this I, scene. One of them is going okay, to talk to them so, in the first place. The one we're talking so about we, right now well, well, is. Well, we've addressed that one. Police will talk to people who find, may well not to be telling them the truth. You, you don't. I don't know why that's a point. <laughs> yeah, I don't. Yeah. That's a bad one. Just talking to him. I don't see how. There's that, nothing wrong with that. I would absolutely give up that position. <laughs> I, I'm not still arguing that. You guys just brought that up. We were talking no, about you, something. You just, yeah, you, you, you just, just restated it. it. No, I so. did. Okay. You, you haven't just restated it. No, I didn't. I, okay, I'm pretty sure Theo did, and I responded to it. I did not just bring no, that up. I'm correct me if I'm no. You, correct, you wait, 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 wait. Correct me if I'm wrong. But Fringy brought up a counter argument to it, and you said I'm you're more interested in talking about taking her out and stuff. He said, okay, but you brought it up earlier, and you went, yeah, there are many things I take issue with. That's a restatement of the problem. We're saying it doesn't exist. Uh, okay. Uh, okay. What I was trying to focus on right now was the fact that Vi is a dangerous person, and Caitlin has a lot of reasons to not be around her. Okay. And the level of trust that's implied by the actions that Vi is taking, or the actions that Caitlin is taking right now, um, are out of touch with the level of risk for the situation. Okay. The, the, the idea that it's weird that she went, uh, that, that Caitlin went and talked to Vi is a completely separate issue that I wasn't talking about. Okay. It, again, it's but a it bit is an weird. Issue. It's, yeah. Do you still think I, it's an issue or not issue. that she spoke to her? I mean, it's a bit weird, but it's like forgivable. I don't feel any forgivable. reason to labor. <laughs> <laughs> forgivable is, is um, no, I would just say that it follows. You don't lose anything by talking to her. You might as well. There is literally no reason not to. Like, why would she not talk to her? <laughs> would be my question. Like, if you're worried I about mean, someone lying to you, it's like, yes, welcome to talking to human beings. I don't know why yeah, you would think that, well, she's a them. prisoner, so she might lie more. It's like, oh. Because yeah. whether or not she's going to be dishonest, you may get, you can get something out of a dishonest person. Yep. They might say something unwittingly. They might, the, the, the fact that they're trying to misdirect you might focus your attention on something else. Like, and even if someone's not being honest with you, you can still learn things from them. So I, I don't see why you would never talk. I, I, I don't even, I, I, Totally, would, do not understand that one. Like that, I, just, that I, one. I would hasten to remind just quickly that Caitlin was going to leave when she Vi was, was stonewalling her. Yeah, when Until Vi she, gave her nothing, that, she was leaving. That's unrelated Until to what we're discussing opened. right now. We're discussing the, the decision to talk to her in the first place. We're discussing yeah, all of your is, problems. <laughs> but but, but, I, but I, also, it's we've addressed that one. She, there is no reason why she wouldn't talk to her. You have to give that one up. That one is ridiculous. I. <laughs> is is to which the the decision to talk to her in the first place? Yeah, yeah, that that one's absurd. Like you have to give that one up. Okay, what what is the? Why would Vi think naturally that because someone got beat up, that going to talk to the person is going to help her solve like a grand conspiracy? <gasps> so wait 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 wait, wait 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 wait. Yeah, just, go for you it. are no, correct, no, no. Duma. There is no reason to think that's a guarantee. Yes. So Why what, not try? What, reason, what okay. are you gonna say? I got nothing, and then that's it. Okay. okay you could just you talk. You could just randomly talk to everyone in the prison. Okay. You don't just do that is everything. True. You can you are once do. again, once again, you are completely correct. Though, if say I was brainstorming with us lot here, be like, who should we speak to first? Maybe the guy who beat the fuck out of our suspect. That seems like a good yeah. start. I wonder well, what maybe, you know. Maybe, is. maybe their motivation might tell us something. Maybe it won't. It's worth checking. Mm -hmm. That's what detectives I mean, yeah, do. Come all the way here, you know. Way. It's five minutes out of my way. <laughs> yeah, while she's here, here. certainly. <laughs> I might as well. So, so you happy to see that one? 
I mean, I, again, I don't feel a need to argue about it, but I, I don't see a reason that she <laughs> well, would feel like expect. You, you guys okay out. i am not the one who is getting stun locked on this right you guys keep bringing it up well what okay. about that point you, you want to concede that point don't don't act like i'm the one who's getting us stuck here i keep saying i don't feel like arguing about it okay uh, like the the uh, caitlin the me caitlin's neither. motivation to not let vi out of jail i i i'm absolutely flabbergasted you guys don't understand like how potentially dangerous <laughs> that is i i i i, I feel like we've conceded that. it several times we just don't even like for some reason you think that means she should never use her as an oh. opportunity it, it's like the, there's an immediate danger of being around this person. Like, do you actually believe for a second there that we think there's no danger in bringing Vi out of the prison? Do you think that's a position if, we hold? If, if okay. maybe we should tell him that we think. What, it's okay, a risk what is again. the level of what is the level of risk? High. Well, it's it's, it's high. Yeah, it's a risk. It's a big risk. Okay, well, it's in, a big risk, but in but your alternative that. is nothing. The, we don't we don't know At that the alternative is nothing. The, like the well. She certainly feels like that's her only choice, which is an important part, whether or not she's more important That isn't established. Part. She's got a whole board with a bunch of stuff. I mean, presumably there's more that she's looking into than just this one exact thing. It, that would, it led that her to cool Stillwater thing. because of a person she can't talk to. Well, I, I is, guess that, is that a problem? My, that well, makes sense. No, but I, I'm saying like there isn't, it's not like, oh, well, uh, well, the person that I wanted to talk to was here. So I'll just talk to everyone else who's here. I mean, it's not a video game. It's not like, well, there have to be NPCs. No, but in this she area had a reason to, to talk to, to this person. She had a reason to talk to Vi. She definitely had a reason. More so than, like, what, what reason does she have to talk to the guy who's never interacted with that man before in his life versus the one who beat the shit out of him as soon as he came to prison? Like, well, the, the, there's the something thug, there. I mean, she has. The thug is like a Silco henchman. She knows that. So there's like a very, very yeah. obvious reason to talk to them. He, he, yeah, well, and, and he, he got beat up. He's so. currently unavailable. She can't talk to him. And now, this is the thing. If she went to Vi and Vi said, oh, that's fucking Chuck. I hate him. He fucking stole my money when we gambled once. That's why I beat him up. Caitlin would be like, oh. Okay. Anything yeah, you can tell right, me well. about Chuck? He'd be like, no. He's an asshole. Okay. He's like, okay. Nope. All right. Well, well, at least I tried. Mm -hmm. And then you have to try and figure something else out. But when you meet someone who apparently has some sort of understanding of the drawing and seems to be emotionally invested in that, they might be able to help you guide guide you through an area that you've never been to before. It is a risk that she might just run off or beat the shit out of you. And she's given you Silco no as, a, as a conspiracy format without prompting as well. Exactly, yeah. It, it, when you're presented with that, might as well take the chance. And Caitlyn is not risk averse. We know that she's not risk averse. I mean, like it was, okay. a it was a little bit risky not for risk her to sneak into the. Uh, well, I guess to just give examples, right? It's a little bit risky to sneak into the um, the crime scene to investigate it, and she gets penalized for it. Yeah, but she did it anyway. And even though she got injured and now is kind of getting pushed to the side, she still wants. Like she is very invested in this case. It's really well, I think important. She's desperate to not get this, this fucking desk job, right? Yep. yep. I, mm. I like. I am not risk averse. That doesn't mean that I'm like going to do something that has a tangible well, sure, like chance of Caitlin's killing me. not you. Caitlin's Caitlin, and she has yeah. different. Uh, I don't priorities. think that Caitlin. I think that Caitlin believes that she can handle herself in a uh, she, uh, combat situation. Yeah. I don't she think has she reason to considers her death a well, considerable risk. Who ends up saving whose I life? Think, <laughs> yeah, I'm an excellent shot, and she is. She's a very good shot. But I think I think she cool considers. Character. I think that she considers the physical threat that Vi presents to be one that she can deal with with her own set of skills. Yeah, or at least just give it give it a give it a shot. Like she she has weapons that she is incredibly proficient with with her. Vi doesn't. Because her fists. Fringa just proved logic is subjective. Well no, logic like what? your internal logic is gonna be different from someone else's. That's that's all there is well, to just it. The, yeah, your well, willingness so... to take a risk is different for everyone's it's here different. is different. Your okay, chat, logical chat, really in accordance quickly. with I'll their own mo motives. Well, everybody is logical in their own head. Like, everybody believes that they're making the right decisions or that they're, you know, people act in what they believe to be their self-interest, whether or not it actually is, that's a different thing. But, like, when we're trying to talk about characters, all that matters is it makes sense to them that they would do it. That's all, that's all that matters. It doesn't yeah, need so to be, like, like, the most optimal decision ever. Yeah, so, like, if, like, um, it, it, if a yeah. guy believes that, like, the sky is made of jelly, so if he, if he like, go, gets in a... Go, gets in a plane, he can like put his head out the window and eat some jelly, and he gets on a plane because he wants to eat some jelly. That is within his character because it's logical to him, not because it actually makes sense logically. Jelly. <laughs> okay, should Vi or should Caitlin ask Vi any more questions before letting her out? I'm assuming they sure asked that... a whole, she asked a whole bunch of questions in between the time they get from here to the next scene. 
just about her and what her stuff is about. Things that would probably, and Vi at that point would have a big motive to calm her down as to what she's dealing with. Wait, I actually what, really wish why, we could see that. Why, was, cool. just why would we two. assume that? Because I doubt they were silent. They just quietly walking through the entire yeah, they just thing and and <laughs> to each other. I mean, is is the reason that we're assuming that something has to be there is because it's kind of weird, just given no. the information that we have? No, no. It's, it's well, then specifically why, why assumed. Why? So, two human well, beings walking from one area to another—that's a long distance. They will typically talk about something. That's my guess. Oh no! So, oh, oh, sorry, sorry, sorry. We're, we're we're miscommunicating. I mean, shouldn't shouldn't Caitlin ask more questions before letting her out of prison? Like, Caitlin has her in a position where she's compromised. Well, Caitlin so can ask her questions and get whatever information that she, she wants. She wants to get her out closer rather than later for many... You've got to remember all the urgency elements as well. One being that uh, this is something that Caitlin's not supposed to be doing. Secondly, the, the clock is ticking on whatever is happening, and uh, she's just dealt with many enforcer friends being killed. She just wants to get on with this job. And then thirdly, the fact that Vi gets beaten on the regular is probably worth getting her out as well. The most recent chat just says, I've become so numb. <laughs> I've become so Come numb. So numb. <laughs> I can't feel you there. How oh, does it feel? It's I don't numb. know, actually. I don't know how it feels. I've become so numb. I thought it was okay, a see you there, but I've not listened to that song in, well, ever, actually. But, you know. Yeah. We, um, are, we are running out of time. Are we happy to move on? Yeah, we, we really, really got to get through this shit. Yeah. Wait, how long have we been going? We're at three and a half. Long. We got five as yeah, our cap. Yeah, we only got an hour and a half to finish <laughs> this episode, and we're still on the first scene. <laughs> uh, or the second scene, I guess. Well, okay then. Uh, yeah, well, then we get the intro. Everyone's favorite. Um, and oh, I was just, yeah, I was going to talk about the, uh, so this the funeral scene, and Marcus is talking about all the people who've died, those enforcers, which is nice, because it could have been that they were just killed and nobody really cares, because they were just representative of an action scene, you know, but it's like, no, no, they care very much about this. It's going to have big repercussions on both sides. Um, mm -hmm. But uh, yeah, he uh, he takes his daughter to Grayson's uh, headstone, tombstone, uh, tomb. Yeah, I think it's just a tomb in general. Yep. And he says uh, she was a good woman, which is just, yeah, seven years later and it's still weighing on him heavily because he's honestly kind of the reason she's dead. Yep. It is real important. Um, this is really good in scene, terms of making favorites. this guy a lot more, um, I guess, no, I don't know if it's I'd just say keep it in mind, you know, more understandable. Yeah, he's very he's much not so. a cartoon he's... character. Yeah. Um. So yeah, he comes to to Silco to talk about the firelights, which are the guys on the boards, and they're like, "What a fucking frustrating disaster!" Because they're fucking up Piltover and they're fucking up Silco, like it's. There's, an, there's almost an interesting irony that they're trying to conduct business under the table, and there's these people who are screwing them both up, like, as a faction that's against them, but it's also potentially going to reveal their dealings as well. So it's just a big disaster, the Firelights. And um, I think Silco is just like, you know, we're going to, you can blame them. Um, and so it's like killing two problems at once, in that it gives you a, it gives you a person responsible for the enforcers that are dead. And it'll get rid of the firelights, hopefully, which are causing problems for us. And it's cool to see, because that's actually pretty clever from Silco, and it'll work perfectly fine for somebody who is just, you know, fucking dirty-ass cop type of stereotype. But Marcus is like, mm, that's, like, it's not good enough. Because, like, you can tell there's a bit of a conflict here in that that's so unjust. The Firelights didn't even kill the Enforcers, that they're conducting all this business that actually got them killed with a Shimmer. Ex explosion, then Jinx is responsible, not the Firelights. Like, the Marcus isn't satisfied, is my point. Uh, even though Silco's plan would actually solve the problem. I think you can tell in just these short two scenes quite a lot about how Marcus is really not pleased having stumbled into this position. Yeah. Like, oh, yeah. I really he, like uh, really like a I lot really of like Marcus a lot. Yeah, mm -hmm. well, I was saying first time through, I thought he was uh, a penis man, but second time through, I was like, he's not a penis man. He's complicated. He's well, a, there's a lot of deeds here. I think if if he had a way out, you think Marcus would be out? You know, like he wouldn't be in with Silco anymore if such a oh, thing yeah. were possible. But right now, it feels to me like he's just trying. He's trying to make things work like Grayson and Vanda did. But but he's not Grayson. Silco's not. Uh, Vanda. Yeah, and 
just no. with that one scene, you can tell he's got a lot of admiration for for Grayson. And um, but yeah, they hand him his money, and he very frustratingly walks off because there's this sense as well that it's like take the money or something worse might happen in this because he's surrounded by these fucking like huge dudes. Yeah. Um, and I also he's like just the team. the it's it's pretty much made clear that his role as sheriff was given to him thanks to his relationship with Silco. Which um, I like the jab that Silco gives him, like, we've we've accomplished a lot together, Marcus. Sheriff. Like yeah. uh, right in the gun. Yeah. <laughs> and that's the thing, um just with that line, my brain is like, ooh, is that like referencing that maybe Silco has given people up um for Marcus to arrest and like may even make like really great progress here and there with different busts or something, but at the same time making it look like that's what's happening when you know other things are who knows what their history has been it's just that uh marcus is in way it's too deep an uneasy one yeah and then we, we we jump over to good old uh victor and jace who are in i don't even know it's like a room filled with all kinds of hectic stuff uh i'm assuming it powers the hex working. gate i'm not sure I yeah, would that's imagine that's, uh, that's what we call a science room. Yes. I assume it's a science room. room. <laughs> it's a vague Welcome science room. to the science room. We do this science is... here. We have fun. Do they have do fun? science here or does science happen here? It just is a, an emergent science aspect everywhere. of this room is science just happening. And yeah, <laughs> it's just this fun moment where uh, Jace is like, have you seen the fucking reports about like this, that, and the other? And then Marcus is like, oh, uh, yeah, it's just, you know. And he's like, there's corruption here, and I'm going to root it out. And Box is like, oh. <laughs> Isn't that, uh, aren't you kind of wasting your time, man? It's like, Jace is like, no. Yeah, it's just, uh, and it's a worry for Marcus. Jace is fucking driven, and his goals would definitely get in the way. It's just something to keep in mind for him. Uh -oh. hmm. Also, a fucking hmm. little line I love is like, Marcus says to him, with all due respect, Counselor, you've only been in office like a day or something, and he's like, two days. You should take it this easy! Is second he's day, like, no! Actually. Yeah, <laughs> I have doubled the experience. My fucking second I day, I bitch. Had, yeah. <laughs> My powers have doubled since the last time. <laughs> yeah, <I'm> damn it! <laughs> <laughs> That's a good meme. <laughs> <laughs> it's a prequel meme, man. They're top notch. Um, but yeah, once again, uh, watching Victor cough and then blood comes out, I was like, no! no! <laughs> like, oh! not He's you. not doing well. I mean, yeah, he probably you already knew something was going to go wrong. Yeah, but. He already had plot cough. You knew this was coming. He's such a nice boy. <laughs> Don't yeah, let him yeah, well. bloom. Don't let him flume. And then he looks Gloria down at the, at the stuff. Look at him. He's looking at all the science. Damn. He's looking at the science. And then That's he says, it. I need to go science. and do more science. And then yeah. he off. He did, yeah, literally, oh. word for word, says, I need to do science. Uh, mm -hmm. And then... And then we got the jinx scene, right? We got a jinx scene. I'm not biased toward these things. What are you talking about? Uh, <laughs> they're, they're, hey, look, all right? They're, they're cool scenes. She's, so, still, she's working on a little tech. She's created a rudimentary uh, like little device that is capable of making use of the gemstone through what she's uh, read in all of the, the, the books and stuff. Seriously, look at that image. It's just, it's just like a moment in the scene that's passing by. And it's just like, oh, mm. the amount of yeah. um, depth. It's gorgeous. And the lighting. Oh, the colors. Nice all the all the neon like neon aesthetic scenes are pretty sweet. Um. So yeah. Uh. Again, just because at this point in the show, I was still like, "What are we? Uh, what are we up to with here?" I don't. I'm not entirely sure, but it basically explains to Milo and Clagger how the machine works and how she's excited to get it using. She's just gonna have to pop the gemstone in and see what happens. And of course, because it's just like a first attempt, doesn't it's not working out perfectly. Kind of makes a little explosion. And my and god, she have access to the full notes. they do a thing that is so hard not to compare once again to Boba Fett. I'm gonna do it. So, <laughs> in episode seven of Book of Boba Fett, Cad Bane says, um, because uh, I think it's someone the Pikes ref uh, referenced, and then Cad Bane's like, oh yeah, the ones that killed your friends. <laughs> and then it's like, <laughs> it flashes back to when he saw the Tusken Raider bodies. Just the scene. In case then, you forgot. 
and then yeah, it, it just shows just, hey, Boba Fett being sad. It's like fucking hell. Like, yeah, I know. I wish it flashed back to him hey. smiling at them chasing the cricket creature. Just, just a little. <laughs> that was the flashback <laughs> image. Just, just a little, little, little uh, side. Just so you remember, right? Okay, Boba Fett's friend friends they died, and this makes him this sad. This is a sad thing. Yeah, I, I, so there's no reason for Cad Bane to be bringing this up, you know. Yeah, but well, he's it, not sad about all of the innocent bikers he killed. So <laughs> yeah, no we don't acknowledge that, and the fact that yeah, uh, well, yeah, what, we what never, said, that never comes up again. There's it's no like the retribution, the anger is going to be toward the Pikes. It's like, who the fuck cares about Cad Bane right now? Like Cad Bane bringing it up. Yeah. Apparently, his goal was to make Boba angry enough to try and shoot him. It's like okay. There's so much about that fucking scene. If Cad Bane just wants to kill him, just kill him. You don't need him to shoot at you before you can shoot at him. Especially if you're hired mm -hmm. to kill him. Especially when you ambush everybody else, like, without giving them any fair warning. Yeah, Like, so, why'd you let Boba live? He's the leader. As you can see, many issues are taken. We have a history, with that Franny. scene. This is very important. This oh, scene, yeah, right. she corrects the tech. But it doesn't quite work in terms of it's a little bit uncontrolled and does a little explosion on it. It blows it back. And then we flash, she's staring at the device, and if you look at it, it's kind of reminiscent. Certain colors, actions, yeah. animations. But it makes the sound, it makes the exact sound as and, well. And, uh, I've skipped past it, and I don't want to skip back because VLC's a dick, but, uh, Clagger, uh. his face appears on the Clagger doll temporarily. Yeah. Um, her yep. face is just staring at this shit, and then she sees the monkey device that she built. Blowing up, just explosions. Everything's messed up, and then it's flashing to the the deaths of Clagger and Milo. Um, panics course until it just it kind of peters out because this is this is what she's done here is essentially what we were seeing uh, Jason and Victor do in episode like two and three, just sort of playing with it to see if it can work, understanding the control of it, sort of thing. Um. And then she, yeah, once it all ends and calms down, she uh, she says, no, it was a mistake, it was a mistake, and she just runs off. Which, yeah. I was just surprised. I, I was like, mm -hmm. fucking hell, nice work, guys. Uh, Taking it seriously. You're not mm. turning it into, like, a joke. Very much on in mind. And we got to this moment organically through things that, you know, she would have and should have been doing. Yeah. Exactly. And this thing, like, she tries to purport herself as fun loving is fantastic. and confident and stuff, but she is not. She is completely broken and held together by strings. Yeah. Uh, yeah, this, um, this imagery is. Uh, I, I really like sort of her character psychologically. Like, um, we haven't fully explored what she experiences, but like intense childhood trauma is what causes stuff like this. So particularly when you see scenes like this and you see like flashbacks of it, um, it's really quite realistic. Um, seeing her character development, it, it, it this, I mean, obviously the magical elements of it aren't, aren't very realistic, but if something similar happened, you know, uh, the way that she's behaving isn't out of, out of what you would expect, you know, in the real world. Yeah. Well, I, I argue that's why a lot of people find it so compelling. Um, and to just strip her down, like, she's, she's this psycho killer who's really confident about everything she's doing, but in this moment, she's reverted back, and to this day, is desperate to explain that what happened with that in episode 3 was a mistake. She didn't mean for that to happen. She has yeah. not gotten over it, and she wouldn't have ever really gotten over it. There's no reason for her to have gotten over this. It's pretty still intense. Don't, you don't get over that, especially <laughs> not holding. after what happened after. And uh, yeah, exactly. The last frame as well, just showing the she's still got the bunny. Mm. Yep. Rags, what do you think of this scene? Um, I'm kind of just sort of letting you guys take this one. Um, <laughs> I I just carry is just carry on. You carry on. I, I, carry on. I've, I've got none to say. Uh, well, that puts us to the next scene, which is Vi and Caitlin having a little quick discussion at the top, and then Vi basically just jumps the fuck down to the the lanes. Um, I uh, 
I do take issue with this bit. I think it's pretty dumb that uh, Vi would assume Caitlyn's going to be able to easily catch up with it with how far and fast she goes. <laughs> mm -hmm. It's not I feel even like about. She might even be trying to lose her. I don't know. Is well, I mean, she seems to be on board with. There's a lot of thought to that, actually, because I'm not sure. I, I really don't know exactly. Caitlyn seems to believe from the second that she's ran off that she may very well just be abandoning her. Uh, but Caitlyn manages to follow her. Um, the mm -hmm. only thing I can really say, I suppose, about that is just that um, it seems a little lucky because it shows us what Vi does, which, by the way, is cool. It's like she's mm. heading back home. She's talented as fuck at all the, the uh, parkour. parkour. Yeah. Um, it's just that the, the Caitlyn is struggling on like the first beam while Vi has gone so far that I don't even know if they're in like earshot of screaming that, at each other at this point. Like it's, that's the problem I would like arrive at is how the hell is Caitlyn supposed to follow? Like yeah, she gets I to a certain like... point where Vi's just gone and there's a million different routes down that she could take and uh Yeah. The scene wants you to think she's just right behind her, but logistically that doesn't work. So as we're as we're shown, it should be more of a of a situation. Can you hear my, my robot vacuum just came in the room? Sorry if that's loud. It's all right. Your uh, robot good. vacuum. Does he have a I, name? Uh, Duncan. <laughs> I'm glad that you've given it a name. That's uh, that makes me really happy. He's take is care he of working Duncan, hard. Okay. Yeah. He is working hard. It's actually really adorable because when he like gets low on battery, he's he just like stops and he goes really slowly back to his charger. And it's like oh, he's tired. He's going to sleep. <laughs> they should make a video game called Duncan the Vacuum Cleaner, where you just go on adventures with Duncan and cleaning up places. And he starts moving up. He gets he gets like uh, promotions because he's so good at cleaning. Like he takes the most efficient routes and stuff. And he then does. he, and he uh, doesn't. I've seen him working. Uh, he, and then he, he doesn't know his way around. But well, he's a he's good new. man. It's, just, it's only a second day. He's a good Duncan. Uh, he's, oh, it's only a second day. Wow. Mm. Oh wow. His powers have. Oh. Um, His yeah. Power. <laughs> yeah, awesome shot. Not sure about this for her health. But yeah, as in. Um... <laughs> yeah, some of these are. Some of these. So mm. the, the whole thing we... is that, like, as we're shot, I as I believe that what we're supposed to think is that like Caitlyn is just behind her, even though logistically that doesn't yeah. work. But as shown, Caitlyn should really just be like in accordance with her motivation. She should be essentially threatening Vi to slow down. Like keeping a gun train on her, like you can't leave my sight. Sorry, um, sorry, not sorry. Although wouldn't I think wouldn't that's, that, that's fair? Um... But she's currently trying to even find a way of keeping like her arms and focus are on mm. just being alive right now because this is incredibly dangerous. Plus, I don't think she's trying to call too much attention to herself. If she started shouting orders, she's going to draw a little too much attention to herself. I mean, I know she's climbing and everything, but shouting is going to do way more, especially when you're up high. So really, really quickly, this is doing something like this is necessary because there's like some sort of security on the bridge or something, right? Like, I or, assume... is there is there an option of them just walking home? Well, so I don't think we have to believe what Vi says. I think Vi just wants to do it this way. She's, this is something she enjoys doing. Is always possibly she's done. She's been in prison she says, for years, and she wants to do this again. She says we need she, to lay low, but I don't know that that's like the actual reason she I... does this. I think that I can believe be... that Silco has eyes all around, and that's a thing she wants to avoid. Yeah, but... not in his face though. Uh, He's got one. Actually, still uh, has got him. got him. There is a small change in. in <laughs> he was your, injured. Uh, <laughs> the there, is a, there is a small You're change finished. in Silco's face. You notice that his uh, his pupil is more deformed than it used to be. It is. You're right. Which I shows that, that he's he's him. been shooting it in his eye a lot lately. I was uh, and... I was curious to see if because I didn't compare it myself, but I was curious if the scarring had expanded or not from when we saw him in the first three. Like it got further across uh, his face or not? I don't know if it's easy to tell because he's obviously got foundation can't on confirm. it. Can't confirm. Can't confirm. Would be neat. Just if it know were. this: that the, the eye was significantly less smoother than it used to be. Mm. Also, a, a, an interesting little take that I noticed. Um, you know, Vi's running around on the rooftops and everything. Like she knows the place, like at the back of her hand. It's kind of interesting how you know Piltover made all these, all this progress and everything like that. But by Vi getting around the city so easily, like it was only yesterday that she had done this, would show that the Pilto or that the Undercity has barely changed at all. Yeah, like structurally, it's mostly the same. But obviously, the inhabitants <clears throat> and the exports have uh, have changed. Mm -hmm. But yeah, no, I sure. think you're right. I was talking about why she has a tattoo of her name on her face. That's those are Roman. That's a Roman number four. 
Oh, that's six. Yeah, six I, not a four. It's a six. Sorry. <laughs> got, Why did she have a six on her face up. then? I think that was the amount of time she's been in prison. Ah, a year. Six. Maybe she's a, been in there a, for six years. Well, then it wouldn't be a V I. It would be like an uh, uh, one, I, two, I three, four, five. Yeah, one. you're right. Yeah, it would be then a it wouldn't put on your face, unless right? oh, unless she was really removing and then adding and removing to make the ribbon. Yeah, when when they got to four, they're like, uh oh. <laughs> so, uh, somebody got to make some decisions here. Someone in chat, several people in chat have pointed out it's her name. Guys, we were trying to find a cooler reason than that. <laughs> well, no, if you look at it, it is, okay. it is still okay. a Roman numeral six. That's yeah, what it well, is. I think, I think in terms of characterization, it damages her if, if we are to believe that at some point she went, you know what? I'm going to get a tattoo of my name on my face. <laughs> I'll be honest with I you, I never actually thought to ask. I just, like, I never have. So, yeah, I hope that's not the reason. I just want my, my name on my face. I just I just think it's coincidence. I think it's a Roman numeral six, and it just so prison. happens that her name is Vi. I think that's just coincidence. Someone put but I guess it's just what if Vi is the name? But it's like or... a cool wait, wait, so it's a prison tattoo, right? Because she didn't have it when she was a kid. Oh, All that tattoos she got while in prison, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, look, I, I'm the one. I'm the the, 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 the Vi hater is logged on, tattoos. right? But I mean, I'll, I'll forget that. That's what I mean. Prison tattoo is okay. I just, yeah, I assume she got it for reasons that aren't. I want my name on my face, like the, the <laughs> right. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but I love the shot. It's fucking great. I know who you are. This How can you tell? Shot. It's written all over your face. Um. <laughs> Uh, upon entry, some some gross alleyway thugs try to give Vi the ol' I'm gonna take your money thing. Unfortunately take for them, money. she's a fucking psycho, and she beats them up and takes one of their jackets. Well, she she takes both of their clothes because she gives the, the others to Caitlyn then, I think. Yeah, I like how her response is just, I like your jacket, and then he, she, she just has the jacket now. I, by the way, uh... Uh, Jay, do you remember when I said there are other things that have done that payoff that you said you liked? Yeah. I remembered uh, one of them is from Buffy, so you'll Ooh. see it again. Um, I, I, I think I think you remembered that as we were watching it, because I'm pretty sure you told me that actually won't be with what first one. I said I couldn't remember what uh, it was from, though, right? Um, because I the... swear, I, I, I don't know, this, it, the, the, it being from Buffy feels familiar to me, so I'm my guess is that you said, um, of like just putting my memories together, you said you couldn't remember where it was from, and then like a little bit later, you're like, "Oh, it's from Buffy." Well, I remember. it could also be that you're just so used to me saying that reference I have is from Buffy. It could be that. <laughs> Maybe. Uh, but yeah, they, they, they to show passage of time as well. They they have uh, how long it took Caitlin to get down there was the same amount it took for the old man to get into the uh, old tram and get delivered down here as well. But um. <laughs> Yeah, it's a little bit strange. She ends up in pretty much the exact same place that Vi landed. It's just like, oh, okay, hmm, that's convenient. And she did manage. I want to. I want to point out a funny little detail too. You see that little goat person walking behind her? Oh, you can't call them goat. Yeah, people. person of goat. Yeah, that pog. Person of goat. <laughs> yes. So the pog. person of goat, as she's like catching her breath and everything, little goat man's walking behind her. Um, bring it back to where. She, uh, Caitlin says that she wants to use the uh, the lift, um, uh, and Vice and Vice says no, we're not doing that. We're going to um, fucking run this shit. I'm not insane, right? Has anyone else noticed this? What's just happened, or is it just me? What's happened? What in the conversation? What so I, I literally pointed all of that out as a fun payoff. How about the <laughs> did, goat man? Did anyone else hear me yeah. say that, or am I insane? No, I, I did. No, I didn't I did. hear you say I, that. <laughs> I did. You definitely I don't said it. For a second there, I was like, wait, am I having I, deja vu, but like, but I think amnesia? I guess that was the weird part. I thought that was a very, it was super <laughs> overt and obvious, the goat man. It was very... Yeah, I don't th okay. that's why, well, well, I, I said it's an indication that that's how long it took Caitlyn to get down there. Uh, yeah. Okay, no, my bad. I guess I, I don't know, I guess I must have missed it. Never mind. It's all right. You don't like listening to me. That's fine. You know, it was, it was allowed to just, you know, ignore. It me was a funny were. bit that I missed on my first time over. And then when I saw it the second time, I'm like, oh, that's mm -hmm. funny. Um, but yeah, I think uh, Victor is now fiddling with the hex core. And um, I think it's a bit of a, of a progression, a progression in terms of dialogue. Back uh, in episode three, 
I think wasn't didn't Jace say something like you sure this is gonna work? And Jace was uh, sorry, Victor was just like he like sh a bit of a shrug with like an okay, but then this time Jace says you sure like you know what you're doing or you sure this is safe? And Victor's just like no, of course not. Yeah, like he's it just seems to be the dynamic has changed a little bit where Victor's becoming more desperate. Yeah, um, he seems to uh, not only is he more desperate, he seems to have accepted that other people know this and. Yeah. Um, he, he, the way he says, of course not, uh, establishes that not only is he desperate, but the people, he is aware that the people around him are aware that he is desperate. So he's been desperate for long enough that people it's know normal. it about him. Yeah, yeah, that it's, it's, it's been normalized. Um, and then we're introduced to the best character in the whole show. Uh, yeah. wouldn't you agree, yeah. Chris? <laughs> Selko? Vi? He, he is, uh, this guy... He he just he fills my heart with joy. I love Apparently this man. He's, he's such a good boy. He's my Apparently favorite. His, his name is Jericho. Name. Yeah, Jericho. What he's, is he called? He's he's the Jericho well, yeah, um, Swain. Somebody super chat that they helped animate him. Uh, someone in chat as well as uh, oh, that's awesome. the, the guard. So yeah, that person will get to the super chats at some point. But um, that's great. It, it, You're cool. He's so full of life. Uh, Instantly yeah. fell in love with him when she complimented his food, and he just like, yeah. like cack. He's just like, <laughs> oh, <laughs> like, yeah. and, like slams his cleaver into his own shoulder, where he's got like a cleaver board and everything. He's a great guy. <laughs> yeah, he's so happy. He just takes pride in his work. And yeah, makes he's, yeah. Smile and he's doing good food. work, and he's happy while doing it. The best kind. Um, he, he really is so great. <laughs> and uh, he helps her out as well with what she's looking for. Yeah, and even but toward Caitlin. the end of the scene, like he even just kind of stares at Caitlin for a moment in this really funny, happily, uh, awkward yeah, way. Yeah, he's not smiling. <laughs> and the way the way he looked at her and the way the camera just kind of hung on that for a little bit, I thought maybe he was a League of Legends character that I wasn't aware of. But right. nope, he's he just his own be. guy. He should be a League of Legends yeah, character. He should Put be, yeah. The wow. Then like again, if they add him, he'd be too overpowered. He'd just be... <laughs> he'd be, he'd just be overpowered. Yeah, his, with, uh, nice adding guy. him would be, if you were on the other team, you wouldn't want to kill him. Well, his ulti, no, yeah, his ulti would be a global taunt where everybody just loves him yeah. and hugs him. And then they all jump off <laughs> the side of the, 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 the cliffs of the rift. <laughs> <Yeah. just> like, <laughs> I can't bring myself to hurt such a charming, wonderful man. And then they all kill themselves. He just, yeah, when Vi walks wow, off, he geez. turns to Caitlyn and just smiles like... Yeah. Think I could help you with sort of thing? Yeah, <laughs> he's so happy. Look at him. What a legend. Um, I think we could. I think we could all. That's a legend. He belongs in some kind of league. Okay. Yeah. We could all learn something from this. If all, if the world was filled with just him, the world would be. There would be heaven. It would exist, and it would be <laughs> where he is. <laughs> he is he everywhere. All... There is a reason why he is in the thumbnail. Okay, he earned it. Uh, yeah, yeah, that was in the thumbnail. Ah, that's funny. I didn't notice that. So yeah, uh, she gets some food, and they're having their, they're, they're, they're having some trouble. These two, Caitlin's like, "You're not doing fucking work, research, explaining things. You're not doing anything. You're just eating food." And then Vi is just like talking about how awesome it is to eat food because she wouldn't have had food this good in a long time. Um. Which Caitlin I think get some points docked for calling Jericho's food slop, bitch. Fucking rude, yeah. Mm. Um, but uh, yeah, like that 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 tension is always around as well because I can't. Remember, is it this scene? It's also the one where she has with with Jace a bit later, but about like you don't even know what happens in the prisons, do you? Because uh, the enforcers are a yeah. little bit unaware. Yeah, of course of you don't. Like that. Um, but yeah, uh, the the, the Vi basically ignoring her and looks to be messing around but she actually gets something from uh, Jericho that's important and it is going to take her to the uh, the brothel so i guess this the the i don't know the icon for the brothel it's like a little, little circle That'd with some lines guess. i'm not sure yeah um and so we get the politics scene ooh mm -hmm. lots of politicking happens here um, and violin playing. Well, yeah, we, we could talk about that. What's probably going on with that in the background in a sec. But, uh, so the idea is, Jace is becoming much less popular because of his goals of trying to shore up security. It's screwing up a bunch of the councillor's uh, interests. And uh, Mel is like, you should probably do something about that. For example, 
talk to them about how you're going to be innovating Hextech and ask them to support you and work with you and they can have, you know, first entry into like whatever it is you may come up with. Bait them, bribe them, whatever you want. Just try and get them on your side so that your endeavors don't get screwed up by accidentally sort of uh, butting heads with them. And of course, it's just like... As far as I'm concerned, this show was never going to be as, like, politically focused as TV shows that are all about politics. But I think it does a pretty decent job of trying to do a simplified yeah, version. Yeah. You have... Well, the time they give it, yeah. Mel is like this... Uh, she's almost a puppeteer that's trying to manipulate politics in the same way that you could argue Frank is in uh, House of Cards. Except she's a good person. Um, <laughs> both in universe and out. But the... Uh, idea with this is that Jace is her main puppet and she's going to get him to puppeteer the other counselors. Mm -hmm. Very uh, clever lady. Um, I figure because we go back and forth, I think, between a jinx scene and the, the politicking one. So I think I might just try and go through the, the conclusion of the politics one now instead of doing it piece by piece. Can I, I want to mention something that people were theorizing about quickly when the show was coming out, like before Act go 3 was right out. right ahead. And then but people thought that Mel might be LeBlanc. Oh. Uh, what's the connection? Uh, the connection being LeBlanc is able to shapeshift into other people and, you know, take on other guises and stuff, and she might be, you know... Well, and she's a manipulator, of course, and we see Mel manipulating people, and she has mm. connections to Noxus because we see her painting the Immortal Bastion. Well, oh, I guess you're saying her connection to Noxus in just Act 2. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I mean, I guess they could still... This is the thing. We'll get to that. That's episode I would consider, nine that, stuff. We'll I would consider that. that rebuke, like, debunked. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'd say no to that, but, like, I just thought that was interesting to talk about. Um, so Jace is, like, unsure, and then he starts to, like, build up a conversation. I think uh, Mel talks to one of the counselors, or someone of influence, I can't quite remember what her name is, but uh, halfway through her conversation with that woman who's, like, kind of implying that Jace is annoying and kind of getting in the way, he, like, turns around and starts giving off a really charismatic and, uh, well, just a speech. Um, Puts his game face on. The older yes. woman with the white hair? Yeah, who has a shockingly young yeah. voice. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> it, was, it was disturbing watching her, but she sounded hot. Disturbing. She sounded hot. <laughs> Uh, but yeah, um, and then we have like a little montage combined with, I'm going to go back to this scene, it'll be fine. Where's the other politicking scene? There we go. So, um, he starts talking to each of them, shaking hands and making alliances. Meanwhile, meanwhile you boy, oh. No, yeah, right. go ahead. Uh, I was, meanwhile, your boy Heimerdinger, he's just sitting there enjoying the show. <laughs> he's you know, he completely... <laughs> Completely oblivious to what's going on around him. Which uh, felt to me and Free when we were watching it as just foreshadowing. All yeah. the, the counselors. Over there by himself. Uh, yep. Up to their own interests while he is just enjoying life. Yep. Um, yeah, I'll, I'll see I, if I can get a shot of it, actually. I just said, my only issue with the politics scenes is there aren't more of them because I think they're quite good. I enjoyed. Uh, watching this play out. I've seen many people describe it as boring, which is disappointing, but what can you do? Oh, man. <laughs> I hate it. Hate if, it. If, they, if they think it's boring, then, uh, I mean, maybe... I, I would be curious if anyone thought it was boring after seeing it twice, because, like, the second the second watch through for me, all the different pieces sort of clicked, and I understood, you know, everything that was going on in the scenes, right? And it, I, I mean, from that point on, I, I really like these scenes. Did you I say mean, you actually don't like them, Rex? No, I do. Oh, okay. I, I would say, like, the first time around, as soon as I saw Heimerdinger there just happily watching, I, I was immediately like, I know where this is going. Like, he's it's not pretty... like them. He is not <laughs> like them, and it, he's gonna... And I wonder if that's gonna cause problems for him in the future. <laughs> and, like, it, to me, it was immediately clear what Did we were we, uh, Yeah, I'm pretty sure saying, you and I... That, like, it's probably... You and I discussed yeah. uh, what happens eventually. Exactly what we thought was going to happen. And yeah. to be clear, that's not like a bad thing at all. No, it was a great it's, thing. It's, I'm, I'm really glad that it was, uh, it was so clear that what, you know, what direction we're heading in. Because, um, yeah, and, and the show itself as well, just gradually becoming darker and more chaotic with lightning and, and more intense strings and stuff. Yeah. yeah. Just a quick as... thing about the... Go ahead. Yeah. 
Oh, uh, just a quick thing about the show as well. Uh, the violinist is a cameo of Ray Chen, the guy who did the, who, uh, guy who was involved in the song for the last episode for the finale. Oh, that's cool. Oh, like yeah. he looks like this in real life, sort of thing. Or, or are you saying because the model would have been built after him, but it? also that I... he played? Well, I'm assuming he played it as well. When you say cameo, do you mean visually or just audio? I guess it's the same as the Imagine Dragons people, right? Like, they yeah, cameoed so. in, like, for real. Leo, did you die? Yes. Yeah, not... oh. am, I, am I back now? Yes. <laughs> uh, yeah, I can hear you. Uh, Sorry. Was it uh, just an audio uh, cameo, or is it visual as well? Uh, visual, I think it's supposed to be based on him. Yeah, that's cool. That's cool. I like this scene because it reminds me of the Darth Plagueis the Wise scene. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Only the best. I mean, it does, I guess, but yeah. Um, what do you mean, but it really does. It's basically the exact same. I was scene. gonna say it's kind of a rip off, if anything. I'm just saying. Um, but you know, what do they say? Greatest artists steal from the best and stuff. Like that. Um. Then we get another awesome scene. What? No, it just it happens to have Jinx in it. I don't know what you're talking about. Um. Hmm? Remember this this area from back in episode two? Mm -hmm. Where they used to hang out as friends we didn't get to do it much in the past seven years if at all um so jinx has given it a little visit and she even steps on the plate that vi would have thrown at the enforcer back then which has the um the image of milo on it which again just man does that seem familiar now compared to when we first ever saw it look at that boy mm. yeah there you go Quite a distinctive head shape. Um, Did say that? Give him a goofy ass looking head so it's easy to emulate it. <laughs> and yeah, she looks at the leaderboard and it's all Vi except for the two Clagger ones. As we hear Clagger <laughs> saying, what's wrong? Are you worried? Uh, Powder's going to beat you again. Yeah. So, Which is just an indicator of what's going through her head. The thing about Clagger is that he clags quite a lot. So I got his name. He's always yeah. clagging. They said, your name shall be one who clags. And they're like, eh, it's a bit, bit on the tongue. Just, just clagger. <laughs> the one who clags. That... The one who man, clags. Man That's with some clag-like features. I'm pretty sure that's the Dark Souls boss fight. I thought Clagmire. <laughs> Would you say you Clagmire? Yeah, Clagmire. <laughs> Clagmire. <laughs> um, so she's... <laughs> <Nice>. <laughs> Oh my god. She spots a, a crow and it freaks her out temporarily and then she considers it for a little bit and then shoots it. Um uh, it's that upset, was pretty mean. Upset a lot of people shooting a crow. She has killed several people at this point, but shooting a crow I think crosses a different line, you know. It's just, it does cross yeah, a different yeah. line. I don't like her anymore. Um, well, because um, the important aspect of her character is that she has to um essentially to actually I might have said this on the last stream, stop me if I did. Uh I'm not sure if I said this in private or on the stream. Uh, that to deal with what's happened to her, she almost has to, as a necessity, see killing as not a big deal. Uh, ending the life of a, another individual has to, for her, not be something particularly serious so that she can dismiss what she did. Her biggest trauma is related uh, well, so entirely... so she can better deal with it. Yeah. yeah, to taking lives. If if that can become a trivial event, then maybe that can help her deal uh, with the ideologically, trauma. Ideologically, she... Her viewing killing as something trivial makes a lot of sense, considering what she's had to deal with and how that might have led her to think. I would even how, argue well, that how, how it has led her to think. She might even pursue it because she can then make killing trivial. Um, like it, it exactly. would, would be, yeah. So it's a lot going on for her. Um, she reassembles the machine and she starts up around with it. Um, just want to point out the the scratchy writing at the start, just before things starts. Mm -hmm. While she says "vi," someone just said this. I don't know the context, what? but <laughs> <laughs> oh, hang on. That's, so oh, that's really good. You gotta get that off. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> Pretty great. That's funny. Um, 
<laughs> also, shot appreciation. Look at that shit. It's not up yet. Hold on. Yeah, I'm still just Turn seeing up. the meme. Yeah, yeah. Hey. That's yeah. Oh, that's great. That's gorgeous, actually. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yep. It's it's one of those shots that doesn't draw focus if you're engaged in the story, but you can appreciate it as it's it's just generally gorgeous anyway. Like it's not gonna. Yeah. Um. It's, it's not in the face with how beautiful it is. It's just beautiful on its own. As Theo was pointing out, just seeing Vi scratched all over the screen. Come across as lines just in general when uh, yeah. viewed fast enough. But yes, there is a deep seated insecurity that relates to Jinx comparing herself to Vi quite a bit, especially being that Vi was her source of like validation for basically everything. And uh, all sorts of pent up feelings that probably haven't been processed very well about exactly how she feels about Vi now. Well, yeah, illustrated perfectly by, look at these two flashbacks. First one yeah. is by holding her and little hearts and then punching her in the face. Uh, bit of a conflict there. And it's, it's yeah. like communicating With mental distress. Face. Well, yeah, like, it, and to mention, what does she think of Vi? She doesn't know what she thinks of Vi. Mm-hmm. She was my sister and she was nice to me, but she also punched me in the face and abandoned me. Oh man, this fucking part. Of the, yeah. It's to, like, mm -hmm. what can. I feel like just playing it in slow motion and just going, you know? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Really great keyframes in this sequence. Lots of strong poses. Yeah. Look how quickly she goes from Jinx to Vi. It's just like. It's really impressive. Mm hmm. Talk about style, too. Uh, but yeah, we've got to be careful for copyright, which, by the way, I was so careful in our last stream. Not a single trouble with copyright. I was blown away. That's great. Wow. It, it, the work pays yeah. off because YouTube's a twat. Don't tell YouTube I said that. <laughs> no, it just copyrights you out of spite. Re removed for community guideline violations. At, like, seriously, look at the way that she moves uh, here, right? So she's dodging the two first strikes from the, the machine. Oh, fuck it. Like, dodge, dodge, and then she goes to spin, and then it lines up with Vi in the memory, grabbing mm. it. It's fucking great. And then as she's engaging with the machine, she just starts switching into Vi, doing it as well. YouTube is and, indeed uh, a twat. some feelings start coming to the surface. <laughs> uh, yeah, she's getting pretty angry. This is the sort of scene that in most shows would just never show up because it doesn't have like a there isn't like a discrete plot reason for it to be here, but it's so good for character. Like mm -hmm. it, it communicates a, a tremendous amount, like mo almost I mean basically exclusively visually in a very short period of time. I really love this scene. It's fucking excellent. Uh, and yeah, and she finishes out um, not at the top of the leaderboard. Nope. Which frustrates her quite a bit. Expressions! That is what would happen! And she wouldn't win, and that would annoy her. Yeah. You could say she's having but trouble she here. she has a gun. You could, say she's, <laughs> she, you could say she's dealing with a lot in this moment. Yeah. And again, there's just, like, so many shots that could have just been meh. Like, they don't waste their opportunities. Could have just been meh, yeah. But Plus instead, I feel like the 2D animation, going on. whoever's doing the 2D animation or the team or whatever, they got to be having a lot of fun whenever it's time to start fighting shit. Because like mm. you, you can see all these cool streaks and motion blurs and cool particle trails and all that shit. Looks fun. He says, I just had deja vu. Unless you've said yeah. something incredibly similar to that before, that was deja no, vu. No, no, I just want to repeat You're just appreciate it again. I've said it before, but I just want to say it again. It's just great. I, I love no, it. I just remember that exact phrasing. Like, it was like, yeah. I've heard welcome, these exact words before in this order. Jay, welcome to the clairvoyant club. All right, well, use your powers for good. Fuck. What's going to no. happen tomorrow? <laughs> no, it doesn't work like that. That's Give me not... Money. I don't care. I want it to work I, like that. I said it. Yeah, I mean, I well, said it last episode. Said. I don't care. I'll say it again. Well, if you, you did say it last episode, then it then it wasn't deja vu, and it, and, and, and if if you said that exactly the same way last episode, then I was just remembering. 
and Fringy's just got me thinking about Deja Vu, and he's poisoned yeah. my brain. No, I haven't. <laughs> uh, you turned her against me. <laughs> hey, look at this scene transition. Ba-boom. Yeah, it's like I'm watching Archer here. Yes. <laughs> yes. Um, Archer has good scene transitions. No, Archer has say. really good scene transitions. The scene transitions in Archer are often fucking jokes. Like, you don't get that any any other show. Uh, so they walk up to... Uh, well, they're on, like, a, a just a higher-up area that they can spot the last drop. Um, it's got security outside of it for now. And uh, I think Vi is just sort of scoping it out as a uh, potential place to go. But fucking Caitlin says, That looks like a place with bodies in the basement. And it's like, I remember oh. when I first heard it say, I was like, oh, fuck. <laughs> like, don't say that. <laughs> Jesus. And uh, I think Vice is like, you have no idea what you're talking about, or something like that. Mm -hmm. um, you can see Vice super pissed that Silco goons are taking over the last drop. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Especially when Caitlyn starts running her mouth. What's the thing? She's like, that point of view where you just can't be asked to listen to anything that Caitlyn's going to come out with because it'll all be useless and ignorant. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, but yes, they enter the uh, the the brutal, as they call it. Uh, brutal. And she she's going to visit a lady of the night in order to discuss some things. I happen to be aware that Duma, you are hypercritical of this scene. You think it's the worst scene in the whole show, correct? Yeah, I, I don't think it's very close. There we go. <laughs> but I, yeah, I, I honestly don't know if it's worth getting into it. Uh, does anyone have any problems with this scene? With no. wh which part in particular? Uh, any I mean, of it? Do you have a problem with any of basic, it? Right? Basically, any any individual element. Oh, I I'd have to rewatch it again and pay close attention, but I don't recall having any issues. Um, uh, no. What what was uh, what what came to your mind? <laughs> okay. Uh, I I don't think the scene needs to be here. I think all the characters are acting out of character. Basically, everything Vi says to Caitlyn doesn't make sense. It doesn't make sense based on what she knows. It doesn't make sense based on their characters. Um, yeah, I don't know. Like everything. It, this is the only scene in the entire show where I'm like, just like, this is just a bad scene. Um, like I, I, we can go through the individual. Like I, I have all the lines written down. If you want me to go through it. Oh, absolutely. Uh, we, I, don't, I don't know if we have this kind uh, of time. Though. Yeah, that's the thing is, I, I don't know that we had the time, and I don't know that the audience well, wants at, to we got, hear me got argue about it. 50 minutes, so if we can just do this in under 10. Yeah. Oh. Okay, sure. Um, so, there's, there's not, firstly, so, there's not that many lines. So. Well, let me, so I'll just summarize it as best I can as, as a scene for those listening and, and for those here who can't quite remember. So, they enter the brothel, uh, Caitlin is still weary about what the fuck's going on here. She keeps asking questions. Vi says, uh, "You need to have. You need to convince people you have something they want in order for them to talk." Um, and then Caitlin's like, "What are, what are you even doing?" And she's like, "You hot idiot," sort of thing. True. And she's like, "Use it, uh, for, you know, to your advantage and stuff." And then she sends her off with some random guy. Vi goes to talk to the, I guess, owner of this fine establishment. And gets information she wants, and then leaves. And um, as she's leaving, she spots that Caitlin is talking to a grill. And then she smiles. And it's then like, walks ah. off. That is the scene. <laughs> Duma, would you like to make argument number one? It is worth noting, too, that, that the, the gal she's talking to is the same gal that was uh, giving she is. looks at Clagger. True. Yeah, in, in the, yeah, in like episode two. Mm -hmm. Um. I mean, okay, so the first thing to say is that I don't think this is necessary at all. Like, one, of the, like, one of the cardinal sins of writing is if you can just take a scene and remove it and nothing changes, that's a pretty good indication that something is wrong. I don't you think, think nothing scene changes? Is necessary. I, guess, so I, I, guess I don't think it serves a narrative question, purpose. I guess the first question would be, what do you, what do you think... Actually, no, that would probably be the... I was thinking about it the other way around, right? Like, what, what does the scene... Like... If if the stuff is happening in the scene and stuff is happening, what isn't being advanced? Uh, I mean, the, the 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 what this scene is trying to present as the narrative purpose is that like they're going to go around and like ask people for information and try and 
uh, basically start sleuthing. Um, but a lot of the interesting information is contradictory. So in, in like one of the first lines is Caitlin saying, how exactly do you propose we go about this? Vi has a connection in here. They don't like they, they can just go up and talk to the person that like is most likely to have the information, which is exactly what happens. So why would they need to go about things in any particular way? Because Vi is not like, telling Caitlin Vi anything. Yeah, Vi wants Caitlin to be elsewhere. So Caitlin has no uh, idea what's going on. I mean, <laughs> okay. So when when Vi says, let them think you work here, there's no presumption that this is going to work. She just wants her to leave. Absolutely. She wants Caitlin to I just fuck off. I assume that's what the whole point was. Yeah, she wants Caitlin to go off and do something while she could have a chat unsupervised. But yeah, yeah if we, she just threw threw her at a rando. Is like, was there any that was that person in? What did she know? Vi she wants a rando. Vi wants to do this all herself. Um, she has a very specific goal, and it's only facilitated by this scene. I'm very curious how this scene could possibly be removed. Uh, I mean, if she wants to do things by herself, then like I don't understand. She like we we just saw a scene where it, Vi could have been by herself. She didn't need to wait for Caitlin. I mean, she was completely separated. Well, she did. That's part of the, the the convenience of it is that Caitlin drops down right next to her when she's collecting the clothes. Wait. So I thought we established that there was like a time jump. Where now Vi didn't like wait for her. Uh, well, she seems to be walking toward her with the clothing. I don't know if she sat there waiting for her. I guess maybe she would have. But um, I would also argue that I don't know that Vi wants to leave Caitlin in uh in just the streets. Uh, she seems to want her to just stay put here. Uh, which is a place that she knows is safe, friendly, and owned by a friend as well. Okay, so the next line is, you know what your problem is, you expect everyone to give you uh, what you want. If you really want people to talk to you, you have to let them think you have what they want. Do you think this is a justified line, given what Vi knows about Caitlyn thus far? Yes. Yes. Yep. Why? Because true. Caitlin has people done from nothing the upper side of town. It, it is, an it is fundamentally true. It's true. Caitlin has yeah. done nothing but demand information and answers and, you know, leads and stuff. And it's also just a fairly simple view of topsiders from the, the, the only The only person Caitlin has tried to get information from is Vi, and she was successful. Not that successful. Not that successful. She's asked many questions and gotten, what, like 10% of the answers like, she's looking for? And remember, the scene with, with Chungus Awesome Man, the food guy... She's just there assuming that it's bullshit and worthless, but like, it turns out that we're actually achieving something here. Yeah, Chungus guy sends them here, which this place yeah. is important, but we haven't gotten to that yet. Sure, but like, okay. Like, okay. This is going to be hard to discuss without discussing later things. I'll try to not do that. But like, it, 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 I think it is a factual statement, and not just factual, but crucial to Caitlin's arc, that people tend to give her what she wants. Cool. And that so, her arc is like rejecting that. Do you think she got what she wanted when she was placed in a role that she explicitly says she didn't want, and then she's told to leave the crime scene when she was trying to follow leads, and then she's stopped from being an enforcer when she's involved in something dangerous, and then she's told to become a secretary that's not involved in anything, and then she rebukes all of that and goes out on her own adventure? Do you think that's her getting what she wants from people? Most people are trying to give her what they think she wants, and she typ right, typically no, gets what she they're actually not. wants. They're not, they're 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 not giving her what she, they want for her. Yeah, they want, they, that, yeah. they're putting her where they want because that's a, a class that she belongs to. She doesn't want to do what they keep forcing her to do. Okay, yeah, and she gets, again, she she gets what she wants. She wants to be an enforcer, she gets to be an enforcer. She doesn't. I feel like, like you I, know that that is not... Uh, fair as a representation of the environment that she is in compared to where she wants to be. It's, it's, it's her opening scene in episode 4 that she's she's guarding the fair and Jace is like, ooh, there's gonna be lots of crime at the fair, huh? And she's like, I don't want to fucking be here. My mum put me here. Because it keeps her uh, close to her because... That's close what and her safe. Mom keeps her out of danger. Okay. And then the that only, gets the removed only thing by... when she's hurt on the job. She demotes her again. The, the only thing that Vi knows about her at this point is that Caitlin wanted information from Vi, and she gave the information to Caitlin. She so gave information to it, her, not much. And also, I think it would be reasonably safe as an inference that you, as somebody who lives in, like, the slums, meets, like, you know, rich kid, 
that they just expect things. That's like an expectation that she. Yeah, that was my that first thing that she said. Yeah, and she's Vi not wrong. That, she's not yeah, Vi wrong. thinks that the yeah. people in the upper part of town they just get things. They're used to just being yeah. given stuff. They're not used to thing. fighting for things. They demand yeah. thing. They get thing. And to be when fair, when you live in the shows... undercity, you have to barter for things. You have to. You you have to try and get things because you can't expect things. You just can't. Which is, and it, it just highlights how much she doesn't know about Caitlyn's life. Caitlyn's a little bit more complicated than that. Yes, that's true. Yeah. But Caitlyn has expectations. She's, that... she's gotten her out of prison she, for a very specific reason, and she's asking her all the questions she needs answers to, like, what the fuck is our plan? How are you getting information? Where are we going? What are we going to be doing? And Vi is just eating food. Like, shut the fuck up. It's actually, it's actually really great when you think about it, because it's like, the, the observation that she's made... It's like, she thinks that Caitlyn gets all the things that she wants, she just asks for them. It's not true, though. She doesn't get the things that she wants. Her entire approach is, like, not working. So it's, like, a really good observation of, like, a problem that Caitlyn has that she can just what, fix. What did Vi observe from Caitlyn that led to this statement? What, so it's, it's, we just, it's, 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 it's literally what, prejudice. what we were just being talking about. For Yeah, like, she, she thinks that this is what people from, like, the, from Piltover think. Like in how they conduct themselves, they don't have to. Well, then it's not. Anything. Then it's not. Okay. <laughs> I mean, then it's not an observation. It's like a, a stereotype. Well, sure, yeah, because Vi is her is a flawed stereotypes person. Stereotypes are observations. She, she is. She yeah. is mm -hmm. prejudiced and biased. Yeah. So part of it, part of it is half observation and half of her own like bias that's, against. Yeah, her. that's that's part of why the line's so good. There's like it's half true in terms of Caitlyn that she does have this problem. It's half true in terms um, of people with Caitlyn. But she doesn't know Caitlyn personally. Exactly. She care because yeah, she exactly. Just... And it, it is in part informed by their relationship up to this point, because like I said, mm -hmm. all Caitlyn's really been doing is just demanding answers. Demanding and, things. Yeah. You know, like, Meanwhile, Vi is like, trying to play the Undercity stuff. like the way you're supposed yeah. to, which is a little bit more What complex. are we doing here? Like, we're wasting time here eating food. It's like, no, we're not. I'm getting information. And food. Plus, because, look at this wonderful know, and food, land. Uh, yeah. and <laughs> complimenting, complimenting the chef and his food probably plays into getting the information she wanted off him as well. Well, it's just yeah. you, you're building relationships. You're, uh, yep. you're playing the game of, of, of uh, Zorn, I guess. <laughs> okay. I mean, there's a lot more I could say, but I, 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 we should probably just Well, on. do you disagree yeah, with all of that? or? I, I mean, Vi is basically saying, like... <sighs> So you do? Yeah, yeah, I do disagree. <laughs> yeah, okay. Yeah. Um, uh, it seems I, to slot perfectly for me, I don't know. I, it all well, just makes like, sense. All I really like the scene. Uh, and now I want to address specifically, like, it could be cut and nothing changes. When she speaks to the owner, uh, one of the first things we establish is that Silco didn't just take over the Undercity. He took over begrudgingly against a lot of other people who tried to stand up to him, and they failed. Uh, this is very important to this is sort the first of time we really it. learn about it. Yeah, she's like, yeah. I see nobody lifted a finger to do anything, and she's like, people tried, which I I find mm -hmm. to be very compelling. As uh, it wasn't as simple as yeah, still goes our leader now. Woo! Is people probably tried to stop him, tried to form groups against him. They all got killed or suppressed. He's got the money and the muscle, uh, and I guess also to touch like uh, uh, we we've kind of glossed over it, but another really important in this scene this is the beginnings of like the romantic relationship between vi and caitlin definitely yeah um this is the start well, it's actually really important in that regard that well so we got that's two but i'm gonna add a third this is how she finds out where savika is yes yeah, so it's plot critical <laughs> like if you remove the scene. Vi's next scene yeah it's vi's crescendo for the episode and so it's, the, do, it's doing a lot in a fairly short scene, so... Yeah. So that will be the question. Do you think that the scene doesn't advance any of those things? I, I think that the scene could be cut and she could just show up at the last drop and Savika is there and it, 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 you like, could, nobody would notice. You could do it that way, but that that is like simply that's more... That's just a different story. Yeah, <laughs> I was gonna say, you could do it so that she knows... like. Savika personally goes to a house, or like she knew where she lived. Like we could do all kinds of. No, I'm, I'm saying, I'm saying that the last drop is the most reasonable place for her to go. Like, it, it, when, like you're it, um, you're giving I, her I a tip to go and just go. Why she I'd wouldn't be, go there? So she did go there and spotted loads of guards. So it's not going to be until it's plot yeah. critical that she will go there. She would rather go to a safe place that's owned by a friend to get as much information about the updates of what happened in this undercity since she went to prison. 
And what she gets is, yes, Silco's taken over, yes, we did try to fight back unsuccessfully, and yes, uh, Savika is here, and I know you want to fucking kill her, because she's, like, the architect of the betrayal behind Vanda's, uh, sort of the people that would have been for him, but then went against him. So, all, that's all categorical, I would say. And then also, like, in terms of the, the vi Caitlin relationship, if you cut it, then, like, you are losing something, because that's the start. Do you disagree with that, or...? Uh, I mean, like, <laughs> the, the, the scene accomplishes something. I'm just saying that, like, the... the well, so the, then it, the story, it has a, the it story has a reason to exist then, right? Like, if the scene accomplishes anything... The scene accomplishes something that doesn't like. If you just cut the scene, what it's accomplishing wouldn't be necessary. But like, it, it's yeah, like, you cut the scene, and this has to be done another way. Yeah, yeah we're so missing. You if you cut this, we're missing way. things. For example, Vi yeah. catching up on what happened in the Undercity. Vi knowing exactly where Savika is instead of looking out that she's in the last drop at the time she checks it. Like, yeah. why not add more reason instead of removing it? And then, of course, building their relationship and establishing exactly what they think of each other. Very quickly. Yep, it's it's a, some extra character development that would kind of seem a little forced if we were to get them together at this point without this scene. And this is an environment where, like, it feels more organic that you would have, especially when we're doing the scene where we're trying to build, like, Vi's perception of Caitlyn as well as, like, Caitlyn's sort of problems that she's having to deal with. This is probably the place to do it. Um, well, it's an easy way to get a reference out of her thinking another. she's hot in a brothel. Exactly, <laughs> like... in a brothel. And then, and then, basically, definitively establishing, like, yeah, Caitlyn swings that way, and Vi is also kind of, like, that seems to make her happy. It's like, okay, we're getting a lot of stuff, like, and, and it's in five seconds. Like, you do that in five seconds. It's really expeditious. Yeah, and, if, and, if, and Vi could have thought that Caitlyn just wasn't going to listen to a damn thing she said, but the fact that Caitlyn is now doing... What she said and learning, she's like, oh, maybe she's not so bad after all. Planted a little seed, you know? I like this scene quite a bit. It's good. <laughs> I do, yeah. Yeah. Um, but that's 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 all I've got to say on what's in it and what it achieves. Outside of just looking great too, but that's basically the whole show. Um, are we do we do we progress? We progress. I'm say. I'm fine with progressing because we got another one of the best scenes ever. There's a lot of those, um, <laughs> but you know what? This isn't even about Jinx. It's about Penis Man. Yeah, Penis Man. Oh, this scene. I love Penis Man. Uh, it's one that I did that not notice on my there. first way through, and I'm kind of disappointed that I didn't because it's such a like this is so visually like straightforward as to uh, just tells you a lot about him. This image alone, and it's it's such a moment of like. Shit, man, is that the coin? That's the one? It's like, that's the one. He kept it. I imagine that weighs on him quite a bit. Yep. His Covered 30 the pieces of, the of silver. He respected the most. Mm hmm Um... Yeah. Is it how many pieces? 30. Okay. Do you think I said something else? Do you think I got no, the I reference wrong? Is that I, it? I thought you said uh, 50 for a moment, so I was just clarifying. You would have You would have corrected me, wouldn't you? I would have. Thank you. Um, but yeah, fuck him up. Have, we couldn't have been having that. He's having a just having a back and forth. Silco. Silco provides him evidence, quote unquote, to give to uh, Jace that the firelights are behind everything. And um, yeah, he gets a little frustrated, old uh, old Marcus. And I think, fuck, I I don't know what the does anyone remember like Silco's quote. I think he says something like, do you imagine yourself a hero when imagine he's like struggling with a it? hero with oh. a grenade in his hand? Oh. Yes. It's one such a good moment. But... to make you the master you've always <laughs> seen yourself as. Yeah, Silco just cutting right into a character with ease because he, he's just that good at it. Um, but yeah, this shit caught me off guard when I first watched the show. So this happens. Um... I'm gonna pause for copyright, it's a funny place to pause, but I think, yeah. Still goes surprise, explosion, and then it just cuts to black. It's like, holy fuck, did Marcus actually pull the pin? Mm -hmm. <laughs> the fact that they play straight into it, like there's no cut or anything to make you yeah. uh, believe something different. Yeah, I was like, damn. 
Um, yeah, I, I, assume, I didn't. I didn't buy it. Like after the first second of like, oh shit! I thought, no, <laughs> that was cool. Well, so the the it's, main yeah, thing yeah. in my head was like, you wouldn't have killed Silco that quickly. <laughs> yeah. Um, but yeah, it's like, just that's the conflict in his head. It's what he wants to do. Even envisioning himself happily dying at this point because he's struggling he's with this all. Yeah, he's been struggling for a while. Mountain on him. He's trapped. What, what would the repercussions be if he'd done it. that? Um. Well, I think that's really complicated, right? Because obviously, Silco knocked out creates big chaos for. A, I wonder if that would have killed Jinx well, too, because she's sitting up there. It's a big power vacuum. Yeah. Big power vacuum. And then, of course, and we know that there are other players in uh in the Undercity. If it's somehow revealed that he was in cahoots with Silco, I don't know if it would to the to the Pilto people, or it would just be seen as he was down there and got killed. Um, but yeah, uh, Jinx is down. She's she's sad, she can't get the shit to work. And of course we just had the scene where she literally was beaten by Vi from years and years ago. She's a sad bunny. Um, and I think she even says she can't get their faces out of her head. Um, and uh, I think all Silco says back to her is, uh, fear haunts us all, child. It's just like, there you go again with one line that makes us all go, hmm. Hmm. Yeah. He's trying to be a good dad. Well, that's probably a way. subject at some point when we get further along. But like, plenty of people have yeah. talked about that with plenty of strange things to say. You know. I think it's super interesting. I mm -hmm. like it a lot. Um, but yeah, the, the, specifically he says, we need you to weaponize the Hextech soon, you're the only one I can trust with this. Like, uh, even Jinx suggests giving it to the scientist, which by the way is kind of like, believe, who dat? Cause, uh, I believe the doctor is what she says? Yeah, same thing. Oh, well, yeah, okay. Uh, but, uh, he, Silco fully believes that she's the one that should have the stone and she's the one that will be able to make use of it. Can you imagine if this shit went to Singed? <laughs> <laughs> so um we got a scene where Jason Mel they they do a sex. They do. Yeah, boy. I was not expecting a brothel and a sex in the even League of Legends show. Yeah. <laughs> and while they Because well, be... you know, to, for a lot of people they'd have to explain it. <laughs> oh, this, yeah, I <laughs> It took my brain a second to catch up. This is the scene that's also got Victor working on his science. Yeah, um, oh. it's such a, a dramatic yeah. back and forth that he's struggling to work hard enough to be able to save his own life to while live. Jason Mel just celebrated yeah. the manipulation of the entire council together. It's just like, oh, the Poor directions. Uh, Priorities. Um, and a good quote yeah. from Mel, just to give you some more info, is the Madadas usually take from the world. It's rare they can give anything back. Hmm. So, obviously, they see what they're doing is almost entirely altruistic and uh, tells you something about her family. Um, but yeah, uh, we actually get a little Sigma thing. Sigma Grimes <laughs> Sigma Grimes. A little yeah. bit, yeah, yeah. A little bit. <laughs> yeah. Uh, the, the girl is like, oh, man, wouldn't, wouldn't want to go home on my own. Would love, you know... Someone to to give me yeah. like a walk home, and Victor's like busy. Go away. It's like, oh man. Thank you tonight. Shut up. I'm doing bam, important work. What I'm watching is Victor cough at blood and fall over with that music. Like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, he slam his fist on the table and send papers flying everywhere with that music. Yeah. Yeah, the, the they they have all the fun. Um, actually, I think is this the Imagine Dragons cameo? Or is it this yeah, any the, the band scan? I assume so. I don't know what they look like. We have the Silco Jinx scene. Oh right, let's that, talk about that. Please. So that's just a fucking great scene too. There's a lot of those. Um, it's kind of cool that we start out as well that he's beginning like advice or speech and she's like bored because he's probably it's silco imagine him as a dad he probably gives you like strong advice literally every second you talk to him just constantly <laughs> advice 
Um, but yeah, he says, I almost drowned in these waters, and that day I let a weak man die. Another was reborn, which is obviously in reference to Jinx's insecurities that she's been telling him about. And that's how she can solve it, is to... It's like, what is it? Um, it's a Game of Thrones quote, right? Kill the boy and uh, the man, or something like let that. Let the man survive or something yeah, like that. Yeah, something like that. Um, betrayal, the pain that can make you feel inside out, can either break you or forge you into something stronger. And then he says Jinx is perfect. Very much believes in Jinx, Silco. Um, you might even say to an irrational degree, but I think especially with episode 3's ending, he sees what he's doing for her as investing in her in the way that he would have wanted someone to with him. Mm-hmm. And so, of course, she's support. perfect. Yeah, he's supporting the fuck out of her. Um, and I guess validation in the same kind of way. Yeah, which he, you know, he gives her a right lot way. of, and she does seem to appreciate it quite a bit. Um, mm -hmm. It's honest, honestly, I can't even say this, it's honestly what she needs uh, to be able to feel stronger and pursue the, the Hextech stuff. Mm -hmm. And he probably knows that, because he's a smart boy. But yes, then we get the Imagine Dragons cameo, which everybody wanted me to mention is cringe, okay? So here we it go. It is mega cringe. What are you- what, Congrats, it's cringe. Moving on. <laughs> well, is, is there anything to say about it? I don't know. I just... No, it's cringe. Mm, yeah, not really, it's just cringe. Yeah. I wouldn't have recommended it. It feels really weird. It does. It, it's, it would have been, like, if it was really subtle. Like, if a band was playing in the background, and they it's stayed them. in the background. Yeah. Right? And it was just, you saw them for just a little bit, and you're like, oh, that kind of looks like the da da da. That's a nice little, like, Easter egg. And this is just like, we are Imagine Dragons, we made the music. Like, look at us. Well, yeah, because the song they, starts and then it shows, it's almost like, it's almost a music video. And it's just like, nah. Yeah. <laughs> they wanted to get Vi to Savika, and I don't think they could, I don't know, maybe they, maybe they thought it'd be cool to give Imagine Dragons a cameo because, you know, they work with them a lot. I don't fucking know, but. Like you can still have it, just don't make it so overt. Yeah, I think that's that's it. The and, um, some people are like, "Why is it cringe?" It's like I don't know that we can explain it more than that. If you don't find it cringe, that's totally fine. Cringe totally is not fine. a science; it's a magic. It is right. A magic. Cringe is, <laughs> yeah, the is, magic is, of cringe. cringe. <laughs> yeah. uh, um, it was actually uh, uh, I was talking to Goger a bit, the good old EFAP editor, about um, something he didn't really like. Yeah. I really fucking hate it actually at this scene was the there's um a point in the song it's very much a pop song right and it's the point in the song where it, it like reaches some kind of point and then it and it cuts to Victor in the hospital and he just he, yeah he felt that's just way too inappropriate uh the song with the event well no, I think it's very appropriate because there was so much cringe I felt like <laughs> I needed to go to a hospital I knew oh, this. Oh, uh -huh. and the scene brought and then the scene brought me there. It gets worse to me because the song comes back in afterwards. Yes. At the same point. Well, and, uh, and at the same time, we're dealing with an image like this from Marx's POV. Look at this. Fucking top notch. Nice and simple. Mm hmm. Oh, Marcus. You poor guy. Poor son of a bitch. Yeah. Um. Uh... Obviously, because like I can't be playing audio to you guys, we get thrown off the interwebs. But the song is playing. Imagine Dragons would be very—they're very proud of their cringe cameo. They would—they would stop us. That's the thing. Um, you know, I appreciate that they've done work for us up, but you can do cameos in all kinds of ways, right? You don't have to do it yeah, that uh, way. Not like, like this. Th there's um, there's better ways. Maybe not like why this. Does this the Ray Chen one was really good. So you know, <laughs> I made my mistake. And this thing, like that, Jason. Uh, Victor scene is fucking great as well because he just turns to look yeah. at him, and uh, I can't remember what prompts it, but he just says, "How much time do I have?" And you're just like, oh. "He knew." Damn. He was like, he wasn't ready for this, but he knew it was coming. I guess that's how you'd say. So tragic. Oh, Victor. Yeah. Um. So something that uh, I want to highlight. I have an image for it. Oh, I'm so prepared. We actually see um, the kids that they fought, but older. Uh, they're all grown-up goons, or at least this is the um, this this is an image put together by someone who's a fan of the show. 
I'm pretty sure they're right on the first two. I'm not sure about the middle one. They might be right. Uh, I, I'm not sure. Well, I was but curious anyway. if we'd see him again in some capacity. But, uh, look at him then and now. Oh, I'm shit. Let me click on the... Oh, okay. Yeah. Uh, yeah, they... I can... Wow. The second that's one really them. aged badly. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> hey, that's what Shimmer will do to you. Yeah. Oh, and um, I'm pretty sure that the idea is that when Milo slammed his fucking arm down on Thingy's nose and then she hit it with the plank, that he's, like, got permanent nose damage and he's got that. I'm mm -hmm. not sure if that's what they're going for. Permanent nose damage. Yeah. You've seen people That'd be a good band. Call that, that a broken nose. Permanent nose damage. Hammer, but not the temporary nose the damage. Nose. Um, what I, I've got permanent nose damage, you know. Neat. I didn't know yeah. that, Jay. But yeah, uh, it's uh, not visible, but it's um, it's, it's mental. Are you gonna yeah, get it's, damage? It's mental. No, it's physical, but it's not um, visible. Uh, basically, the cartilage is broken, so I can bend it in ways that you would not expect a nose to bend. But by default, <laughs> it sits in a normal nose position. But, uh, but, but yeah, this is really neat. Um, Learning yeah. about each other. That was my nose law. Just a, <laughs> a bit of attention to the details, uh, but also in that little thing with the Imagine Dragons. Plenty of evidence of things really going to shit drug use wise compared to when we used to see yeah. when our first introduction to um Dawn. And then I fucking love this bit. It's so awesome. When Savika's celebrating her her hand that she won, and then Vi's fucking knee just comes just in. Just comes from out the of side. fucking <laughs> nowhere and just obliterates her face. Savika Savika really like takes a pounding in this show. Yes. <laughs> she is just Consistently, all of her fight scenes are bangers, though. So I love the oh, yeah. fight Savika's, scenes. Savika's awesome. She's really, I really like her. Her to she the game. Her to be in the game. Well, um, give her a robot arm. Isn't Silco the most likely addition to the game? First, I Silco is probably Savika, not coming to the game. Savika feels a lot more gamey uh, in terms of the things that you can do with that character with moves and stuff. The Big, robot right. arm. Yeah. Robot, the robot powered arm thing with the gameplay. blade. Yeah. Especially, yeah, what, what you see her do in the last episode, that's that's her ulti right there. Yeah. Um, that's that's, that's a fucking top yeah. lane bruiser of a champion right there. Yeah. Uh, but this is pretty satisfying in terms of just we, we they've all aged up and uh vi is just like you absolute piece of shit like you're the, the big reason for why everything happened with vanda meanwhile savika is just like fuck off i've worked like really hard like, this like i want zorn to be happy too you piece of shit so like, fuck it yeah let's fine let's fight <laughs> just, like, you, yeah. even do the well, it feels it's it's you know she's got her own history and it's not about vi like her life doesn't revolve around her I'm not just bad because bad person in exactly. Thing. Um, shots like this, I'm like, oh, I appreciate how big you make Vi look. Good, got to got to do that because it makes me help me believe that she's able to pack a punch. She's lean. Yeah, yeah, but um, still still a bulky lass who. Be muscle on those arms. Yeah. Um, yeah, it's a pretty good fight. Uh, and I'm trying to think of parts I can show because copyright's lame. But um, yeah, they both hit hard against each other. Um, it's just mostly a matter of attrition, it seems. And uh, mm -hmm. I'd say Vi is more driven, but she, uh, Savika is getting regular pumping ins of Shimmer, or at least a variant of Shimmer. Uh, makes it pretty threatening. But something Shimmer adjacent. But they both deal pretty significant damage to each other. Um, she even like has a point where she heats up her arm to like burn Vi's face. Mm. Uh, Metal's not here to tell us what wrestling moves are being done. I'm afraid. <laughs> Spirit bomb. Spirit <laughs> bomb. <laughs> <laughs> That's a wrestling move, right? Yeah, I'd believe it. All right then. But I'm trying to find things to showcase in some way. A bit where Savika slams behind at the ground is one that I like a lot because of the way the camera rotates with it. Very well. I will show that. Just as an example, I guess. I mean, this is kind of the problem. I'm trying to find the best bits. It's like it's all so solid that I'm just like, which yeah. part do I choose? It's like they're all really cool. The 
all the camera angles, the different choices during the fight of where to hit and how to dodge. While you're thinking about that, I'm going to introduce a tangent. One of the cool things about 200cc in Mario Kart 8 <laughs> is um, because of the way that the game is made originally without Was, was ever there a smoother segue? I think not. It's not even a tangent. That's no. just... <laughs> <laughs> yes, it is. Yes, it is. So, 200cc in Mario Kart 8. One of the cool things about it is uh, because the game wasn't designed for 200cc, uh, there are elements that are a little bit floopy, but in ways that are cool. Like, for instance, you can outrun, like, a red shell, if, depending on which items you have, or depending on how well you're playing. You can, like, outrun it for ages. And it's just like, that's really cool in terms of a gameplay element, that, that, that if you're really good at the game, and you can race through a course super quick, you, you could just, like, you could avoid items. You could outrun them. That's pretty cool. Um, I I, have you figured out, what's that? I remember you talking about um, there being no way to to counter the blue shell. Yeah, um, you can um, counter the. Oh right, well, there well, is in Mario Kart Eight uh, because they've got the the horn, the super horn that blows. I remember up. Um, in, uh, Jack X. Uh, if you've ever played that, have you played Jack X? I think I played a little bit of Jack X. Has uh, it has a blue shell equivalent? I think it's 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 the Peacemaker. It's called the Peacemaker. I think, um, and yeah, it just kills whoever's in first place. But there's a really cool counter that you have to figure out for yourself. Um, and I don't know if this works in Mario Kart. If you're in first place and you 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 can see it locking onto you um, before it hits you, um, as soon as it's fired, you have like a little animation that tells you it's it's coming. Uh, if you break and you go into second, it will then hit the person who overtook you, and you will then be in first place again. That's that's it's, it's a really cool way to counter it. It feels I great. Think that I think that there's that's definitely something that should be like baked into these things, like the blue shell always being an automatic. I know that in Mario Kart Wii, if you boost at the right time with a mushroom, you can escape it, but I think that's a glitch. I'm pretty sure that's not like a part of the design. So anyway, um, yeah, let's uh, let's get back. We we only got ten. Minutes. I remember when hey, Vi yeah. evaded a blue shell. And... Yeah, it was crazy. Theo, do you want to say what you the thing? Oh, uh, sure. Story? Someone in the Discord pointed out to me uh, that uh, in the picture that Marcus's daughter drew for him that's on his desk, there's a third figure in the sky along with the two like on the ground. So that's our indication for the fate of uh, Marcus's wife. It would awesome. appear that she has died. And that's, that's all we awesome. get on that. That's fantastic. That's that's a really great detail. It's something that you just miss probably in all likelihood, but it's there. That's super good. Visual storytelling. It's great when you do it really well. And, uh, yeah, I, see it. I've looped the, uh, the moment that Theo was talking about, the camera spins with Vi. This whole fight is pretty cool. Um, a shot would be very difficult. Oh, well, actually, not too difficult. It's, it's utilizing the format, though, definitely, to, to yeah. get some of these image, imagery. Um, Vi gets a few good counters on her and then uh, rams her head into a wall. Um, twice, and so Savika's like fucking delirious almost, and then she smashed her through a wall. And then she's like, where is Powder? Where is Silco keeping her? And, and Savika's like, keeping her? Fucking works for her. Like, and it's just funny to think about because from Savika's POV, she fucking hates Jigs. Like, it's one of the most yeah. annoying members of their, their team. And you got this person being like, where is she imprisoned? It's like, what do you, you don't even know what's going on, do you? Like, exactly. it's, it's so out of the loop. Um, There's a, you need uh, to really hurt Vi with that as well. Yeah. Uh, well, I was about to, I maybe I don't want to jump ahead because there's a similar moment. I think it's in the next episode where it's basically the same thing, but the other way around. Mm -hmm. Um, And yeah, so when we're watching this, I was like, uh, oh, well, actually, so what happens basically, she's asking these questions, and Vi is fucking confused by what Savika tells her, which is very bad news, because obviously she's hoping, in a sense, that Powder is a victim, not decided to work for Silco. That's fucking nightmare fuel. And um, she loosens her grip on Savika in shock, and then Savika gets a stab in her, in her, in her stomach, in her tum-tum. From a little, oh, little no. hand device. That's a I hate real being stabbed in my tum tum. She uh, makes one more whisper too. She says she's like his daughter now. Yeah, which um, and it's like oh fuck, because you've been stabbed. You're you, this is not a fight. You're probably gonna win at this point. 
But in the back of my head, I was like, Caitlyn would have wandered where Vi is, she would have gone to talk to the lady, and the lady would have said I sent her to the last drop to see Savika, so Caitlyn would have the means to get here, and she should be here around about now. There wouldn't be any reason for her not to arrive, and so I was just expecting a gunshot to come through, and it knocks out the, um... Because she's a fucking sharpshooter. It hits the little injection of shimmer before it can even go in. Yeah. It's right as it's going in as well. And, uh, yeah, I think uh, Caitlyn gets another two shots on her and they both go into her um, her arm. Mm. And she's just trying to destroy it. But I suppose you could argue she could have just shot her in the head, but I wonder if that's indicative of Caitlyn's goal, which is to disarm her and not to kill her. I, I think don't it is. think she would have just, like... I don't know that Caitlyn would have just headshot her right there. I think oh, yeah, we also played the game. Have the intention of having <laughs> Why, I think, French here. I think uh, the fact that she's a really good shot would make it like that that she would take an opportunity to wound and incapacitate rather than kill because mm -hmm. she knows she's going to land the shot. Yeah, and I doubt she wants the kind of attention of the person who is of a uh, guy who's running around and just killed a trencher when she's not supposed to be there. Well, it's funny because sure. Vi says letting her get away means that. they'll definitely know we're here, and um, and I think she says, "Whose fault is that?" Like, let's be yeah. honest here. <laughs> Vi uh, just takes the someone in chat has pointed out she disarmed her. Yes, she did. Uh, I I made that joke myself. How did you know? Just... <laughs> oh, did you? I must. Have, sorry. I thought everyone was pointing uh, out in chat. I was, really I was like, yeah. Uh, Thanks for making the game. Wow. That was really good. I'm gonna kill everything. Um, chat, you're so don't, funny. Don't do that. No, just like some stuff. You're just mad. You said stuff. everything. Yeah. Everything and something. Yeah, that, like that's... I know. It's it's a little bit different. A little bit. A little bit different. Different sort of. Nobody else like a, in chat heard it. You must be. Yeah, they did. They were literally commenting on it. They said "haha" with disarm to me. But then there are people saying they didn't hear it. So someone isn't telling the. T well, not necessarily lying. <laughs> someone just is misremembering. <laughs> someone's full of shit. Um, I forget I the dialogue between them I... here, but I feel like it's worth mentioning. I just didn't write any of it down. My bad. Um, but she's wow. Like, Help me up, cupcake, and it's just a good little bonus development for him. Caitlin just saved her life. She trusts her. Mm -hmm. This is neat. They're, they're working together. It's just like a nice little. We're getting there with these two. We're getting there. They, they, they got, they got and now the officer up. has a pet name. Aww. Ain't that yes, nice? Yes, and she has little bear traps in the game that have cupcakes in them. Yeah. Yes. Oh. On. I wonder if we'll see any more cupcakes, like, literal cupcakes, in the future. Who knows? Um, well, we did in the first episode. And the episode ends with just ten minutes until our time limit, by the way. Or at least, five. it might be five minutes, depends on what's up, happening with rags. But anyway, Savika yeah, fucking five -ish or so. bloodily drools her way into Silco's office as he's applying foundation, which I think is kind of neat. And, uh... Set, oh, this, by the way, is at the same time that Jinx has finally stabilized her, uh, like, homemade hex core. Very mm. happy about it. Which is obviously what struggle she was having in this episode with, like, confidence and everything else. But Savika says the sister is back. And I actually, like, love Silco's delivery. From the dead. <laughs> fuck. <Yeah. laughs> fuck. God, he would hate Star Wars, wouldn't he? <laughs> He's he just a better character. Return. <laughs> from the dead. <laughs> from being I, I, I wanna hear I wanna hear Silco just in every Rise of Skywalker scene <laughs> commenting on the shit that I wanna, happens. Yeah, I wanna see Silco watching the whole sequel trilogy. It's someone's like making the meme world. right it's, now. Uh, Somehow Palpatine's yeah. returned. Thunk from the dead. <laughs> yeah, it's I want <laughs> yeah. Sorry, it's it's one of a bunch of like really humanizing little bits for Silco where he's like, wait, what the fuck? Because you know he's a person, he can never <laughs> yeah, count for this. How could you possibly have he's been lied to is a uh, quick realization, mm -hmm. but it's just yeah. And that's it. That's episode five. Man, oh, we did it. Very exciting. We did it. Um re edit your reviews to add Silco in. I might try and find a slot for him now, because that's funny. Um but yeah, uh, we we were under under budget and under time. Well, how great! Not really. We were hoping to do three episodes <laughs> today. <laughs> yeah, gotcha, loser. Um, that just means next week we'll probably do four. Uh, but yeah, how long yeah, have you got? Yeah, that's Rags? exactly what it means. Next week we'll do four. That's gonna go real just stay well. Stay tuned for next week where we'll do four. <laughs>
Or we, we, are you all we suggesting that we won't do four? That we'll do three and then there'll uh, be a finale look, episode? Is that what you're saying? My suggestion is we'll do our best. <laughs> Chad, if it makes you feel any better, we're just going to be working on Boba like as soon as this is done. So Which you'll get that tomorrow. Will be maybe maybe mm. that video will be like an hour and forty to fifty minutes. Um, yeah, we're making a feature length <gasps> thing here, basically. And yeah, we're, we're, our aim is to get it to you tomorrow. All right. Probably around about... Uh, ideally, yeah. You know, a few hours after normal EFAP time. I'm gonna set that premiere many hours before it starts up to let everyone get in there in time. If I see one complaint, like, Oh, I just used stuff for like several hours. Banned. Killed. Sent to <laughs> Killed. still water. Killed. Um, but yeah, uh, I, we're, we're, me and Fringy are very much looking forward to you guys seeing it. It's, uh, it's been a... Yeah. It's been a ride, making that been one. an adventure. Um... Yeah, I don't know what what else to say because I just feel like we should probably just stop around here. Um, what, what, anything else you guys want to say? What do you have to say about the end of episode five? Episode five, how did it go? Did you like it? Did you hate it? From Ew. the dead. From the dead. It just left me wanting more, like all of the other episodes did. I would actually yeah. argue that yeah, it's it's kind of similar in form. I don't know if it's deliberate in any way, but like to episode one and two, there's so much I have to say about what's working, but none of it really relates too much to like huge emotional stuff. Yeah, it's I more also. so just yeah. setting our stuff up. Episode six, I definitely got the sense that momentum, we were starting to really build up momentum when moving, you know? Mm -hmm. Six, seven, yeah, eight, nine is the. Things, uh, was really things, right. things in motion. Yes. Um, but, uh, One I, thing I, just... I did want to wonder is uh, how did. Where did Silco hear that Vi was dead? Marcus. From Marcus? Uh, like Marcus told him, yeah. If you remember, remember he that, visits. That becomes a relevant thing, yeah. Yeah, he, and he's like... Yeah. I love the way Silco oh, explains it in his... that scene, where he's like, your your dad told me that uh, an old friend of ours was with their father. Like, just trying to best explain the dramatics of the situation, oh, being they he... should be dead, uh... but in nice language. Uh... Yeah, well, um... But it seems she never made it. We'll go over all that. <laughs> so good. Yeah, this is fucking top notch. <laughs> we we here like Silco. We're uh, we're pro Silco. I wish in more Silcos were in the world. He's such noticed. a nice dude. Yeah. I mean, look uh -huh. at this face. It's a winning face right there. Don't you want to hang out with this guy? You know the charm you know? in his yeah. eye. <laughs> so um. <laughs> the meme. <laughs> Where's the Batwomans? <laughs> they shall make a return after Booger Bofet. But yeah. so this is the other thing that's happening is that once I'm done uh, sorting out the copyright for episode seven, I'm gonna add it on to a big old render of all of them put together, and that'll be released as one video too, um, because it just seems to make the most sense at this point. Why not? It's, it's a bit of fun. Um, and I'm I was asking my stream last night whether or not it should be premiered. Should I premiere that for the fun of chat messing around, or should it just come out? And um, it was a little bit split. I was saying release or premiere, hmm. and um, I had like votes for either side. I didn't do a poll, but it just like a, a cursory sort of look, cursory look. It was, it seemed kind of fifty-fifty. So, uh, chat, say the word release or premiere to tell me what you would prefer to engage with the complete set of the Boba Fett reactions all in one video, released on Moolah probably a week after tomorrow. And premiere seems to be. Dominated. Premier, right premier, 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 premier. Okay, this is way more in one direction than it was well, last I mean, night. Like, if if they want to go and see like all of it, then they're, all the episodes are already out, right? Well, so yeah. this is the thing. If if they had overwhelmingly voted for release, I would be like, but why? Because it's the same deal. You just have to wait a little bit longer before you can scroll to the end. You know, which is a strange restriction. But ultimately, as Jay just said, you could uh, go and look at the other stuff anyway. Yeah, it seems like people want the premiere experience, so... It looks like premiere is dominated, so I don't have to worry about that. Uh, premiere the Moolah cut. Very well. You shall get it. Um, but yeah, I, I, is there anything you guys want to talk about before we just we just run off? We run away? Oh, I about, suppose uh, not, really. Um, I ain't got anything for you. Nah. Almost caught myself saying it. short and sweet, but that is just so not accurate. Five-hour stream, right? right? Um, Did you pop that meme up on hours. screen? I, I might have missed it. Oh, right, hang on. Put it up. You should put it's the funny. meme I, put, I sent you on stream as well. I worked really hard on it. Did you? Yeah. <laughs> Good. I don't even know that we would have been able... If you cut out the entire present discussion, I don't think we could fit episode <laughs> six in there. I, 
Yeah, <laughs> it works out better because we probably would have stopped midway through episode. Yeah, we ended right time. at the end of five. Yeah. yeah. Perfect Frankly, timing. We planned it out from the work. beginning to be just like this. Yeah, true. You're welcome. Yeah. All along, we're only going to do two episodes. Good job following the script, everyone. Yes. yes. Yeah. I'm sure everyone loved that. Uh, Second, <laughs> that let me take notes. Uh, <laughs> thank you. Yeah, Theo. Doomer did that on purpose. He didn't thank actually. You, right. uh, he didn't actually believe anything he said. He just mm -hmm. wanted some conflict. Yes. Yeah. It was all for content. Exactly, dude. Now that's what I call an inner conflict. You're a showman, exactly. Doomer. I love yeah! you. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know if that <laughs> meme worked as well as I thought it would. Thought, it made me happy. Bill. That's what matters. Um, so yeah, see you all next week for the next installment of our game coverage. Until then, right, you we'll will see, see us tomorrow, sort of. For I, 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 that's I, 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 that's like yeah. sort of them seeing us, right? Yes. A little bit. Uh, but they'll also see us on Wednesday. We'll, we'll have a chat mm -hmm. with them live while we catch up on today's that's Super right. Chats as well we as hit... many more as we can. We have the Book of Boba Fett, Episode 8. And we'll be, uh, we, we got to meet to watch that, seven, and we're going to meet to watch that, and then afterwards we'll do something. It's going to be great. Yeah, bye -bye. Thank you all for, for hanging out. Thanks for listening. Thanks for donations. We're going to catch them all up and get the actual round next time. Bye-bye. 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 Bye. See ya. Ciao. Bye. See you later. Bye. 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 Goodbye. Bye. Bye. Goodbye. Mine? Mine. Bye. Farewell. Bye.